searching, the item Lady Ningguang prepared for you has arrived. Uh, traveler, wait here for a moment. Don't go anywhere. Huh? Must be something important. Traveler, Paimon? Huh? Ningguang had her personal tailor make it for me. Said it's an imported style. Well, do you like it? Wow, it's beautiful! <laughs> it's time. Traveler, please enjoy the grand finale of this year's Lantern Rite. The fireworks show. Check you out. Looking pretty fancy. Only a true treasure catches the eye of Captain Beto. Seems I've struck gold with this one. Baiju, sorry to trouble you again this year. <laughs> no trouble at all. Uh, lantern right. <laughs> Happy lantern right. on the iridescence tour stage. All right, without further ado, I'm Shinyan. This is Hutao, <laughs> and this is a little something called... <laughs> the Blaze <Blink> Lilies! <laughs> I'm up here blazing trails through the midnight sky, lighting up the world below. When the crowds all hear my voice, they'll meet the spirit of rock and roll! Let's go! Hey, you butterfly, you too, buzz and bye. Got your way to the afterlife, opening the path without a fright. Oh! I'll light the fire, watch it blaze across the universe. I'll spit my rhymes, watch your step, or you'll get burned! Hey! Woo! Yeah! Does anyone have any plans tomorrow? With another year behind us, I think we deserve a celebration of our own. Mm. My treat. Interested? The Tian Xuan footing the bill? <laughs> I can't miss out on that.
Master! Master! Listen! <laughs> May the year ahead be a blessed one. I believe it shall be. Master, the Shao Lanterns, I... Ha! Elementary! One shall fashion for you a Shao Lantern the likes of which the world has never seen. And you must take it to Liyue Harbor to display its magnificence for all. Should we get the mill with? Pictures already? Ah, I need to load more film. Wait. 
Lantern Rite. <laughs> Happy Lantern Rite! Lantern right is nearly here. Why don't we decorate the inn this year? Oh, don't you know? On the first full moon of the first month each year, Leoa celebrates the Lantern Rite. It's a festival to commemorate the heroes from the past. After dark, the people release Xiao and Ming Xiao lanterns into the night sky. Oh, may the flames of wisdom spread to all and never be extinguished. This is the meaning of the lanterns. We believe they act as the beacons in the night guiding bygone heroes back to their homeland. Wow, it sounds like a grand festival. And where there's a grand festival, there's always special seasonal snacks. You catch Paimon's drift? You want to get involved in the lantern, right? <sighs> That's great! The festive period leading up to the day itself is all part of the celebrations. <laughs> During this time, we pray to bring peace and ward off bad luck. Liyue locals call it bidding farewell to the old and welcoming the new. If you're looking to take part, it's not too late. Oh, um, also, if you're able to, <clears throat> could you <laughs> try to convince Xiao to go with you? We're not close. I wouldn't know how to ask him myself. But it seems that you've grown familiar. Yeah, Paimon thinks it might be best to leave him alone for a few days. <sighs> I suppose you're right. Anyway, just thought I'd mention it. You should get yourselves down to the harbor. If you leave too late, the city will be crowded with people and you won't be able to make the most of it. Get going. Happy Lantern Rite. Young lady, if I may be so bold, how much for the floating thing, hmm? What a strange thing to say! But Paimon's curious, what number did you have in mind exactly? Oh, forget it! Let's assume you men Paimon is worth more than Mora can buy! <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm having some financial trouble recently. I probably couldn't afford it. I'm just a small-time merchant, anyway. I don't deal in rare and exotic treasures. You know, the more you talk, the more suspicious you sound. My, someone's in a grumpy mood, aren't they? Here, maybe some candy will make you feel better. Ooh, suspiciously trustworthy! So, I assume you two are in Liyue for the Lantern Rite? This year's Ming Xiao Lantern is supposed to be a sight well worth the wait. The plastrite that will lift the lantern into the air is the largest in 20 years. It's big enough to make you wonder if the fabled floating city in the clouds really does exist. I guess it must just be held up by a similarly sized chunk of plastrite. Sounds awesome! <laughs> I hope our paths cross again. Welcome to Liyue. Well, I can't speak for the whole of Liyue Harbor, but you're always welcome in my store, at least. Wow! So many stalls! Here, there, everywhere! I'm Ching Ching. I just donated Dolly. She's my rag doll. Last night in my dream, Dolly told me her wish was to fly up into the sky and see the view. So I gave her to the lady over by the big deer lantern. Dolly's wish will come true now. I did the right thing, didn't I? Wishes are supposed to come true at the lantern, right? Aren't they? Seems to be something mysterious about this photographic apparatus.
This year's Ming Xiao Lantern is dedicated to Sky Bracer. He always was a show off. I'm sure he will be very pleased. Well, that's the plan. I do hope they make the antlers big enough. They were his pride and joy, after all. The story goes that the antlers were made from the very essence of Rex Lapis's divine power, which made it the hardest material in all of Liu. But then that fateful battle happened. The gods exchanged powerful blows, and the mountain started collapsing. To avoid impacting the villagers at the foot of the mountain, the Adeptus got his friend to chop his antlers off. He used those blood-drenched antlers as a wedge to prop up the mountain. And if that wasn't enough of a sacrifice, he then kept on fighting until his blood was drained and his life ran out. Thanks to him, Mount Tianhang still stands tall and proud to this day, and the blood that he lost in the battle turned into the Bishui River. <laughs> Whether you believe the story or not, I'm just happy you're willing to listen to me tell it. Surely the reason the Lantern Rite exists is because people throughout the ages have chosen to come together as friends, rather than stay in isolation. Goodbye. May the flames of wisdom spread to all and never be extinguished. Look! That stone is floating! Luckily, it's tethered in place. If it wasn't held down, who knows where it would fly off to? This is the plasterite to be used for the Ming Xiao Lantern. The whole of the Xiao Market is centered around it. I'm Zhang Zhou. Recently, I've been tracking progress on the construction of the Ming Xiao Lantern. You seem like newcomers. Is this your first lantern, right? Yes. How can you tell? Well, I don't remember running into any weird and wonderful mascots at last year's festival. You'll see lots of people releasing little lanterns during the festival. Those ones are called Xiao Lanterns. But there's also a huge one, a joint effort by all the people of Liu at Harbor. That one is called the Ming Xiao Lantern. Almost every business in Liyue has a booth at the annual Xiao Market, but despite its popularity, this is the one time of the year they're not looking to make a profit. The street market exists solely to raise the funds and materials required for the Ming Xiao Lantern construction. So, the Xiao Market. Does it have stuff you can eat? Plenty. And if I do say so myself, the Lantern Rite is the best festival for sampling Liyue's local delicacies. It is Liyue's biggest annual festival, after all. Showing off your craft is a great way to drum up a reputation. So even if there's no mora to be made, everyone is secretly going all out to get their produce under the spotlight. Folks in Liyue are so smart! If you need any help, you can look for Wangya. She's overseeing the Lantern Rite. She's usually somewhere around the Xiao Market. She's your first port of call. Oh, will she know which stall sells the tastiest stuff? <laughs> no doubt. When it comes to the Lantern Rite, no one knows more than she does. Got it! Let's go to the Xiao Market and look for Wang Ya. And then go to the stall with the tastiest food and eat till we're stuffed. Hi, can I help you? From the look of you, you don't hail from Li Yue. Are you traveling through? Welcome to the Xiao Market. Overseeing? <laughs> not exactly. The Lantern Rite Festival belongs to the whole of Li Yue. It's not just one person's to oversee. I'm just taking care of a few small things, doing my bit to make sure everyone who joins in the festivities has a good time. We want to know where the tastiest food in the whole Xiao Market is. 
Hmm. The tastiest? Hard to say. I guess that depends on your personal preference. Still, what I can tell you is that everyone's talking about Yin Yen's stall. If it gets any busier over there, I'm gonna have to bring the Melilith to keep things orderly. Hey, you'd best get over there quick before the streets get too crowded with people. Oh, and if you are heading to Yin Yan, please do me a favor and run this document over to him. It's a summary of the data from last year's Lantern Rite, compiled by the Ministry of Civil Affairs. It has a few operational tips for our vendors. If you're heading in that direction, it'd be a great help. As thanks, I've got a gift for you when you get back. You really don't have enough hands on deck. If I'd known, I would have roped some others in. What's the best thing on the menu? Ah, customers. Take a look and decide for yourself. I can do anything on the menu. Or if there's something in particular you're after, I can do that instead. mention it, you do have a lot of options for a food stall. <laughs> Naturally. If there's a dish I can't cook, I've yet to hear about it. Uh-huh. Same every year. The old operational tips. How's this for a tip? Leave the handbook to one side and concentrate on the killer cooking. Ugh, hand it over. I'll use it to feed the fire later. Come on then, place your orders. Aren't you here to eat? There are so many! This one looks good, but Paimon wants to try that one too! Huh? Grilled tiger fish? That's the one Pervasis love to eat, isn't it? Hmm. Seeing as the Lantern Rite is about commemorating the heroes of the past, let's order this one! This can be our way of honoring his memory! Ah, your friend has a good eye for food. That's our specialty. Please wait. I'll have it ready for you in no time. Okay, here's your grilled tiger fish. What do you think? Mmm, delicious! Of course! What kind of a guide would Paimon be otherwise? <laughs> well, hope you enjoy your food. I gotta see to some other customers. If you get hungry again, you know where I am. So you're back. What do you think? Yin Yan makes some mean grub, huh? Ah, so tasty. Oh yeah? <laughs> he said that last year, too. <sighs> if he'd listened to our marketing tips, he'd be doing even better by now. Anyway, not to worry. Here's the gift I was talking about. This Xiao Lantern is for you. Wow, such a beautiful lantern. How is it made? Uh, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to explain the process concisely. But if you're interested in Xiao Lanterns, you can ask Jingming over there. He's in charge of both the Xiao and Ming Xiao Lanterns. So he's responsible for this super duper huge one too? That's right. He should be easy to find. Just over there, I think. If we could make a Xiao Lantern for Xiao, maybe that would cheer him up a bit. Let's find Jingming and see what he has to say! Next on the agenda... At this rate... Hmm... We should be able to meet the deadline. Teach you how to make Xiao lanterns. Oh, hmm... You don't look like locals to me. Looking to try your hand at making your own? I'll be happy to teach you. There's no one way to make a Xiao Lantern, but let me start by showing you the simplest one. I should have some spare materials over here. Uh, just a second. Ah, they still need a bit of work. Take these and give it a go. Paimon 
Sean is all out of brain juice. Did you get it? <laughs> uh, it all comes with practice. No one's expecting your first try to be perfect. Folks like you who want to learn my craft are a rare find nowadays. Did you build that humongous mean shell lantern using the same method? That one? Hmm. I suppose it's fair to say the method is the same, broadly speaking. But no single person can take credit for it. The whole of Liyue comes together to make it. So it was a community effort? Surely you've heard about it. The Xiao Market is actually a fundraiser, aiming to support the Ming Xiao Lantern's construction. Whoa! So that's how the Ming Xiao Lantern is built! Such is the Lantern Rite tradition. The Ministry of Civil Affairs might be covering the bulk of the costs, but it's the citizens of Liyue that donate the materials, among many other things. Oh, so that's what that little girl meant when she said she donated her ragdoll. But since when do you build Ming Xiao lanterns out of ragdolls? Well, the Lantern Rite is a major festival. If somebody wants to make a contribution, no matter how small, or in this case, symbolic, we tend not to reject them. All well-meaning contributions are gratefully received. Especially considering how grand of an occasion the Lantern Rite is for everyone, people believe that joining the effort might bring them good luck. <laughs> Alrighty then. Shouldn't you get going? With all that the festival has to offer, I'm sure you must be on a busy schedule. Of course, if you want to make another Seattle Lantern at any time, you know where to find me. Happy Lantern Ride. Have fun! Did you find Jingming? We did! And he taught us all about how to make shell lanterns! Even though Paimon can't really remember any of it. <laughs> no worries. You can always ask Jingming if you need to refresh your memory. I should go. Duty calls. Happy lantern, right? Xiao Lantern construction coming along. Good to see you two. The Ming Xiao Lantern is coming along smoothly, thank you. <laughs> We're almost done collecting the required plostrite. The project should be completed in a few days. You'll have to come by when it's done. Mm hmm. Plostrite is the main component of any Ming Xiao Lantern. Most of the donations we get from the city folk are either Mora or plostrite. A lot of them carve their heart's desires onto the plostrite they donate, as a prayer for good fortune and other blessings. Paimon wants some good fortune too! Let's find some plostrite and make a wish! Hmm, since you seem so eager to donate, how about you keep your eyes open for less common varieties of plostrite? Those are the ones we lack the most at the moment. One is called Azerite. It is occasionally found in the northern part of Mount Tianheng. When Azerite gets caught in the roots of ordinary vegetation, it sometimes produces bloaty floaties, which have floating seeds. The other one is called Vermilionite, which is extremely dangerous as far as most people are concerned. In Guili Plains, old ruin hunters who have lost the power of flight use Vermilionite to keep themselves airborne. It's a tall order, but I'm sure you can manage. Next on the agenda, Born of Ice and Frost. <laughs> I knew 
I could count on you. Let me see. Hmm. Yep, without a doubt, these are Azerite and Vermilionite. But don't you want to make your wishes? You brought back just enough materials for both of you. Come on, get carving. Hmm, done. Paimon prays for a bottomless stomach to eat more delicacies with. And you? Let Paimon see. Huh? Well, that doesn't sound like something you'd wish for. Oh. So you put your brother's wish rather than your own. Don't you worry. Paimon will help you find him, and we'll spend the next lantern ride together. Then we'll release a gazillion shell lanterns to make up for all those wishes you've never had a chance to make. If you're done with your carvings, you can hand over your Azerite and Vermilionite to me. Miss Wong, yeah? Well, hello, Chang Chang. What's up, little missy? Can't find your granddad? <laughs> granddad said he's busy and I should go play on my own. I want to make a shell lantern, but I don't know how. Miss Wongya, could you help me make a shell lantern? Sure thing, but promise me that you'll go back home as soon as we're done playing. With so many people at the festival, your granddad will be worried sick if you stay out too long. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Wangya. I'll be a good girl, I promise. I certainly do. That's how I made my first Mora, helping visitors make shell lanterns by the docks. Ah, oh, good times. <laughs> I should really stay here to keep an eye on the girl. Hey, could I bother you to go to the construction site at the dock and gather some building materials? Great, thanks. I appreciate it. Look over there! That guy's acting very suspicious, don't you think? Hey, what you doing? What you staring at me like that for? Get gone! Wh <coughs> huh? All right. If you all won't get gone, I'm just gonna get going myself, I guess. <sighs> wow! Paimon thought he might be a shady character? Then he opened his mouth and now Paimon's sure of it! He must have been up to something when he was crouching down on the ground, because as soon as he saw us approaching, he stood up and acted all innocent. Paimon has a bad feeling about this. What could he be up to? Let's investigate. Well, this area is full of construction supplies for the Ming Chao Lantern. Paper, oil, wood? <gasps> on the last oh, day of the Lantern Ride, huge crowds come out to watch the Ming Xiao Lantern being released. It can't be a good sign if there's a suspicious character lurking around somewhere so dangerous. If he's been tampering with the stockpile of lantern supplies... Let's get the materials we came for first. We can tell Wang Ya about the situation when we get back. Because... because... Everyone in Lila has worked really hard for this. No one should be allowed to spoil it, period. Oh, fine. There's so many delicacies in Liyue Harbor. Matsutake meat rolls, mora meat, almond tofu. <laughs> hey, what you doing? What you staring at me like that for? Get gone! Wh <coughs> huh? All right. If you all won't get gone, I'm just gonna get going myself, I guess. <sighs> Next on the agenda. That should be enough. Let's get back to Wang Ya. On the agenda. Did you get the materials? Ah, yes. These will do. Let me make a shell lantern for Ching Ching. We saw a shady character skulking around the highly flammable materials at the construction site. He looked like he was up to no good. I see. Okay, please inform the Ministry of Civil Affairs about what you saw. I'll talk to Jing Ming. With so many people visiting for the Lantern, right? We can't afford to ignore something like this. Uh, Miss Wang Ya, 
Is something bad gonna happen at the lantern, right? Not to a darling little angel like you, Chang Chang. Come on now, good girl. Head back to your granddad and don't get distracted along the way. We don't want to make him worry. Halt! This is the Liyue Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yeah! We saw a shady-looking guy snooping around near the stockpile of highly flammable Mingxiao lantern supplies. We must defend the grilled tigerfish food stall at all costs! Mm, goodness. This is a serious matter indeed. Exactly what Paimon thought! Liyue Harbor's cuisine is the heart and soul of the city! It seems we disagree on where the seriousness of the matter lies. But you're not wrong, my little friend. Rest easy. The Ministry of Civil Affairs has assigned a specialist to keep the Lantern Rite safe. I will inform him of this matter, and order him to step up vigilance in due course. In due course? This is serious! Why not get your butt over there and tell him straight away? I wish I could, but he's yet to return. He's taken a small team to Guayli Plains. Commission? What commission? Oh, is this your way of offering to go to Guayli Plains and pass on the message for me? But you're a traveler, aren't you? You've come all this way for the Lantern Rite, and yet here you are, willing to lend a hand. Yeah! We must defend the food stalls! Let nobody touch them! Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh. I can't thank you enough. Ah, yes. No commission should go unpaid. I will take care of the compensation. Again, thank you both. It's a hilly trail blockade! There's so many of them. Why would we gather together like this? We can't let them get away with being a menace to the people here! Let's show them what we've got! Who... who are you? Oh... Thank you. If it weren't for your help, today may have ended quite differently. I'm in charge of keeping the Lantern Rite safe. A lot comes out of the woodwork at this time of year. There are thieves around every corner. I encountered one during my patrol just now, so I called a few men and we pursued them out here. Once we got here, we decided to split up. I was searching this area. The thief seems to have made a clean getaway, and I sure didn't bank on these monsters being here. I was just assessing whether it would be better to send for reinforcements or find another way to disperse them. And that's when you showed up and dealt with them. <sighs> and thank goodness. I don't know how long it would have taken for the others to get here. Well, I need to get back to looking for that thief. But thanks for your help. Until next time. Wait a second! We're not done here! Oh! Is there something else? Uh, another one? It's interminable. Right. Well, when I get back, I'll get the other troops to be extra vigilant in the area. Uh, in the middle of the festival, too. What are they up to? Do you get the feeling... Paimon thinks so, too. With our wealth of experience, adventuring far and wide, we should be able to get to the bottom of this. So let's go back to the place where we witnessed the shady-looking guy. Paimon hears from patrol officers that criminals love to go back for another look at the crime scene after the event. Eh, it's a psychological thing, apparently. That's why there's no time to lose! When there's highly flammable materials involved, once the crime happens, it'll be too late! Aha! Knew it! Wait! There's another person! What are you doing here? Huh? Xiao? Are you here for the festival? I have no interest in Lantern Rite. I sensed a malign influence here. I'm here to investigate. 
when a shackle is loosened in the realms of deities and demons, I take full responsibility. But this time, the threat comes from the mortal world. Your world. Thus you shall take full responsibility, mortal traveler. When the time comes, I hope you shall act promptly and decisively. I do not wish for the tassel of the polearm that has slaughtered countless demons to become stained with mortal blood. What's this? A symbol that your suspected evildoer left behind. Doesn't look familiar to Paimon. Well, you will have to show me how much you can accomplish on your own strength. Because if I become involved, there is a possibility that the streets of Liyue Harbor will be painted red this lantern right. Well, that sounds terrible. Uh, let's not be impulsive. Why don't we figure out the origins of this symbol first? The one the suspected criminal left behind. Oh, Paimon has a sneaking suspicion that Kaya will know something about it. Well, well. Long time no see. Kaya! We went to the Lantern Rite in Lile! Ah, well. How was it? Fun? Delicious. Well then, you ought to be looking forward to Mondstadt's Ludi Harpastum. I'm sure it will be to your liking. Right, right. Kaya, there's something we need to tell you about. Hmm. Lantern supplies. Stockpile of wood, paper, and oil. At the very least, it sounds like an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> How very amusing. What makes you think I would recognize this symbol? Exactly! Uh-ah. -uh. You should watch what you say, honorary knight. What do you mean, flirt with the dark side? The Knights of Favonius certainly does not have dealings with its enemies. That has to do with a certain knightly virtue called integrity. Anyway, I digress. This is the symbol of the cross-border criminal organization you know as the Treasure Hoarders. If you are curious to know more, I can put you in touch with an informant on the inside. Uh... Didn't you just say the Knights of Favonius don't have dealings with their enemies? This is my own personal informant. Nothing to do with the Knights of Favonius. A little later, make your way over to Windrise. I'll arrange for the informant to meet you there. Thanks, Kaya! Oh, and remember, wine begets wisdom. Huh? Hey! You're the guy, right? Kaya's informant? Informant? <laughs> Not me. But this is the place we agreed upon, and you're the only other one here, so... Place we agreed upon? <sighs> I know nothing. Ugh. Stop being so annoying. Uh... Uh-huh. Okay, technically the wrong password, but... Yes, it's something about wine. And assuming that something is the thing about it begetting wisdom, then... Yeah, close enough. It's me. How was any of that even slightly necessary? What do you want to know about? <sighs> Here's the situation. Okay, I see. So, what can you tell us as an insider? I do not think this is the work of the treasure hoarders. The reason the treasure hoarders are able to sustain a giant cross-border operation is because they abide by one fundamental principle. Caution. Softly, softly, catchy monkey is the name of the game for them. By contrast, the idea of taking huge risks to try and make a fortune is utter folly in their eyes. 
Li Yue has the Adepti looking after it, doesn't it? And they're especially active during the Lantern Rite. There's just no way that we, uh, uh sorry, they, <laughs> slip of the tongue, when you've been undercover as long as I have. <laughs> uh, where was I just now? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, there's no way that they, the treasure hoarders, would dare make a move during the Lantern Rite. Also, the treasure hoarders organization in Liyue recently received an anonymous letter. Why would someone send them an anonymous letter? <sighs> Trying to frame them, perhaps? Nobody knows. But what I can tell you is which branch of the Treasure Hoarders has the letter in their possession. Uh, heh, there. I've marked their location on the map for you. Great! Well, Paimon thinks this was productive. This is our only solid lead. Let's not waste it. If there's nothing more, I should get back to Treasure Hoarding. Uh, I mean... <laughs> Get back to those treasure hoarding lowlifes to uh, spy on them. <laughs> Sorry, pal, wrong way. <laughs> Wherever you think you're going, it's that way. But isn't that the way to Leo Harbor? Right. Here is nowhere. So the other way is Liyue Harbor. If you're looking for somewhere to stay, I suggest you go to the Wangshu Inn. Fair prices, great customer service, and a wonderful view. How do you know about the letter? Uh, one of Liyue's adepti told us about it. Did they now? I somehow doubt that. You should not doubt it. It was I who sent them to investigate. Any further questioning, you may direct to me. Did you just appear out of thin air? You're the vigilant Yaksha! Hey! Watch your tone of voice! Or do you seriously want to pick a fight with an Adeptus? Uh, okay, it's not that we don't believe you're an Adeptus. It's just... Everyone needs to look at the bigger picture here. As you well know, we treasure hoarders are no serious threat to anyone. We're petty criminals, that's all. So, if you are truly an Adeptus, please show us some mercy, would you? Of course. If it turns out you're not a real Adeptus... Then please, don't blame our weapons for treating everyone equally. into destiny, uh, written in the stars. Hunter. Evil conquering! P please, my heroic friend and Adeptus buddy, have mercy. The letter is drivel anyway. It's not worth an armed conflict. Just take it. How about that? Paima knew it all along. Let's see what they wrote. I see. Then let us send these two to the meeting. The Sender may be plotting something truly diabolical for the Lantern Rite. It seems they want to burn down the entire city. Great, everyone's happy. <laughs> You're good, we're good. However... These two, they don't look anything like us. It'll be fine. When we're in disguise, no one will be the wiser. It still seems like a long shot to me, but with the help of an Adeptus, Hopefully everything will turn out fine. Well, the safety of Liyue is in your hands now. Good luck. Even the treasure hoarders don't want to see the city burned to the ground. Then it is settled. <sighs> what is it? Huh? 
I am not partial to crowded areas, especially at this time of the year. When this matter is resolved, come to Wangshu Inn. In previous years, the Mingxiao Lantern has been visible even from there. He's vanished! Did he go back to Wangshu Inn already? But the time mentioned in the letter, that's today, isn't it? Come on, let's go to the meeting place. All right. You folks from the Treasure Hoarders, yeah? I thought I insinuated in my letter there that you should have done like I'd done and put on a mask and a costume and so forth. But it seems you didn't all get the memo. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though. Gutsy. Hmm. Well, guess what? We don't need to go sneaking around everywhere wearing disguises because unlike you, we would never do anything so shameful that we would need to wear masks while doing it. Really? I was in the middle of my speech and everything! Well, wait a second now. You folks ain't no treasure hoarders. What game are you two playing? You're finished! Tell us your diabolical plan now! <laughs> Okay, I, I give up. Give up now, or feel the wrath of my Pymonial! Huh? You giving up just like that? I... Uh, I'm just a lowly apprentice thief who really looks up to the treasure hoarders. An apprentice thief? Uh, yeah, for a greenhorn like me, especially working on my own and all, the treasure hoarders... Man, they're my heroes. Wait a second. So... Uh... So, I thought I'd try and set up some sort of lucrative opportunity and submit my pledge of loyalty. Wait a second. None of this is making any sense. Paimon was expecting a serial arsonist to be someone more... sinister, evil-looking. But instead... We get you! Arson? What the heck are you talking about? Don't pretend! Paimon's seen you loitering around piles of highly flammable materials! Oh. oh! Oh, yeah, yeah, I know where you're talking about. But I was only checking the place out. My plan ain't got nothing to do with those lantern construction materials. Are you serious? Well, I just wanted to nab me the biggest chunk of applause trite in 20 years is all. I was gonna wait till nightfall, chop off half the tethers, float it out to sea. Oh. Then, all I'd have to do is find some way or another of bringing it down, so I could hide it underwater in the shallows. The perfect crime. Uh, for a perfect crime, it sure has a lot of holes. For example, how exactly were you planning to bring down the Plostrite once it was airborne? Well, I was still in the process of figuring out the details, hence why I hadn't made my move yet. This guy is an imbecile. Okay, let's teach him a lesson. Now that the Millilith have gotten hold of that idiot, let's head back. We can notify the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Traveler, word spreads fast. <laughs> we will keep watch over the thief. Thanks for your help. Looks like the Mingxiao Lantern will be ready soon. <sighs> A critical juncture. We cannot afford the slightest interference. Rest easy. Word was passed up the chain. Another group of very capable troops have been brought in. They're dressed as ordinary citizens. You wouldn't notice them in the crowd. If anyone dares make a move, they'll be on them in an instant. Huh. That's sorted then. You two get some rest, we'll take it from here. Enjoy the Lantern Rite in peace. So, Paimon supposes that's taken care of then. Ah, <sighs> Paimon wishes so too. Guess he won't make it this time. Wait! 
Do you remember what the inspiration for the Ming Xiao Lantern was? So if it's modeled on an Adeptus, maybe Xiao would be interested this time. On the day the Ming Xiao Lantern is ready, we can meet him at Wang Xuin like he suggested, then try to persuade him. Uh, even though he said you can see the Ming Xiao Lantern from Wang Xuin, we should get up close if we want to get that festival atmosphere. So is the matter resolved? Good. No. As I said, I am not partial to crowded areas. Especially at this time of the year. Yeah! It's a super impressive looking giant deer! Let's go take a look together! <sighs> Sky Bracer. <laughs> a Mingxiao Lantern nonetheless. A fleeting creation of human hand. It means nothing to me. If this short-lived spectacle is one you wish to witness, I suggest you go to the city. Oh, he really won't go. What? She might have a few tricks up her sleeve. Sounds like you and Xiao took care of business again. <laughs> Word certainly got around. The news even reached us here. Ah, <sighs> and yet another year's lantern rite will soon be over, and he still won't go and take a look. <sighs> All these long years, and I've never seen him attend the lantern rite. I'd go as far as to say it'd be easier bringing the festival to him than the other way around. Bring the festival to him. Yeah, if Xiao won't go to the lantern right, then let's bring the lantern right to him! Uh, sorry, surely you realize I was joking. How would you bring the lantern right to him, exactly? When we were in the city checking out the festivities, we learned how to make Xiao lanterns. We even found a food stall serving local delicacies. So much tasty food! So many pretty Xiao lanterns! Not to mention, um, what else? Oh, the bygone heroes! His old friends! Aren't those the heart and soul of the lantern, right? You're not wrong, but where would we set all that up? Now that you mention it, I wonder... We need enough space to set up our own stall. Huh, there might just be enough room below the inn. Hey, let's take a look and choose a space. I believe I know the kind of stall you're after. Hmm, there should be a few styles we can reference. Let me think. Uh, this is too close to the elevator entrance. I think we can do better. And? No, here we'd be constantly interrupted by the foot traffic. Here's not too bad, and it's safely away from all the foot traffic. Hmm, fitting choice. Oh, we've got ourselves a nice spot, now we need to build a proper stall. I've thought about it, and I believe I know roughly how to go about it. If you'll excuse me for a moment, I'll try to figure out where to start. And voila! A little rough around the edges, but it should serve us well. What do you think? <laughs> There's no big deal. Just a... A little bit of DIY that I picked up years ago. <laughs> I've forgotten most of it, actually. Well, we can check the stall off our to-do list. It looks quite festive decorated with that Xiao Lantern, wouldn't you say? Well, yes, but in my generation, it's just the norm for everyone who grew up in Liyue. Anyway, speaking of festivities, no celebration is complete without a feast. Do you know what you would like on the menu? Almond tofu! That's for sure! We've made it for Xiao before! Almond tofu and grilled tigerfish. Huh, what an interesting combination of flavors. I'll have a word with Smiley Yan Xiao. He should be able to rustle those up in no time. Luckily, the inn's pantry contains all the necessary ingredients. Oh, it's about time to summon our honored guest. Could you fetch him? The food should be ready by the time you come down. What now? We've had the talk about crowded places. 
Do not make me repeat myself. Best you go alone. What is that supposed to mean? You brought the festival to me? Okay, so there's a bunch of delicious snacks just laid out below the inn, and a bunch of Xiao lanterns, and there's practically no one else around to have to worry about. Better hurry up, or the food's gonna go cold. Come on down! Ta-da! Your very own miniature lantern ride festival! Well, if it doesn't look mouth-watering... So this is what you meant by bringing the festival to me? <sighs> Is there no end to the peculiarities of human behavior? Does it serve any grander purpose? Is that so? <laughs> human motives defy my attempts to fathom them. Less fathoming, more eating! Come on, dig in before it gets cold! Mm -hmm. Okay, Pyron's gonna concentrate on eating now. We're done with the most important part of the celebration. We should be heading out to see the Ming Xiao Lantern. You may take your leave. There's nothing for me over there. Yeah, the Ming Xiao Lantern may not be your thing, but surely there's no harm in taking a walk with us. The road from here to Liyue Harbor is long and full of dangers. We need someone to ensure our safety. Nobody says you have to enter the city. You can just see us off at the outskirts. Uh. <laughs> so be it. I shall accept your proposal. There you go. All right, time to hit the road. This is as far as I will go. Please see yourselves into the city. You are obviously one of the heroes this festival is all about. Why don't you want to get involved? I detest the rabble. No cares in the world. So peaceful, so joyful. They are nothing like me. Too long have I spent slaughtering, accompanied by the burden of suffering that follows in its wake. Crossing paths with all those jubilant people will only make me... <sighs> That's all I have to say. Farewell. Are you really so enamored with such trivial amusements? Hey! This is a legitimate festival! Not some trivial amusement! <laughs> legitimate? Enough. Go watch your lanterns. But stay vigilant. Keep your eyes open for any menace. If you find yourself in trouble, speak my name. Anywhere, anytime. Whether yours or Leo's, I hear all cries for help, all prayers for peace, and all the wishes carried by the lanterns. <laughs>
isn't this lively. Who would have guessed that rebuilding the Jade Chamber would draw out such a massive monster? Oh, for a second there, Paimon really thought the Jade Chamber was gonna be ruined again! Oh, but it's all over now. Who knows if the Lantern Rite can still go on after an incident like that, though. Send this report to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and have them delegate each of the tasks on the list to the appropriate departments. Also, be sure to tell them that though the Lantern Rite may be complicated, everything must be done properly. Hello, Lady Mingguang. It's us again! No, of course not. You are my honored guests. And given the looks of you two, I presume that you're here to celebrate the Lantern Rite? That's right! So what's on the agenda for the festival this year? As always, there will be a variety of activities taking place. Oh, but there is one of particular interest. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is planning a fireworks show this year. It should certainly be worth your time. Releasing Ming Xiao lanterns has always been at the heart of the Lantern Rite. But with all that has occurred in Liyue as of late, I think the people of the city need something to warm their hearts. A feeling of everyone coming together in solidarity. So, I believe that this year calls for a celebration of particular magnificence. Something that would be closer to the hearts of every citizen. We are currently in the process of placing fireworks at various locations all throughout Liyue. We shall choose a timely moment during the festival to set off all the fireworks in unison, allowing the sparkling lights and excitement to resonate with the hearts of the people. Fireworks? But we've already seen fireworks in other places before. <gasps> Is there something special about the fireworks in Liyue? Fireworks were originally developed alongside many other inventions here in Liyue. When our ancestors first created fireworks, they were originally known as firecrackers. Their bright flashes and loud sounds were often used for warding off beasts or as warning signals to other people. In those days, it was difficult for people to contact one another while out farming the land, so they would carry firecrackers with them to give signals when necessary. But people's lifestyles began to change after Leo Harbor was founded. They no longer had to travel out of town to tin the fields anymore, so the use of firecrackers for emergencies also began to dwindle. But through our local customs, the pioneering spirit of the firecrackers has been passed down to this very day. We made improvements to firecrackers and began setting them off during the Lantern Rite to commemorate the tenacious spirit of our ancestors. Everything has so much history in Liyue! As I'm sure you already know, everything on this land accumulates history and value as time passes. That is the nature of Liyue. I've left Kuching in charge of the fireworks show. If you're interested, why don't we pay her a visit together? to add a few more locations for launching fireworks. The show has to be visible all across Liyue, not just in the city. They celebrate Lantern right in Qingsa Village too, you know. <laughs> but... Lady Kuching... What about our budget? The budget is exactly what it's meant to be. It's the necessary amount of funds to properly carry out a task. If you think the current budget will not suffice, then we'll simply have to apply for more funding from the Ministry of Civil Affairs and wait for their approval. Our aim is to organize a memorable Lantern Rite. The budget is there just to facilitate planning. We mustn't lose sight of our goal. Yes, Lady Kuching. I understand. Good. And please remember, safety first. <sighs> oh, it's Ningguang and the Traveler. Good to see you. Are you here for the Lantern Rite? Your timing couldn't be any better. The preparations are almost complete. I'm reviewing the positioning of the fireworks and double-checking the relevant facilities. It's all in a day's work. Forgive my directness. 
But if I'm not mistaken, you could just as easily leave these tasks to your subordinates. You've already been working around the clock these past few days. I am sure a break would not be amiss. Uh, no, no, it's fine. Really, I can handle it. Pungi, please redraft our plans, make a summary report, and send it to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I'm going into town to check the progress of the fireworks setup. I'll return shortly. As for you, Traveler, you're our esteemed guest. Please, take the opportunity to stay in Liyue Harbor and enjoy the festivities. Pungi, is everything clear? Please remember the tasks I've given you. Yes, Lady Kuching. Don't worry. Good. Ningguang, Traveler, goodbye for now. Please, excuse me, Lady Ningguang. And, uh, Traveler, I must get going. Lady Kuching told me a great deal of information, and I have to write up the plans from scratch again, so time is of the essence. Oh, one moment. I almost forgot. Here, Traveler. This is a launch tube. Lady Kuching said you may be interested, so she had me keep one to give to you. Someone with good handicraft skills should be able to use this to design their very own fireworks. You should try it when you have the chance. Since the Adepti left Liyue Harbor in the hands of mortals, we Qixing have taken up the responsibility of leading the people. We have taken charge of many vital tasks in various sectors, and we are responsible for planning and organizing all sorts of affairs. That said, being in charge of everything inevitably takes its toll. It's exhausting at times. Jiangzhou was responsible for planning the Lantern Rite in former years, but her father is getting quite old now, so she transferred to another department this year. In the end, the Lantern Rite planning was left to Kuching and myself. I am the head organizer, while Kuching is responsible for the highly anticipated fireworks show. Such an important event should be entrusted to the most qualified candidate. Kuching is disciplined, yet passionate about her work, so she's naturally the best fit for the job. She's definitely disciplined! No doubt about that! Absolutely. She is strict with both herself and others, to the point that she can even become overly involved at times. She's worked several days without a break now. I'm concerned about the effects it may have in the long run. Finding balance is an essential concept in Liyue culture. I've tried talking to her, but you know how she is. She uses her wit to talk circles around anyone. Traveler, you are quite close to Kuching. Why don't you try talking to her? Maybe she'd listen to someone as experienced as you. Thank you, Traveler. I am glad you are able to help. Kuching can be a tough nut to crack sometimes. I still have other business to attend to at the Jade Chamber. I'll leave Kuching in your capable hands. you can really persuade Kuching to take a break. Even Ningguang herself couldn't manage to convince her. Besides, before you can persuade someone, you have to at least understand how they feel at the moment. Kuching has been working non-stop without a break. Oh, duh! Come on, everyone knows that. Think harder. How does she feel deep, deep down inside? Uh, or maybe <gasps> we could ask a friend, you know, someone more knowledgeable about these things. Huh? Zhang Li? Oh, there's no arguing that. Zhang Li it is then. Hmm, Paimon thinks he's still a consultant at the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Let's go see if he's there. Huh? 
Hello. How may I help you? Ah, yes. Well, I'm afraid he is currently out with the director. Out with the director? Oh, you mean for work? The director said that they were going for a walk. If you'd prefer, you could go look for them at third round knockout. I've heard the director often goes there to do, uh, promotion. Yum, yum, yum! Ooh, I am so full. Not another bite. Hats off to you, Xiangling. Serving the grilled fish with a dipping sauce is quite an innovative approach. The flavor is just to die for. <laughs> That's my signature dipping sauce. I knew it would taste great. Hmm. Tempered Jueyun chili powder mixed with garlic paste and chopped scallions. Then seasoned with salt, vinegar, and soy sauce, before finally sizzling in hot oil. This recipe may seem a bit crude, but is entirely hinged on the precise balancing of flavors and seasonings by the chef. Everything must be balanced just right. It is the consummate mastery of this balance that turns a humble dish into an exquisite one. Oh, that's quite the compliment, don't you think? <laughs> I'm flattered. Thank you, Mr. Zhongli. And I thought I have a way with words. But you certainly take the prize, Mr. Zhongli. You are too kind, Director. Your eloquence is... <clears throat> infamous in Liu Harbor. Oh, what's that? Oh, would you like to order something, Guoba? Oh, please, by all means, it's my treat. I'll just open a tab under Xiangling. Hey, are you guys talking about tasty food again? Oh, it's the Traveler in Paimon. What brings you to this side of town? Hold on, let me take a wild guess. Hmm, yes. Oh, you must be here for the lantern, right? Uh, isn't that pretty obvious? <laughs> Nobody could have guessed that. Oh, yeah, come on. Can't you take a joke? You came at the perfect time. I was just letting everyone try my latest dish. The owner of Third Round Knockout says it's, it, well, a real knockout. Mr. Zhongli and Hu Tao seem to like it too, but I think it never hurts to let more people do a taste test. How about it, you two? Would you like to have a taste? Huh. Don't have to ask Paimon twice! Or once, even! Huh? You mean we're not gonna try any? Oh, fine. Let's get down to business. We meet again, Traveler. I trust your journey is going well? Splendid. Therein lies the value of a journey. So come on. Why are you looking for our good consultant? Do enlighten us. And just in case you were wondering, we're on business too. We only tried Xiangling's dish since we just happened to be here. Business? What kind of business would the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor possibly have during a festival? Even during the most joyous of holidays, life still follows its natural course, does it not? Is that really so surprising? <laughs> but there isn't a need to be alarmed. It's just a nice day today, and I thought we could go for a walk while doing a little promotion for our business. Oh, you could go ahead and chat away. Xiangling and I will go have some tea with the boss over there. Oh, Xiangli, please come get me when you're through here. Of course. I'll see you later, Director. Now then, Traveler. What brings you to see me today? Hmm. Yes. The Yuhang is honest, intelligent, and most diligent. She is capable of shouldering responsibilities that few others could. But everything has a balance and one's health must certainly weigh in. Yeah! Everyone knows you're super knowledgeable! Paimon bet she would listen to someone like you! 
If I were still the mighty Rex Lapis, I might be able to help her see reason. But alas, I'm now nobody but an ordinary consultant. My words no longer carry the same weight as they once did. Besides, I am by no means close to the Yuhang. Taking the liberty to lecture her may just as easily produce the opposite of the desired effect. Oh, you're right! Uh, then what should we do? We could take a more subtle, indirect approach to the matter. Such as telling a story that resonates with her, containing your message conveyed within it. Such a story can be achieved by referencing topics from her daily life. The story could prove even more effective if you weave in something about someone close to her. Um... Hyman doesn't really get it. I knew you'd understand what to do. <laughs> well done, Traveler. Go collect some source materials for your story. Of course, I can always provide you with my advice, if needed. Once we have formulated the plot, you can tell the story to the Yuhang. You are on amiable terms with the Yuhang, which makes you the natural candidate. Oh, Paimon gets it! So we need to talk with people who know Kuching, right? Hmm. So who should we start with? Greetings, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm not intruding. Huh? Oh! Lady Kuching! <laughs> Mr. Zhongli, I didn't expect to see you here. Thank you for all your assistance during the Rite of Parting. You are most welcome, Yu Hung. It was the least I could do. Hmm? Why? And what's with your strange expression? Oh, I see. My apologies. I appear to have interrupted your conversation with Mr. Zhongli. Kuching, are you here looking for us? Yes, I was going to ask you to introduce me to the Adepti. I thought that it would be fitting to send them some festive gifts, on behalf of the Liyue Qixing. But didn't you meet them when we were fighting to defend Liyue Harbor together? You could just as easily go and find them in Juyun Karst. Yes, but we only met briefly on that single occasion. The Adepti may have already forgotten about me. And I'm concerned it would be imprudent to show up so suddenly. Which is why I thought it would be more appropriate to ask you to introduce me first. So you even have to run around delivering gifts in person? <sighs> it sure doesn't seem easy to be a cheesing. <sighs> Thank you, Traveler. Let me go and prepare the gifts. I'm sorry to make you run errands with me during our big festival. I promise to make this quick, and I'll be sure to get you back in time to enjoy the fireworks show. Huh? T together mm -hmm. All right. I'll go to see the fireworks with you once I've finished my work. Speaking of which, Mr. Zhongli, the fireworks show will be particularly exciting this year. Please, don't miss it. Ah, yes. Thank you for your kind reminder. I should be going now. Traveler, please come find me at the Jade Chamber once you're ready. And there she goes! <laughs> That's the Yuhang. Efficient and reliable as ever. You're really reliable too, Zhongli! Why, thank you, Paimon. Please, don't forget our earlier conversation. Once you've collected enough story material, we can meet here again and discuss things further. Things are still unaccounted for. 
The new Jade Chamber is missing many of the contents held by its predecessor. All the literature, furniture, and ornaments I had collected followed the original Jade Chamber to its watery grave. Most of it was destroyed in the process, and the small handful of items that survived intact are strewn across the water's surface. Reclaiming them is taxing work. It takes someone with sturdy sea legs to handle this job, but even then, I just can't tell whether Beta will be able to fish out everything herself. Wait, so you made Beto go and fish your stuff out of the sea for you? To claim that I made her do anything would be imprecise. We reached a mutually beneficial agreement, as is always the case in our dealings. Payment is one aspect of it, but I also compensate her in other ways. <laughs> Let's just say it's a little complicated. Anyway, Beto is currently in the Guyen Stone Forest area. If you're interested, go pay her a visit. You may be just the help she needs. <sighs> Ningguang, you're really trying my patience. I'm sorry, but if the Jade Chamber smashed into smithereens when it hit the sea, then so did everything inside it. Just because I know the ocean doesn't mean I have the power to fish up the past. Oh, Traveler, what are you doing out this way? Great, you couldn't have picked a better time. The whole fleet's caught up with other things right now, so I'll take all the help I can get. Look, I even had to rope Xinyan into this. Yeah, what's the occasion? Did you come all the way out here to do a performance? You bet I did. <laughs> Nothing official, mind you. Beta wanted to hold a feast on board, and I agreed to come play a couple of tunes. But all that went out the window when someone showed up saying they were one of Ning Wong's secretaries. They called Beto away. Uh, I think it was Bai Wen or Bai Xiao. Uh, well, it was Bai something. Anyway, Ning Wong apparently came up with the bright idea of me going out on the sea and salvaging a bunch of her old valuables. She seems pretty willing to shell out for it, too. <sighs> well... At the end of the day, the price was right. So, yeah, we took the work. Now, if we're gonna go trawling for trinkets, we're gonna need a smaller vessel. All the available boats have been dispatched already, but by the looks of it, we're still one short. So you have your own vessel, do ya? <laughs> Great, let's take yours then. The more people we have on this job, the better. Because the sooner we get this wrapped up, the sooner we can get that feast going and actually enjoy the festival. So, this is it? This is your boat? It's really, uh, compact. But it works. It's about the right size for sweeping up junk from the water surface. The only thing is, we're packed in like sardines here. There's nowhere to put my guitar. Uh, Xinyan, your axe is getting a little too close for comfort. No, oh, whoops! <laughs> Let me try to move that out of your way. Huh? Um, Xinyan? What? Hold up, are those treasure hoarders? Hmm, we don't usually see these guys out at sea. Could they be here for the same reason as us? Come on, Traveler, steer us a little closer. Huh? Why are they headed back to shore? To reconvene with their posse, I'll bet. Speed it up a notch, Traveler. This is a chase now. <laughs> Manifest! They're gaining on us! We can't give them the slip! Call it Carmen! <laughs> Carmen? <laughs> what kind of treasure hoarder has a name like that? One that I happen to know pretty well. Didn't think we'd be running into him. Stop! All of you! Are you blind? Can't you see this is Captain Beto? <laughs> Captain Beto, it's been a while. Still fighting fit, I see. I guess it has been a while, Carmen. You're looking a little worse for wear. Maybe if you did your own dirty work rather than dispatching your minions, you wouldn't be so out of breath right now. 
<laughs> How you jest, Beto? Very amusing. <laughs> to get serious for a second, though, I'm gonna be needing all of this. So put everything down, and I won't cause you any more trouble. Of course, of course! Whatever Captain Beto wants. You heard her, people. Drop the goods! Here you are. It's all here. So, uh, we'll take our leave now? Wow! He did what we asked without a second thought! <laughs> Couldn't run off quickly enough, either. Ugh, don't waste any more time on them. We've still got salvaging to do. Ah, but we should load this stash onto the boat first. Come on, Traveler, help me out here. Hey! There's some things floating on the water! Hmm, I can't quite make out what they are. Let's bring them in and take a look. I'll take the rudder. Traveler, Xinyan, go reel them in. Hey! Looks like another treasure hoarder raft straight up ahead. But why is it empty? I guess Carmen told all his people to call it off. Smart choice. He knows who he's up against. <laughs> Let's keep going. Come on. We gotta wrap this up soon. Leave the junk, take anything and everything of value. And I need a few of you to load the boat up. Move it! Whatever you're about to do, don't. And whatever goods you're holding, they're mine now. B Beto? What are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. I mean, uh, what does it look like? We got lucky. Found some treasure floating around in the ocean. If you see anything you like, it's yours for the taking. A token of our esteem for the mighty Captain Beto. <laughs> Is that right? Well, good. I'll take it all. I, but, uh, c come on. <laughs> Be reasonable here. Me and the guys have been busting a gut gathering all this up. Y y you gotta leave us a little something something, surely. Let me make this crystal clear. These things do not belong to you, and they never will. So you're gonna put them down, and then you're gonna get as far away from me as is physically possible. Uh, that's a little, uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, why don't we start over here, huh? You see, we- Huh. Sounds a lot like you're stalling to me. Talk is cheap. Let's settle this the old-fashioned way. The boat's loaded in, in the water, boss. Come take a look. Uh, Captain Beto pulls no punches. Retreat! Retreat! Uh, if the boss is bailing, we'd better bail too. Whoa! Looks like they're out of here. We're, we're sorry we offended you, Captain Beto. Give us some time. We'll find a way to make it. Boy, they sure ran off quickly. Ah, uh, who cares? They didn't take anything with them. The bigger problem here is, there's no way all of this is going to fit onto your boat. <sighs> okay, here's what we're gonna do. Unload the boat and put everything here in one place. Based on the original plan, Sea Drake's boat should be coming past here at some point. When they get here, we'll hitch a ride with them. In the meantime, Traveler, head back to the Jade Chamber and deliver a message to Ningguang for me. Just tell her we're almost done fishing for trinkets here, so she should start getting my compensation ready. All right, thanks, Traveler. If both Carmen and Leo Leo were here, then I wonder if that other boss of theirs, Big Sis, is snooping around. I've got to tell Seadrake and the rest of the crew to stay on high alert. Welcome back. I trust Beto is making good progress on salvaging the items. Treasure hoarders, I see. Yes, I can imagine that must have been rather irksome. It sounds like you scared them off on this occasion. 
But it won't end there. They are not the type to forgive and forget. You needn't concern yourself with them any further, though. Leave them to Beto. She is well versed in handling treasure hoarders. I will be sure to make preparations for her compensation. I also owe you my thanks for coming all this way to deliver Beto's message. Now, please excuse me. I have other business that demands my attention. I wish you a fun-filled festival. Healthy but Ah, you've arrived. I've made all the necessary preparations and even packed some handmade snacks. Oh, that reminds me. I've also prepared some launch tubes made by Peng Yi. I hope the Adepti will like them. Is there anything else I should bring? Good. In that case, let's first pay Madame Ping a visit in the city before heading out to Joy Yoon Karst. The festive season is upon us. This is no time to be running hither and thither. We should relax and enjoy the season. I get it, Granny, but you know, having lots of clients is a good thing. <laughs> I'm sure it is, but really, child, who could be seeking your help during the lantern rite? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Madam Ping! Happy lantern rite! It's a pleasure to see you again, Madam Ping. How are you? Oh dear, well, look who's here. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you all in time for the festival. Hello, Traveler. Long time no see. Oh, and Lady Kuching is here too. The Qixing have prepared some small gifts for you to celebrate this festive occasion. There are some seasonal goods, two bolts of fine silk, and some exotic flower seeds which I picked specifically for you, Madam Ping. I brought all the lighter gifts with me, but the silks are still on the way. I just submitted them for delivery, so I'm sure they'll arrive in good time. Please, accept our humble gifts. I hope you'll find them to your liking. Wow, those gifts sound marvelous. Please be sure to thank the Chising on our behalf. Yes, how very nice of you. I'm sure the flowers will be most beautiful if you personally selected the seeds. Thank you very much, Kuching. Please, enjoy them. We intend to visit the other Adepti as well, so I'm afraid we must be going now. I presume you mean Cloud Retainer and the others? Yes, they should be over in Jueyun Karst. By the way, I've heard that you designed all the street decorations yourself, Kuching. You decorated the city so beautifully, yet you don't even have the time to go and see it for yourself. What a pity. Yenfei really enjoys spending time at the festival. You'll find her wandering around there whenever she can spare a moment. Come on, Granny. I wasn't wandering around. I was providing essential consultation to my clients. Oh, is that so? Were you also holding consultations with clients while you stood in front of the grilled tiger fish stand for all that time? As a matter of fact, I was helping them calculate the prices. It's not easy, you know. I had to check a lot of different items. That's right. There are no holidays in my line of work. I have to be ready whenever my clients need me. That sounds exhausting. Oh, Paimon can't imagine a life without holidays. Well, though there are no set holidays, I do get to decide on my own schedule. I can always budget some time to relax. Otherwise, I would always look exhausted in front of potential clients. It'd be hard to land new cases after leaving a terrible first impression. Besides, uh, what's the saying? Ah, yes. A rested worker is an efficient worker. I was there many times when I was supervising the festival construction, but I haven't been there since. I was planning to go after I finished my work, but the work keeps piling up. I ended up completely forgetting about it. Yes, I should take the opportunity to show you around while you're here. But first, we should head to Joy Yoon Karst. If you'll excuse us, Madam Ping. We'll be leaving now.
The festive season is fast approaching. What brings you to one's abode? Has the Ministry of Civil Affairs simply run out of work for you to do? Well, with Lantern Rite just around the corner, I decided it was a good time to take leave and pay you a visit. But, um, where are Mooncarver and Mountain Shaper? Them? Oh, don't even get one started. Oh, is that not the Traveler and the Yuhong too? Hmm, a rare visitor indeed. Happy Lantern Rite, everybody! Greetings, Venerable Adeptus. And greetings, Ganyu. Huh? Lady Kuching, I didn't expect to see you here. The Yuhong of the Chising. Here. Most fascinating. Hmm. Most courteous of you to travel hither and pay your respects. What is the purpose of your visit, if one may ask? It's the festive season, and on behalf of the Qixing, I'd like to give you our regards. Please, accept our humble gifts. As the governing body of Liyue, the Qixing must be busy with a myriad of affairs. And yet, you still take the time to visit one in this mountain abode. Eminently considerate of you. Oh, what an amusing cylindrical device. I wonder what that could be. This is a new type of firework which has been modified by the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I've heard that you are fond of gadgets, so I've brought one for your amusement. Cloud Retainer. Although she is not outwardly opposed to us, she is still skeptical of Liyue being ruled by humans. Maybe she thinks humans are still too young to handle it. Hmm. No matter. With time, our strength will become apparent enough. Before then, we should try to give her a good impression. <laughs> good thing I came prepared. Cloud Retainer has a great interest in gadgets. So she will certainly appreciate this gift. Ganyu has said that Cloud Retainer is very picky about food, so I made sure not to bring any snacks to avoid upsetting her. I've given everything thorough consideration. It should all go well. Goodness me. Who ever would have thought? Oh, my how very interesting. It is intricate with ingenious design, and is aesthetically agreeable. Yes. Judging from Cloud Retainer's expression, it seems this gift was a success. Very good. One shall gladly accept this device. One surmises from Ganyu's words that you also wish to see Moon Carver and Mountain Shaper. Pity. Your timing is most unfortunate. Hmm. Those two old fossils. Mooncarver has been most anxious to see how Liyue Harbor fares. But the agreement was clear. Liyue is now in the hands of the Chising, and he cannot simply roam into the city and begin supervising others' work as he pleases. So one tried to persuade him otherwise, proposing that if he could not be placated, he could go to the city disguised as a human, and take a brief look around. Alas, he is too stubborn, too proud. He would have none of it. Thereafter he left, claiming to have gone traveling. He has not returned since. Mountain Shaper, however, is more open-minded. But he said he wished to look for something new with which to defend the tranquility of his mountain. He told one that he was leaving in search of treasures, and one has not heard from him since. Wait. Surely this is not a case of two old coots and cahoots? Rusing to excuse themselves that they might venture behind one's back, to scurry away and go traveling together. Huh? What's everybody doing here? This voice... Is it Shenhe? Oh? Oh? So Shenhe's here too! 
Is she also here to visit Cloud Retainer? Is she the one that you mentioned before? Hello, everyone. Shenhe, this is Ganyu. You have most likely heard of her. Uh, oh, uh, hello. I'm Ganyu. I work at Yujing Terrace. I've heard that you returned to Liyua Harbor recently, so if you need anything, please feel free to come to me. I will. Thank you. I brought some food from the city. I heard that during Lantern Rite, people in Liyue bring food to share with their friends. So here I am. Oh no, I made a point of not bringing any food offerings. Is it going to be okay? Oh, and you even brought food for those two old fossils. That's right. Hmm. <clears throat> After barely a few days in the city, you have learned so much. Thank you for these delectable edibles, Shenhe. <sighs> huh? Everyone, you shall all be staying in Liyue Harbor in the future. One should like to think that you will all look out for each other. Is that understood? Will do. Yes, understood. This place is much livelier than I'd imagined. The Conqueror of Demons? One has not seen him of late. Well, then he's probably not enjoying Karst. Hmm. Let's go look for him in his usual spot, at Wang Shuin! In short... One is the only Adeptus who has elected to remain in Juryung Karst for the festival. Had Ganyu not come to visit, one would likely have stayed firmly put in one's abode to resume research of gadgets and mechanics. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please accept my profuse apologies. <laughs> Why the sudden solemnity? It would certainly not be the first time one has been interrupted on your account. As a youngling, you did so love to scurry around the place while one's attention was monopolized by mechanisms. You were especially drawn to a certain implement one had made. Oh, what was it? Oh? Oh no, here she goes again. This could spell trouble for Ganyu. Huh? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Cloud Retainer. I just remembered there's something I must attend to. I should be going. Oh, why the sudden haste? With the Yuhang present, why not settle this matter here and now? Uh, n no. It's something very important. In fact, I must see Lady Ningguang about it immediately. A matter so pressing that you must find Ningguang in person? Uh, yes. Ningguang and I have different scopes of work, you see, and Ganyu has to report to both of us, respectively. It's indeed not easy for her. Lady Kuching is trying to help me. Yes, that's right. I'm very sorry, everyone. I will take my leave. Huh. Gone already. That child, she has always been easily ruffled. One can sympathize, however. It is no simple thing to be a secretary. Nearly every matter in Liyue Harbor, momentous or trivial, passes through Ganyu's diligent hands. But even as an adeptus, she must never neglect her own health, lest she fall prone to exhaustion. Ganyu is an assiduous worker, Apt to foregoing food and rest once she is busy. Please make sure she eats and sleeps properly whenever you see her. I will. Ganyu has always been a great asset to us. Her health is a priority, so I will take good care of her. The Yuhang, reliable as ever. <laughs> it was indeed a wise decision to leave Liyue Harbor to you. We will certainly strive to live up to your expectations. 
As for these edibles, hmm, they do look delectable indeed. You may leave them here. Shanha shall bring these into one's abode, and one shall pass them on to Moon Carver and Mountain Shaper once they have made their return. This firework has an intriguing design. One must conduct a thorough study of it. And one also wants to hear what Shenhe has learned in Liyue Harbor. Oh, yes. I have many interesting stories to tell. Let us chat while one scrutinizes this device. Yeah! Don't you rest during the holidays? This is a festive season after all. <laughs> One has long been living secluded in the mountains, and no longer observes the holidays. Worry not, one shall take appropriate care of oneself. Rest is crucial. If one is too devoted to one's research and falls ill, one shall be in no fit state to test the devices personally. Is it really that important to test it yourself? Of course. As one sows, so do they reap, and the joy of reaping is what one yearns for. If one spends all that time working on a machine, yet forgets to test the outcome, hmm, that would be akin to a chef who never tries his own food, no? It is unwise to put the cart before the horse. Ah, <sighs> enough idle chatter, everyone. One must go and continue one's research. Come, Shanha, this way. A chef who doesn't get to try their own food? Hmm. That would be kind of weird. Cloud Retainer sure does know a lot about gadgets and cooking. Though, she can be a bit strange sometimes. But then again, she is an adeptus. That's the wisdom of an adeptus. She takes good care of those around her. Though she lives in seclusion, she also manages to bring everyone together. A hermit who's more social than most living in society. <laughs> what an interesting character. Traveler, Paimon, let's head to Wangshu Inn. Perhaps we'll find the Conqueror of Demons there. Let's ask Virgil Det where the Conqueror of Demons may be. Dr. Baiju, here are the herbs. I've picked lots of them. Splendid. Let me pack up and then we can be on our way. Hey, you guys! What are you doing? Dr. Baiju wanted herbs, so I came to collect herbs. Lots of them. And Dr. Baiju came too. Traveler! Paimon! Oh, and Lady Kaching! It's a pleasure to see you all. We're here stocking up more herbs. Boo Boo Pharmacy always runs out of digestive herbs during the festival seasons. With Lantern right just around the corner, I thought we should get prepared. We came all this way to collect some herbs, and we've picked quite the assortment. We'll be on our way back to the pharmacy once the herbs are sorted. I certainly didn't expect to see the Yuhong all the way out here. I have some business to attend to here. Ah, I see. It's nearly time to celebrate Lantern Rite, and you're still running errands. Hard working as always. I appreciate the sentiment, Dr. Baiju. I'm just doing my job. Kaching and the Traveler are very busy. And we are busy too. Everyone, keep it up. Right, thank you, Titi. We shouldn't tarry here any longer. Take care, you two. Uh, um, three. Traveler, let's go find Virgildet. Ah, Lady Kuching. What a surprise. Is there anything I can help you with? No, thank you. I'm just wondering if you might know where the Conqueror of Demons is. Oh, we never inquire about Xiao's whereabouts. But if he's here, he would be up on the rooftop terrace. Please feel free to go up and have a look. He 
doesn't seem to be here. Perhaps we came at the wrong time. Maybe he's out battling somewhere again. Let's leave the gifts with the owner and ask her to... How can I help? Yes. Hello. I am Kuching, Yuhong of the Liyue Chising. The Yuhong. Yes. I saw you when we battled Osile. You are fierce with your blade. Uh, anyway, we're here to give you some lantern right presents. See? There's lots of tasty food! Hm. <laughs> Don't waste your delicacies on me. Ugh. <sighs> Eradicating demons is my duty. You don't have to thank me. Karma is harmful to the human body, even if you have a stronger constitution than most. You should keep your distance from me when you can afford to. Hey, wait! Are you leaving? Look, oh, come on! Lantern Rite is almost here! Don't you want to take a break? Like I said before, I have no liking for crowds. I must remain vigilant of evil attacks, especially during the holidays. I will continue my patrol as usual. You should also exercise caution. And if there's any danger, good. We've completed our visits with all the Adepti. Let's take a break downstairs before we head back into the city. Oh no! What should we do? Huh? Oh! Lady Kuching! Lady Kuching! I'm so glad to see you here. Uh, Feng Yi? What's wrong? What are you doing here? Lady Kuching, let me explain. I had rearranged the fireworks layout and expanded the range to Qingsa Village just like you requested. My people finished setting up the fireworks and we left someone in charge to launch them for the show. But... <sighs> the person we left in charge came back shortly after and reported that all the fireworks in Qingsa Village had been stolen. I immediately reported the situation to the Millileth, and had another batch of fireworks made to be transported to Jinxa Village under escort. However, everyone's short-handed during Lantern Rite. The Millileth are already stretched thin and don't even have enough people to fill their regular patrols. They can't spare anyone to look after the fireworks for us. And we don't have many materials left, so if the second batch of fireworks gets stolen as well, we're done for. So... I was thinking to go to Chingsa Village and have a look first. Which is when I bumped into you. Lady Kuching, what should we do? According to the Ministry of Civil Affairs, the number of guards on patrol has to be doubled and rotated continuously during Lantern Rite. They must perform these extra measures in addition to their standard daily affairs. The only manpower they can muster during the festival would be the emergency response units. But, those special units are intended only for backup. There are not many of them, and they cannot perform prolonged guard duty. If we wish to make use of them, we'll need to resolve the problem quickly. Hmm... Maybe we can ask the Adepti for help. This would be a piece of cake for someone like Cloud Retainer, or Xiao! <sighs> no, that would only make us look incompetent. I'll handle this, Peng Yi. Help too, Kuching. Thanks, you two. Actually, I have an idea. Let me make some arrangements. Peng Yi, go back to Liyue Harbor and get the fireworks ready. Then meet me in Qingsa Village. Traveler, come with me. Let's ask around to see what happened. Oh, how could a whole batch of fireworks just vanish like that? Hello, Granny Roshin. 
we'd like to know more about the recent fireworks theft. Oh, Lady Kerching, I can hardly believe you came personally to investigate. <laughs> it's no trouble at all. Please, tell us what happened. Well, when they brought the fireworks, the children in the village were very excited. They were all gathered round, watching the area for a long time. The workers piled up the fireworks and said they would go confirm the locations to set them off. That's when they left the village. Oh, now let me remember. Ah, oh, yes. I recall that they left the fireworks in an open area just next to a house down the old road. But the very next day, all the fireworks were nowhere to be seen. The person in charge of the fireworks was so anxious that they went straight back to the city to find a solution. Oh, the villagers here are worried too. The fireworks missing can only mean that there are thieves about. There are elderly and kids in the village, you know. Although the Milliveth are stationed here, no one dares to go out anymore. I understand. Please help reassure the people in the village and tell them everything's going to be fine with the Milliveth standing guard. Traveler, let's go investigate the place where the fireworks were stolen. Fireworks were stolen here! The thieves must think there are mostly elderly and children living in Chinksa village. All too weak to defend themselves. Otherwise, they would never dare commit such a blatant crime. This is absolutely awful. We cannot let such a matter go unpunished. Let's see if we can find any clues here before we plan our next step. Huh? Are these... Footprints? Let's see where they lead. The footprints continue here. Let's keep following them. The footprints continue here. Let's keep following them. Sir, please. This is all just a big misunderstanding. <laughs> a misunderstanding, you say? If so, then tell me. Why are you hiding here? Please, good sir. This really is just a misunderstanding. <laughs> I would never dream of getting anywhere near the Feiyun Commerce Guild shipment. Something's happening over there. Let's go have a look. Oh! The Feiyun Commerce Guild? It must be... Please, save your breath. Restrain this fellow! Tightly now! We mustn't let him get away! Yes, young master. Uh, I was sure it was an evil spirit. Turns out it's the treasure hoarders again. Xing Chun Chun Yun! Hello! Well, hello, dear traveler. Our fates cross once again. What brings you here? Uh, excuse me. Please, tell me what is happening here. Ah, yes. Allow me to explain. It so happens that every year during the Lantern Rite, the Feiyun Commerce Guild transports supplies to various villages outside of Liyue Harbor. Family rules stipulate that the supplies must be personally escorted by a family member. Because my older brother went last year, the duties have fallen to me this time around. Oh! So what's Chang Yun doing here? Chang Yun happened to be visiting, so I cordially invited him to join us for the journey. say he thought there was an evil spirit. I see that you are not familiar with the story of old. It is said that fireworks were once called firecrackers and were used to ward off evil spirits and the like. In ancient times, Liyue was plagued by evil spirits. As people gathered together to celebrate the annual festival, the Yang energy would intensify and evil spirits were thus attracted to the fringes of the city by the strong scent. Liyue Harbor was under the gracious protection of Rex Lapis, so the spirits dared not enter the city. However, they still lingered near the city gates and pestered the passers-by. In order to drive the spirits away, people made firecrackers and lit them near the city gates. The flashes of light and loud noise successfully drove the spirits whence they came. 
This festival is now known as the Lantern Rite. It was my intention to travel around to see if there are any malicious spirits lying in wait for passers-by. Since I happened to have a shipment of goods to deliver, and our course was through the mountains, I naturally thought it best to have my Thaumaturge friend traveling alongside me. Sincho said he learned the story about evil spirits from an ancient text. The text vividly describes the appearance and even the whereabouts of the spirits. Anyway, when we arrived at the area, Chongyun sensed an ambush about to take place. Upon searching the area, we found a group of treasure hoarders. They tried to flee the moment we were upon them. Fortunately, I was swift enough to catch one of them. Your timing couldn't have been more fortunate. We were just preparing to send them to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. He insists the matter is merely a misunderstanding, but things seem quite clear as I see it. Good sir, just hear me out. Everyone knows the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Had we known it was your merchant caravan, we never would have dared to attack. The master of the Feiyun Commerce Guild is famous for his generosity and noble deeds, a, a, a true hero of the people. Uh, so, you see, this is nothing but a big misunderstanding. We, we didn't want any trouble with the guild. What you mean to say is that you were targeting someone else then? Well, who was it? I... Uh, well, uh, well, just trust me. We were definitely not trying to steal your goods. Please, please believe me. Master Singcho, I would like to borrow a few of your staff to escort the thief to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. As for the bounty, we will pay you afterward. It is my humble duty to uphold justice. No remuneration shall be necessary. Come then, see that this thief is taken to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yes, young master, leave it to us. You heard him. Take this man over there and make sure he's secured. Tie each of his fingers separately if you have to. He's not gonna pull anything under our watch. Wait a second. Please also deliver this message to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. <clears throat> it's very likely that this thief is related to the recent fireworks theft in Chingsa Village. Make sure they have someone question him. Thoroughly. <laughs> so the plot thickens. Is your task clear? We mustn't disappoint the Yuong. Yes, young master, I understand. We'll be on our way. I've heard many good things about you, Master Xingqiu. Thank you for your assistance. I hardly lifted a finger. Think nothing of it. Everyone! My intuition tells me that there could be more than one group of treasure hoarders in this area. More than one group? Oh, you've got quite a keen eye too, Chongyun. During our search, I found scattered sets of footprints differing from those on the road. There may still be other treasure hoarders waiting to ambush passers-by. When I was chasing the treasure hoarders earlier, I noticed that they were nearly unarmed and very few in numbers. If they truly intended to ambush the Veiyun Commerce Guild, they must have overestimated themselves. If you ask me, they didn't seem to be staging an ambush, but rather it appeared as if they were waiting for someone. It appears they may be the thief's accomplices. They were probably hiding here to wait for the stolen goods. What exactly are the stolen goods, if I may ask? Taking advantage of the elderly and children. What a loathsome group of criminals. Lady Kuching, don't fret about manpower. Chongyun, let's go lend them a hand in Chingsa Village, shall we? Yeah, just leave it to us. We can handle a bunch of thieves. Thank you. That will help alleviate the crisis in Chingsa Village. Unfortunately, the footprints we were following end here. I don't know where we should go next. <sighs> it seems we were only a moment away from catching all the treasure hoarders. Aww. Kuching. <sighs> Thank you. Master Xingqiu, I'll leave Chingsa Village under your watch. Most assuredly, Lady Kuching. It's fortunate our paths crossed with those two. It's so cool to fight for justice! The thieves who stole the fireworks haven't revealed themselves yet. I'll go have a look around. Traveler, please go take a rest in Chingsa Village. I've troubled you enough already. I can handle the rest of this matter myself. Uh, Kuching, are you planning to 
look for clues all by yourself? Um, somehow that doesn't sound like a very good idea. Oh, right! You're in the Liwa Chising. Why don't you ask some of your subordinates to help? At least it'll be safer than investigating on your own. Yes, I agree, but we are short-handed at the moment. I can handle these trivial matters myself. The fireworks that were transported to Jinxa village were quite bulky. They couldn't have gone far. Way I see it, if they were clever enough, they would conceal the stolen goods somewhere and then come pick them up later. All I have to do is find out where they hid the fireworks and then return to the location with reinforcements. Don't worry. I am not reckless, and I won't carelessly alert the thieves. You can certainly trust me by now. Well, when you put it that way... It's settled then. Traveler, Paimon, please go get some rest. I'll go find you in Chingsa Village when I'm done. Rest assured, all is quiet here in Chingsa Village. Chongyun is guarding the outside and I'm guarding the inside. Not a problem in sight. Good. I've made some progress in my investigation as well. Oh? What are you planning? Is it time to strike? Let's go! Traveler, Paimon, you are just in time. I looked everywhere and I found some clues regarding the treasure hoarders. Besides wagon tracks, I also came across bits and pieces of fireworks packaging scattered on the road. Following those clues, I was able to finally locate the missing fireworks. But there was no sign of treasure hoarders. No, I think they might be just overly careless. I seem to have found the location where they've been stashing all their stolen goods. They must have thought it was well hidden and deemed it unnecessary to post any guards. The amount of fireworks they've amassed there is astonishing. Not only did they steal the ones in Chingsa Village, but also from other locations too. They've gathered all the stolen goods there. I've asked the Mililith on guard at Chingsa Village to report this to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. They will organize a search around that warehouse. Now that the Mililith is involved, you don't need to handle this yourself anymore! The treasure hoarders are notoriously cunning, and they may even have lookouts. If they notice anything suspicious, they will move the fireworks and our single lead will be lost. I have to keep an eye on the situation. Uh, you're not really thinking that you can take all of them yourself, are you? No, I am not that reckless. I just want to investigate the case thoroughly. But now that I have your help, the idea is feasible. So you really are considering it? Okay, then there's no time to lose. Let's go. Please hide yourselves. Let's wait and see what happens. Hey boss, you think we have enough fireworks now? Ha! <laughs> Are you kidding? This ain't nowhere near enough. Ah, uh, but boss, if we want more fireworks, we're gonna have to steal them in the city. Ain't gonna be easy. Hmm. You got a point. All right, then we steal those things that make a real loud bang but don't light up real pretty. What do they call them? Ah, yeah, firecrackers. Those'll do the job. All we need to do is make some real ruckus. As long as we distract the Millilith, the other hoarders can do their end of the job. You get it? Got it, boss. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you. We're gonna hit the jackpot this time. Uh, but, uh, boss, all our boys are out scouting around. Don't you think we need a few more to guard the stash? Hey, don't worry about it. The Millilith are swamped with lantern right. They won't have time to come out here. All right, move it, boys. Just a few more batches and we'll be... Uh-oh. Hey, boss, we got trouble. Huh? What happened? The jig is up, boss. The, the Millilith are coming, and it seems they've already caught our scouts. If one of the boys hadn't set off a firework to warn us, we would have been completely blindsided. Boss, let's run! But how did the Millilith find out about us? And so quickly, too! Ah, fine! Leave the fireworks and let's split! 
They won't be catching us! It's time to make our move. Ready? Let's go! Drop your weapons and surrender immediately! Ha! Get out of my way! You got a death witch or something? I'll show you! Huh? Wait a second. You're Lady Kunchi, the hero. <laughs> so you do recognize me then. I'll say it one more time. Drop your weapon and surrender. Now! Alright, so you want to do this the hard way. We... we surrender, you Hung. Now, I want some answers. What were you planning to do with the stockpile of fireworks? We... we just... Tell the truth, and I might go easy on you. We... Uh, fine. We were gonna smuggle these fireworks into the city and ignite them during the Lantern Rite's opening ceremony. The fireworks are really bright and loud, and would definitely raise some havoc. We were gonna rob the city while everyone's distracted by the explosions. But, uh, we didn't seem to have enough fireworks, so... Oh? So you mean you had more than one group of thieves stealing fireworks? Yeah, that's right. Originally, I had all the hoarders out stealing fireworks, but then one of them got caught by the Feiyun Commerce Guild and was arrested. I really didn't get it. Why did the Feiyun Commerce Guild get involved? We were only stealing from the government. No, uh, what I meant is, uh, well, I was worried that the guy who got arrested would rat us out. Who would have guessed we'd end up running into you like that? Hey, didn't one of you just say that the Millilith were coming too? Yeah, that's right. I wonder how the Millilith even found out we had dispatched scouts. They somehow captured almost all of them. If someone hadn't alerted us, we would have all been caught. Well, you did get caught. Well, uh... Yeah. It appears that the Millilith managed to get the captured treasure hoarder to talk. There may still be other treasure hoarders in the area. We should head elsewhere just to be safe. Traveler. Please escort the treasure hoarders back to Chingsa Village and hand them over to the Millilith stationed there. I'll be there once I am finished inspecting this place. Yes, you too. I'll see you in Chingsa Village. <sighs> this is the last batch of fireworks that I can get. Please ensure that there will be no further problems. Don't worry. The Yu Hong will be taking care of this personally, and with us on guard, I assure you it'll be safe. Yes, indeed. Oh, it appears the Traveler has returned. And with two others, no doubt. It's definitely dangerous to infiltrate an enemy area like that. If only I was there to fight alongside you. Come now, we both know the Traveler is most capable. <laughs> but who would have known we performed such a noble deed? We had arrested the treasure hoarder earlier by mere happenstance. Yeah, talk about a coincidence! It seems that justice always finds its way into the world. It is in fateful moments that miracles are born. So it was you! You horrible brutes are the ones who stole the fireworks? Just the sight of you two makes my blood boil. Please... Calm down. I doubt they'll be causing any more trouble now that they're in custody. Thank you very much, Traveler. But may I ask, why has Lady Kuching not returned with you? Lady Kuching was worried there'd be more treasure hoarders lurking about. She wanted to conduct a full search of the area. Oh, I see. Yes, Lady Kuching is quite thorough. A squad of Millilith came by just now. I believe they were sent by the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I also heard that most of the fleeing treasure hoarders have already been apprehended. Hopefully that will be the end of this matter. Anyway, you may leave these treasure hoarders to us. I will escort them back to the city and make sure they stand trial with the others. And thus, our chapter has finally reached its timely conclusion. I am partial to fireworks myself, but I'm afraid we must also be leaving now. Huh? Why the hurry to get back to the Feiyun Commerce Guild? 
Oh, don't tell us you have work to do, too! Inevitably, affairs do become busier around festive seasons. But no need to worry. We have many attendants to assist us. And there's always Chongyun, too. Huh? You mean you're assigning more work to me? Tis only my duty as your dearest friend. Work before play, as they say. I'm sure you understand. Oh, alright. I suppose. As the saying goes, many hands make light work. As long as work is assigned to the right people, everything will proceed without a hitch. If you ask me, I think speaking eloquently is just a guise for assigning work to everybody else. All right, all right. I shall treat you to a meal after the work is done. Farewell, traveler. By the way, do you know when Lady Kuching will be back, traveler? There are not many fireworks in the second batch that I brought, so I'm worried that we can't achieve the show's desired effect. I was hoping we could somehow retrieve the stolen fireworks. Treasure hoarders. We heard an explosion and thought it might be treasure hoarders sending signals to one another again. Uh, I see. Sorry, that's not the case. I saw a few sticks of fireworks on the ground, so I fiddled with them and... Sure enough, it seems... I accidentally lit the fuse. Before I could react, the fireworks were... <clears throat> already up in the air. So no enemies? Whew, well that's good. We thought you might have been surrounded by bad guys! <laughs> I apologize, I didn't mean to alarm you. Fortunately, there are no more treasure hoarders in the area. It seems this matter has finally come to an end. Great! The case of the stolen fireworks is finally solved! Good thing we were able to get to the bottom of it! Otherwise, those beautiful fireworks would have gone to waste, and the whole show would be ruined. By the way, Kuching, you're the one in charge of the fireworks show, which means you know the best viewing spot, right? Yes, of course. The best view should be from the Jade Chamber. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten my promise. But first, I have to drop by the Ministry of Civil Affairs and close this case. Leave the rest of this to me. You've already been a great help. Why don't you go for a walk around the city and I'll meet you when I'm done? Okay, but we'll be waiting for you! Yes, I'll be there. <sighs> Kuching really is super busy! I'll meet you when I am done. How many times have we heard that already? Now Paimon gets why Lady Ningguang is so worried about Kuching. If she keeps working like this, she really will miss the lantern right. Oh yeah! We said we would meet him! And we've even collected a few opinions about taking a rest from work. Zhang Li said he'd wait for us at third round knockout. Let's go find him! Way behind schedule. Hey! Is that who Paimon thinks it is? Yes, you are quite right. I shall take your wise words to heart, sir. They will certainly be most helpful in my next performance. You are welcome, Miss Yun. Your willingness to hear suggestions is indeed impressive. It's no wonder your opera performance has only been getting better. No, I'm afraid that's not always the case. Though I am still young, I can be quite arrogant at times. I do not always accept advice so readily, but your wisdom has spoken to me. Zhang Li! We're back! Ah, you've returned. Hmm? You are also acquaintances? Yes, we sure are! 
Not everyone gets the privilege of meeting someone so knowledgeable and discreet as Mr. Zhang Li. You are indeed well connected, traveler. I am flattered, Miss Yun. It is an honor for an ordinary person like myself to have met the traveler. Wow. Did he really just say that? I'm sure you must have matters to discuss. I have an appointment with Xinyan, so if you'll excuse me, I'll take my leave. Very well. Goodbye, Miss Yun. See you around, Yun Jin! So, tell me, what have you learned from your trip? Hmm, I see. Well, Traveler, what do you make of all their opinions? Yeah, Paimon already started creating her own story on the way here. The goal is to convince Kuching to rest more with just a simple story, right? If that's the case, then Paimon thinks we can use food as our theme. Think about it. Who doesn't like delicious food? And when it comes to eating, everyone has an opinion. It's the perfect angle for our story. <laughs> Paimon knows just what to write. Let's say there's a chef in Lua who's very talented at cooking. He opens a massive restaurant at Liyue Harbor, and lots of customers come every day, so he's always super busy. Then... Uh, well... Uh, how should the story go from there? Ooh, that's good! Uh, but wait, didn't we say he's really good at cooking? That would make sense. There's no need to jump to the conclusion. Why don't you elaborate more on the chef? More about the chef? You mean both good and bad things? Yes. To gain one's empathy, there must be familiarity. I would like to understand this chef character of ours a little deeper. Hmm... Paimon didn't think this far. Uh... Why don't you take it from here? Since you've spoken with others familiar with Kuching, why don't we integrate their thoughts into your story? That will allow it to become all the more convincing. Um, okay. Let Paimon think. Hmm, what did Cloud Retainer say? As one sows, so do they reap. And the joy of reaping is what one yearns for. <laughs> that was quite poetic, Paimon. Bravo! <laughs> oh, now Paimon remembers? Cloud Retainer said that if she spends all her efforts working on a machine with no time to test the outcome, then she'd be like a chef who doesn't get to try their own food. Problems are bound to pop up. Yes, it is most unwise to put the cart before the horse. Uh-huh. That's exactly what she said. So, let's make that happen to the chef in the story. He's great at cooking, but he can't enjoy his own food. Hmm. But there must be a reason why he doesn't partake in the delicacies he makes. Right! It's because he's super busy! He receives the customers, he takes the orders, and he does all the cooking himself. <laughs> that should keep him busy enough. He's so busy every day that he doesn't even have time to take a break, which obviously also means he doesn't have time to eat. Hey, it's just a story. Besides, it's supposed to leave a powerful impression. Kind of like fireworks. Yes, the chef is unwilling to delegate tasks to others. He's overconfident about his own cooking abilities and tries to accomplish everything on his own. Paimon already kind of feels sorry for him. Oh, right! That's what the chef doesn't understand. And there's another saying. Um, what was it again? Oh, yeah! A rested worker is an efficient worker. That's what Yanfei said. So, 
know, the chef gets busier and busier to the point where he can't stand up straight anymore and he has big, dark circles under his eyes. The customers tell him to take a few days off to get some rest, but the chef won't listen. His judgment is clouded by the chores before him. He is oblivious to mountains in the distance, the bigger picture. Eventually, the chef falls ill, and his cooking becomes far worse than when he started. The customers can't convince him to rest, and they don't like his cooking anymore. So they stop coming to his restaurant. Rest is always of great importance. Although we may come across various difficulties in our lives, pushing ourselves is never a good modus operandi. The story is quite simple, without embellishment, yet deeply meaningful. If our listener is sensible, then she should quickly grasp the meaning contained within. You're saying Paima made a good story? Sincerity can allow one to see clearly and earnest advice can provide sound direction. The story is indeed good. The Yuhang is an adroit leader. I am certain she will understand the message you are trying to convey. Really? Score one for Paimon! Given that the case involving the treasure hoarders has come to an end, she is inevitably tired. Now will be the ideal moment to speak with her. If all goes well, I think your story will be a success. Hear that? Zhang Li says Paimon's story has what it takes. If anyone knows a good story, he does. Quick, let's go find Kuching. The matter has finally come to an end, but we mustn't lower our guard. Increase patrols around Chingsa Village and coordinate our people at other fireworks locations to prevent any further theft. Yes, Lady Kuching. And by the way, the Ministry has requested the Millilith to increase security along travel routes. How is that proceeding? It's all been taken care of. However, due to various reasons, there are still some blind spots in the city. Have we drafted a new patrol map? Please, give me a copy and I'll look it over when I have time. Understood. The patrol map is still being drafted, but it will be ready soon. Okay. Also, I... Oh, excuse me, Lady Kitchen? Your friends are here. Hi, Kuching. Still working? Aren't we going to see the fireworks? Oh, yes. But I thought we'd meet at the Jade Chamber. Why have you come here? Yeah! We walked around the city just like you told us to. It's very nice. But it would be even nicer if you could join us. Do you still have work to do? It's nothing urgent, really. Just some trivial matters. But I wish to get it done as soon as possible. You can leave it to us, Lady Kuching. You've been working hard for a long time, so you should get some rest. If I'm not mistaken, the Traveler is here to remind you to take a break. That's right! Something so important that we must speak with you personally, right now! Oh, really? In that case... Jingcheng. I'll let you take charge. Thank you. Understood. I'll handle things from here. <sighs> Traveler and Paimon, let's go to the Jade Chamber. The view there is nicer and it's much more private. Perfect for talking. Well, here we are. What was it you wanted to talk about? Yeah. We want to tell you a story from this beautiful view. What do you say? All right. I'm listening. So it turns out we just heard some big news in Tevat. A very talented chef is in trouble. Oh, is the chef from Liu? From Liu Li Pavilion or Shinua Kiosk, perhaps? No, no. Uh, the chef is from... Mondstadt, yeah, and he's really, really good. He had a restaurant right next to the city gate. He was super efficient, and his cooking was really delicious. So his restaurant had been getting more and more popular. In fact, he became so busy that the worker from the florist next door asked him, 
Sir, why don't you find someone to help you in the restaurant? But the chef brushed the idea aside, saying that he's the only one that can turn top quality ingredients into world class dishes. No one could help him. Hmm. Well, confidence is an essential trait for a good chef. He must be an excellent cook. That's what everyone was saying. But surprisingly, after just six months, no one would dine in his restaurant anymore. Hmm? Shocking, right? Do you have any guess why? Hmm... Maybe the chef had fallen ill, or...? Wrong answer! You tell her, Traveler! Ding, ding, ding! Yep, it's because the chef was too stubborn. He would keep himself busy every day and try to make the most delicious dishes for all his guests. But he forgot that he's only human and needs time to eat and rest! He was so busy that he didn't even have time to eat and couldn't even taste his own cooking. He was unwilling to seek help, even when he's tired, because he thought he's the only one capable of cooking the best dishes. Eventually, the people around him felt like they couldn't help him anyway, so they just left. And because he had forgotten the original taste of his dishes, he was no longer a good chef. In the end, his restaurant had no choice but to close for good. Uh, oh. I see. He's overly confident, which disappoints the people around him, and he's so impatient that he ends up losing sight of his original purpose. <sighs> so, that's the whole story? Oh, um... That's the whole thing! Hey! Didn't you just say that Paima made a great story? Hmm? Huh. Hmm? Did you come up with that story? Oh! Uh, no! We just... Uh... <laughs> hmm... How should I describe it? The story is very simple, and I suppose the ending isn't really surprising. Think before you act and don't overexert yourself. Of course, I understand these concepts in theory, but when tasks come to me personally, it is easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. Yes, up in the mountains, we can see the mist in the clouds. Out in the ocean, we can see fog on the sea. That's why, from time to time, we need to examine where we are, remove the fog, and feel our heart. So, how do you feel now, Kuching? How do I feel? Hmm... Deep down inside, I wish I could slow down time. That way, I could finally take the opportunity to walk around the city, see the people I wish to see, and watch the fireworks. Thinking back, I used to be even more impatient. My colleagues would resign after just three months of working with me. You're completely right. It's important to know your boundaries. Uh, but I am getting better. You can tell, can't you? And I did make a promise with you, didn't I? We agreed to enjoy the fireworks show together this year. So... Happy Lantern Rite, Traveler and Paimon. I'm very happy to be here and enjoy this moment together with you. I've poured all my best effort into this fireworks show. And now that we're here, I sincerely hope you will enjoy it. I feel very fortunate to be right here, enjoying the fireworks, and enjoying the view of Liu Harbor. Happy Lantern Rite. <laughs> Happy Lantern Rite. And... Thank you.
Lady Kuching, the item Lady Ningguang prepared for you has arrived. Traveler, wait here for a moment. Don't go anywhere. Huh? Must be something important. Traveler, Paimon? Huh? Ningguang had her personal tailor make it for me. Said it's an imported style. Well, do you like it? Wow, it's beautiful! <laughs> it's time. Traveler, please enjoy the grand finale of this year's Lantern Rite. The fireworks show. Check you out. Looking pretty fancy. Only a true treasure catches the eye of Captain Beto. Seems I've struck gold with this one. You. Sorry to trouble you again this year. <laughs> no trouble at all. Uh, lantern right. <laughs> Happy lantern right. Why, the pleasure is all mine, as is the surprise, surely. It must be fate that brings us together in this place. How have you fared as of late? I sense you are older and wiser than the last time we met. It seems your travels continue to yield valuable insights. You are too kind. So, Zhang Li, are you here to listen to stories over tea again? I had originally planned to set out after this last round of tea. However... However? I had planned to take a walk to Chingsa village and gather some nascent bamboo shoots, which are currently in season. 
A villager there once gave me a small sample, and they possessed a most excellent flavor. Huh? Nice and bamboo shoots? Why can't you just use normal bamboo shoots instead? Wait, Paimon knows! Because Zhongli prefers the finer things in life, right? Okay, Mr. Particular, let me guess! Ahem. The nascent bamboo shoot has a uniquely tender texture and a delicate sweet taste that its normal cousin cannot match. <laughs> An astute observation, Paimon. You know me well indeed. Lantern Rite is almost upon us, but besides the bamboo shoots, there are a few other items I have not yet procured from Director Hu's list. May I ask if you have already made arrangements for the days ahead? to say hi to some of our friends, but before we were able to figure out a schedule, we ran into you! Well then, might I invite you to imagine the sheer delight that is a soup cooked with the freshest nascent bamboo shoots in all the land. Generous cuts of pork belly and crisp, fragrant bamboo shoots placed together in the pot and left to simmer slowly for half a day. Ah, oh, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Paimon's on to your plan. You just want to hoodwink us into fetching your bamboo for you. Hmm? Why, I assure you, I would do no such thing. I merely wish to inform you of the freshest, most succulent and flavorful bamboo shoots one could ever hope to taste. You... Ugh. Let's go, Traveler. Paimon's taste buds can't take it anymore. Collecting a few bamboo shoots shouldn't take too long. Paimon has got to get her hands on some of that soup. Such fine specimens are indeed well worth the excursion. Very well. I shall leave the bamboo shoots to you. Should you have the good fortune to find some, please share them with me as well. See? See? Paimon knew he was just bamboozling us. However, there is no need to rush. The streets of Liu will be bustling with visitors and filled with all manner of celebrations during the festive period. By all means, go wherever your interests lead you. The nascent bamboo shoots would be but a wonderful final touch to a most exceptional feast. What an honor it would be to savor them in the company of friends. <laughs> Take care now, you two. Listen. As for what? Director Who's list, hmm. I shall attend to it after one last round of tea. Bamboo shoot, bamboo shoot. Nascent bamboo shoot. Uh, oh! This one's only just sprouted! And it looks super fresh! Paimon thinks this is the one! This should be enough! Let's head back! Help! Help! <gasps> Are you okay? Did any water go down the wrong pipe? <coughs> I... Uh, I think I'm okay now. Thank you so much. That was scary. Well, at least you're all right. All thanks to your savior here. Oh, a little girl? Greetings, everyone. My name is Yao Yao. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Whoa, she's so well-mannered. My name's Paimon, and this is the Traveler. <sighs> I'm Dvorak, a musician from Fontaine. I came through Stone Gate, intending to head towards Li Yue Harbor, but then I became captivated by the beautiful scenery, and before long, I was completely lost. Just now, I was so mesmerized by the waterfall that I slipped and fell into the water. If it weren't for Miss Yao Yao's help, I shudder to think what might have happened. 
It's all right, Mr. Dvorak. The splashing around the bottom of the waterfall means the stone path is always wet and slippy. You definitely have to be careful. Next time you're exploring an unfamiliar environment, try to focus on what's right in front of you. Don't let your mind wander. As long as you watch your step, accidents like this won't happen anymore. Yes, ma'am. I understand. I'll remember to be more careful next time. Oh, are you hungry, sir? Oh, uh, I'll be fine. <laughs> Please, sir, it's quite all right. I was born and raised here in Liyue. It's only natural for me to extend my hospitality to any guests who are passing through. I expect you still have quite a long journey ahead of you. It's very important to keep your energy levels up. I still have some lotus flower crisps left in my backpack. Why don't we split them between the four of us? Aww, what a thoughtful kid! She even has some for Paimon! <laughs> You're welcome. Mmm, so tasty. If only there were more. Having a healthy appetite is a good thing. It means Paimon's still growing. If I'd known I was going to run into you, I would have made a second batch. Hope you're taking notes, Traveler. This is how you treat your Paimon. What do you think, sir? Are Liyue's snacks to your taste? I wonder if they're not sweet enough. No, no, they're perfect. When I was traveling through Mondstadt, I had a chance to try one of their moon pies. It had a meat filling unlike these crisps. But apart from that, it seems like they follow a similar cooking process. Both are delicious in their own way. As for Fontaine's cooking, though... It's been a long time since I've had a taste of home. Sounds like you spend a lot of time on the road, huh? I do. It's part of my job. I'm one of the main organizers of the Iridescence Tour. Iridescence Tour? The Iridescence Tour is one of the biggest music festivals in Fontaine. We're looking to expand, though. Our aim is to hold a festival in every nation. At least, all the main organizers share this goal. Unfortunately, it's a long story, so I'll spare you the details. But anyway, so the main reason I'm traveling all around Tavad is to promote our music festivals. But I have some personal reasons, too. Well, what are they? Just tell us already! Let me see. Well, to explain it in full, I'd have to start with a story from my ancestors. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Oh, I love listening to stories! Mm-hmm, we want to hear it too! Okay, then I'll start from the beginning. The story goes that my ancestor, who was also a traveler, once slipped and fell into a lake during his travels. As he was sinking and gasping for breath, he heard a wondrous tune in the air. They say it was the most beautiful, moving melody he had ever heard. Even in that life and death moment, the ethereal music seized his full attention and almost made him forget the fact that he was drowning. When he finally came to, he found that he had already been brought ashore. Not too far from him stood an unfamiliar woman with an almost divine aura. Once she saw that he was no longer in danger, she left without a word. My ancestor tried to run after her to give his thanks, but although a mere dozen paces separated them, no matter how quickly he gave chase, he drew no closer and remained a dozen paces behind. In the end, all he could do was to bow in thanks to the woman as he watched her walk away towards the rivers and mountains in the distance, before at last he turned around and made his way home. Once he returned to Fontaine, he began to learn an instrument so that he could spread his story far and wide, just like the Bart's. After generations of retelling, embellishing, and dramatizing, people have come to think of that lady as something like a fairy. The story's become something of a local legend in Fontaine. It's called The Lady Overlooking the Lake. People now say that if you go down to the lakeside and play an instrument, 
So long as you play a pleasing melody, you will hear a fairy lady who is hiding out of sight playing along with you. Wow! Well, yes. As it stands now, it's become a touch too romantic and detached from reality. But I understand the original story and its historical grounding better than anyone else. I wanted to find out the truth of this tale. So I decided to retrace my ancestors' steps and search for that lady's modern-day descendants. Of course, there's no way of knowing where my ancestor fell into the lake all those years ago. So I always knew that the search would be akin to looking for a needle in a haystack. I've spent many years on the road now, and I'm nowhere near as fit as I was in my youth. <sighs> the wish that I've spent half my life chasing after has now become something of an obsession. Well, I haven't lived half of my life yet, but still, I understand how you must feel. I'm in too! It's like... Mm, imagine if you saved the center of a lotus flower crisp, which is the best part, by the way, because you wanted to eat it another day, but then suddenly, swoosh, it falls into the water never to be seen again! Paima would definitely remember that for the rest of her life. <laughs> There's no need to feel sorry for me. I've made some progress over the years. For example, I've concluded that the story must have taken place in Liyue, so you finally found a lead? Yes, in fact, that's an intriguing story in and of itself. I'd always known that Monsta is the city of song and freedom. But more recently, I heard that the animal Archon returned to Monsta for a festival in the fall and learned that he himself is a patron deity of music. So I prayed for the animal Archon's guidance in the Monsta Cathedral, and as soon as I set foot back outside the front gate, I noticed a cluster of leaves being blown in the wind further and further west, towards Stone Gate. A friendly local told me that this meant the wind was guiding me in the direction of Liyue, so I followed their advice and made my way here. Right? You get it. I knew I'd find someone that agrees with me eventually. Hmm, are you sure? It sounds a bit too much like one of those fake legends told by those treasure hoarder guys to scam gullible grannies from Chingsa Village. Rex Lapis has returned to the world! Just give me some incense and a little more towards the travel fees, and I will pass your gift on to the Lord of Geo, and ask him to keep you and your family safe and well, and so on and so on. Don't worry, Yao Yao! We... uh... We have a lot of experience with deciphering omens and stuff. And anyway, you only got scammed if you handed over Mora, right? Actually, to express my gratitude, I did spend rather a lot of Mora on several bottles of fine wine, which I left at the Statues of the Seven along the way. Oh dear. Well, how about this, ladies and gentlemen? Why don't I bring you all to Yujing Terrace to see Miss Ganyu? I don't know very many people, so I can't help you out much, but Miss Ganyu and the Qixing know just about everything. If you've been scammed, they'll help you get your Mora back. And if the wind was telling the truth, and you want to keep looking for that lady's family, they'll be the best people to ask. But you've already helped me so much. Well, I was going to take some new medicinal herbs and plants I picked to miss on you anyway, so it's no trouble at all. You know what? It's been a minute since we saw Ganyu too! It should be nice to pay her a visit before Lantern, right? Alright, well, my sincere thanks to you all. I will never forget your kindness. Okay, everyone. Please follow me. <laughs> I'll be your guide. Remember to watch where you're going, okay? Uh-oh. Paimon's out of a job! Eh, oh well, Paimon will just be a cheerleader instead! Wow, Liyue Harbor looks very different from when I came last. It's almost as if I'm listening to the same melody, but with a richer timbre and new variations added. Well, we are here doing Lantern Ride after all. It only comes once a year, so they have a big celebration! It's fair to say that this time of year is when Liyue Harbor looks the prettiest! Great! Let's go and check it out! 
I can't wait to get into the city and see it all up close for myself. The streets are breathtaking. Smiles and laughter everywhere I look. It's contagious. I can almost feel the music in the air. I have the urge to start waving my conductor's baton. <laughs> I'm glad that you're enjoying the city. everyone! A fancy meeting you all here! What a nice surprise! Hello, Shenyan! Let me introduce some new friends! They are... Traveler Paimon and Mr. Dvorak, right? <laughs> I've known them all for quite a while. <laughs> when I was last here to advertise a Liwe stop for the Iridescence Tour, Shenyan was one of the few people willing to give me the time of day. Feels like I've been chasing this iridescence tour bandwagon halfway around the world, but I keep getting stood up. What's going on, Mr. Dvorak? Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Shinyan. We've had a string of terrible luck recently, and every time we've tried to put on a show, something or other has come up to stop our plans from materializing. Is that right? Hmm, I guess it can't be helped. So, what brings you to Leoy Harbor at this time of year, anyway? Thinking of putting on a music festival during the Lantern Rite celebrations? A Lantern Rite music festival? Yes, please! No, uh, I'm actually here on personal business this time. Oh, so no Lantern Rite music festival? I mean, that's not just up to me. Hosting a music festival takes a lot of funding and personnel. Moreover, I've never worked with the Leeway authorities before. Even if I were to start putting something together right now, I think it'd be too rushed. Wait, but we're going to meet the Liyue Qixing, aren't we? And they're the ones in charge! Uh-huh, that's right! Miss Kuching and Miss Ningguang can make anything happen! You mean... what? Well, sure, it might not work out, but it can't hurt to bring it up as a suggestion. That's the spirit! See? Even the Traveler agrees with me! Mr. Dvorak, don't let yourself be put off by the fact that a few things haven't worked out recently. As for the performers, I can put you in touch with some local artists. My friend Yunjin is a well-known opera singer in Liyue. With her support and a commissioned song from the Yunhan Opera Troupe, we should be able to get something going. But what about you, Xinyan? Are you just going to sit this one out? <laughs> what do you take me for? If we actually manage to make the Iridescence Tour Lantern Rock Grand Concert a reality, you think I'd let anyone else perform the opening act? Wow! There's that rock and roll spirit! <laughs> what do you say, Mr. Dvorak? Hmm. Okay, I'll give it a shot. But the opening act is not something to be chosen lightly, Shinyan. I will judge your work by the strictest of standards, so please make sure you are fully prepared. Are you kidding? I thought you'd never ask! Whew, guess my shopping time's getting cut short. I'm gonna head back right away and start working on this. Yao Yao, if you run into your senior on the way to the Qixing, please send her my regards. Okay. I promise I will. Good luck with your music, Shinyan. You've got this, Shinyan! So about the senior of yours Shinyan mentioned just now. Is that anyone we know? Yes, it's Shangling. She has mentioned you two before. Shangling's always thinking about cooking. Whenever she gets scrapes or burns, she just leaves them to heal by themselves. She definitely needs someone around her to look after her. I know you must have looked out for her a lot too in the time you've known her. So, thank you for that. Oh, it's Master! Is it okay if I go and say hi to her? Oh, calm down now, dear. I'm not about to run off anywhere. I'm not a bundle of energy like you. I haven't seen you in days, Master. I've missed...
miss you. Oh, bless you, Yao Yao. You do say the sweetest things. Ah, look who it is. Visiting friends during the lantern ride, are we? You're half right, Madam Ping. We were also trying to help out Mr. Dvorak over here. We were on our way to take him to see the Qixing. Uh, hello, ma'am. I am a musician from Fontaine and an organizer of the Iridescence Tour. I don't suppose you've heard of it. Master, Master! The Iridescence Tour is a super famous music festival! Oh, an old lady like me wouldn't know much about that sort of thing. A music festival, you say? It sounds terribly exciting. Oh, right! Madam Ping, how would you feel about that? You're an elder of Liyue, and you know all about Liyue's cultural traditions. Hearing your thoughts would definitely help us figure out how best to approach it. For example, do you think it might be a bit too modern, or is there any other issue? Why not at all? Music pays homage to history and culture, and it can also be a bridge between different civilizations. Times change, and the music enjoyed by the youngsters of today is no doubt very different from the tunes I was accustomed to in my youth. <laughs> Nevertheless, all fine things in life can be appreciated. And so, I look forward to it immensely. Hear, hear! I do believe that, my own dear grandmother aside, you are the wisest old lady I've ever met. <laughs> Goodness gracious, you're all being suspiciously sweet today. Yao Yao, whatever have you been feeding them? Master, you're in such a great mood today. You're even cracking jokes with the rest of us. Oh, well, I'm sure you must have plenty to be getting on with, yes? Run along now. Don't let me hold you up. You mustn't be afraid to try new things. If you never try, you'll never know. With your contribution, I'm sure this year's Lantern Rite will be a most spectacular one. And when you meet with the Ministry of Civil Affairs, please remind them that the festivities are not an excuse to procrastinate their work. Understood, Miss Ganyu. I'll take my leave now. What brings you here, Yao Yao? I've brought all the medicine you asked me to pick for you. Oh, and here's a pack of sweet flower seeds as well. Uh, also, also, these dried Qingxin leaves make a great pot of tea that's very good for you. I know you've had a lot to deal with at work recently, but you shouldn't push yourself too hard. If you're not careful, you'll end up falling asleep in the grass again. Well, this is weird. It's like a responsible younger sister talking to their disorganized older sister. Uh... Ahem. <clears throat> Thank you, but Paimon's criticism is quite valid. I do have a tendency to neglect matters outside of work, and that's something I should improve on. Oh, my apologies. I don't believe we've been introduced. Ah! Do the honors. Hmm. Well, what's wrong? Did Pyma go over everything a bit too fast? It's definitely an ambitious plan. If there's anything you didn't quite catch, Paimon's more than happy to go over it again. Huh. It may be a little difficult to make this happen. Oh? Well, the Lantern Rite is the most important festival of the year. Our celebrations must not only be visually spectacular, but also appeal to the tastes of Leo's citizens from all walks of life. The Iridescence Tour is relatively unknown in Leo. It's difficult to predict how a brand new show will be received. It would be quite risky for us to bet everything on this one music festival. <sighs> 
All very valid points. I completely understand. Therefore, we will not replace or cancel any of our pre-existing program. However, I will submit a proposal requesting to put the Iridescence Tour special performance as the final act of this year's festivities. Some live music will certainly add to the festive atmosphere on the night of the Lantern Rite. As for the venue... Hmm... Let's reserve a space at the docks. Yes, my thoughts precisely. Now I just need to take some time to give this proposal some polish. As long as I clearly lay out the pros and cons, and highlight the key points of the proposal, given that Ping and the Traveler have both given the idea their blessing, I'm confident that Qixing will be sure to give it serious consideration. Mr. Dvorak, I will need to discuss with you the number of musicians who will be coming to Liyue, as well as their catering and accommodation requirements. Oh, yes, certainly. Let's step to the side and discuss further. As soon as there's work to do, Ganyu's as diligent as ever. I couldn't agree more. Master once said that everyone has things that they are good at and things that they are less good at. So, with that in mind, Ganyu shouldn't feel compelled to become perfect at absolutely everything. I'm good at taking care of people, so that can be left to me. Wow! Hey, Yo-Yo, can you take care of Paimon, too? Paimon's getting hungry again. I'm afraid my backpack's empty now, but if you let me know what you like, I can bring you some of your favorite dishes next time we meet. Apart from lotus flower crisps, what else do you like? Anything sweet, and anything that's made from slimes! <laughs> Here's what I've drafted so far. Anything else you want to add? No, this is excellent. I'm racking my brains, but I don't think you've missed a single thing. Perfect. Then we'll leave it as is. I'll go make an official copy. Oh, perfect timing. We were just wrapping up our discussion here. Not at all. Every second counts for a complex proposal such as this. I will inform the Qixing of this development immediately. Please give me a moment to pass on the message. Yao Yao, thank you for bringing my herbs. I will make sure to take them. Remember to make tea from them first, Ganyu. You. you mustn't just chew them raw. Uh, I... I will. Okay, I should be getting back. If Yao-Yao stays out for too long, Mom and Dad will be worried sick. Everyone, I'm sure that the music festival will go off without a hitch, so don't worry. And in case I don't see you before, I wish you all a very happy Lantern Rite. Thank you, Yao-Yao. Happy Lantern Rite to you, too. That lady I just talked to, Ganyu? She really thinks of everything. It got me wondering. Could it be that all our failed attempts so far have been down to our failure to properly prepare for different contingencies? Greetings, Traveler, Paimon, and Mr. Dvorak. Call me Kuching. Ganyu has brought me up to speed on everything. I'll get straight to the point. The Qixing have approved Ganyu's proposal. Over the next few days, I will be working with Mr. Dvorak on behalf of the Qixing to facilitate the organization of this concert. Yay! That's awesome! <laughs> Please. The Qixing have a duty to deal with matters such as these. We have merely moved things forward to the next step. On a more personal note, I am an avid supporter of all things new and innovative. As such, it is my privilege to work with you on this exciting project. Thank you so much, Kuching. I'd become quite discouraged after our recent failures and was expecting the same outcome once again, so I didn't dare to get my hopes up. 
<sighs> Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined this going so smoothly. It's like a dream come true. Right. Time for me to call in the performers. To stage a concert at a high-profile event like this is a rare opportunity. We'll make sure it's a night to remember. Yes! Our music band's finally getting fired up! Yes, indeed. I know exactly what I'm doing from here. For a musician, music will always be the language they are most fluent in. Oh, that. Well, that can wait for another time. Oh. Can you? What's wrong? They told me all about Mr. Dvorak's situation, but I was so engrossed in drafting the proposal that I forgot all about it. Oh, that's quite all right. I, I don't even know what the person I'm trying to find looks like, so it was always going to be a long shot. Uh, don't worry about me, Ganyu. Uh, your time and energy are needed elsewhere. I, I'm sure you already have plenty to deal with between this concert and everything else going on during the Lantern Rite. Thanks. It was just that I had a few initial thoughts when I heard your story. For instance, I wonder if this lady your ancestor met might have been an adeptus. What do you think? To tell you the truth, Mr. Dvorak, I am somewhat related to the Adepti myself. I am part human and part Chilin. The Chilin is an illuminated beast. I know how important your quest to get in touch with your roots must be to you, because I've been there myself before, trying to find out where I belonged. Did you say the Adepti? And your illuminated beast, part Chilin? Are you telling me all the rumors of the Liyue Adepti are real? So it's not just artistic license? You bet they're real! Trying to track them down is tough, though. Like Julian Karst itself. There's nothing specifically stopping you from going there, but getting in and out of there is quite an ordeal. Yes. Anyway, if you're looking to uncover a lost melody or shine light on a forgotten aspect of Leo's cultural history, I'm probably not the best person to ask. But if it's a person you're looking for, then I just might be able to help. I see. I think I understand the situation now. In that case, Ganyu, shall we divide the work between us? Yes, that was also my thought. Great. So Mr. Dvorak and I will concentrate on things here in the city to make sure the concert goes according to plan. In the meantime, Ganyu will reach out to our network and try to find the person he's looking for. How's your workload at the moment? Will you be able to make time? I can probably get through everything in... two days. As long as I don't sleep. Wait, what do you mean, as long as I don't sleep? Even for someone with illuminated beast blood in their veins, working for such an extended period without a break will take its toll on your health. Somehow that does not sound persuasive coming from Kuching. Be it but three moons from the start, he who returns is not he that departs. Hmm. Even I know the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance. In that case, three days. All right, I can work with that. If you have the time, would you join me for this search? You're well known to many of the Adepti and respected among the people. I'll feel much more at ease with your company. Okay, then let's meet back here in three days. Watch this space, Mr. Dvorak. We'll get to the bottom of this. You're all so helpful and kind. I, I really... I just... Just think. Imagine if we found the Adeptus Lady or one of her descendants and got them to come to the performance. Wouldn't that be amazing? It'd be such a happy reunion. And that's exactly what this festival's all about. You're right. Okay. I'm going to pull out all the stops to make this Lantern Rite a true extravaganza. We should probably get going. Mr. Dvorak, could you come with me to confirm the site? Ooh, we're coming to you! I was wondering, what are your thoughts on music? What does it mean to you? Uh, music 
sounds nice. <laughs> Truth be told, the question of what music means to people is one that I've been pondering for quite some time. Let's revisit this question after the concert. Lady Yuhong? Why when what is it? Per Lady Ningguang's orders, I've been gathering intelligence outside of the city with the goal of uncovering and dispatching any trouble ahead of the festival. I am told that a strange melody was heard somewhere along the coast. I was wary of investigating further on my own, so I was just on my way to report this incident to Lady Ningguang. But I'm worried that if we don't act right away, we may miss the window of opportunity to take appropriate action. I understand. In that case, I... Yeah, Kuching. You're busy enough as it is. There's a ton of different things in the city that needs your attention. Leave it to us! Don't worry. Whatever it is, we'll definitely be able to handle it. Uh... Well, she will handle it. With the Traveler on the case, it's as good as dealt with. Thank you. This will be a great help. I will inform Lady Ningguang about the situation. Once it's resolved, please come and find me again at Yujing Terrace and let me know. Will do! And say hi to Ningguang for us! You have my thanks, too. Stay safe and come back as soon as you're finished. Good luck. She said she'll reach out to the Yunhan Opera Troupe? Huh, I see. Then I'll arrange for a rehearsal venue and accommodation as soon as possible. Everything should be ready tonight. Many thanks, Kaching. <laughs> you know, I once heard someone from Liyue describe a person as swift as lightning and agile as the wind. At the time, I thought it was a curious expression and I had a hard time piecing together a mental image of such a person. But now, having seen Kuching in action, I honestly can't think of any other way to describe it. It's such a vivid and expressive phrase, a testament to the richness of Liyue's culture. You're too kind, Mr. Dvorak. Byron said this strange tune was coming from around here, right? But Byron doesn't hear anything. There doesn't seem to be a soul in... I was just wondering who in their right mind would come out to a place like this. So, it's you two. You one? <sighs> How'd you sneak up on us like that? You nearly gave Paimon a heart attack! You look pretty alive to me. Can't have spooked you that bad. Y you uh, Fair enough. Ah, you're here for that too? Saves me a bit of explaining. Come with me. I've already reconned the perimeter, so we should be safe. Hmm. The stuff by the door is in pretty good condition, though. It can't have been too long ago that someone was last living here. The doors and the windows are all fine, so there definitely wasn't a break-in. Take it easy. Place is completely empty. There's nothing valuable left here at all. Hmm. How strange. It looks like it's been looted, except for the fact that there's no sign of a struggle. The bad guys could have sneaked in while the owner was gone, but then how do you explain why the door and windows are intact? Seems you've done a pretty thorough inspection. So, any theories on what might have happened here? Yaelon, you didn't hide some of the evidence from us on purpose, did you? Why would I make this more difficult for you? We're on the same side here. Okay, well... Paimon gives up then. Paimon's got nothing. What about you? Give up as well? Your instincts are pretty good. Hmm, or perhaps it's not instinct, 
The strange melody is one of the few pieces of information you have available after all. Let me share a folk story with you. A long time ago, there used to be a group of bandits in the Liyue countryside who would sound a horn every time they were about to raid a village. But it wasn't a rallying cry to rouse their fellow men. It was a disconcerting tune, meant to intimidate the weak and warn them of their impending doom. To escape with their lives, the villagers would abandon their homes and flee overnight, taking only their most valuable belongings with them. Everything else was left behind. The bandits were eventually brought to justice, but the fear and trauma remained in the villagers' hearts. Whenever they heard that melody, they would feel like their lives were in danger once again, and flee immediately. The culprit of this crime exploited that very fear to get access to this house without having to force their way in. Huh! That's quite the story! The victims obviously will have gotten quite a fright, but at least they won't be in any great danger. The important thing now is to find this copycat criminal. On any other day, that'd probably be a good idea. Unfortunately, it's not gonna work today. Take a look around and you'll see what I mean. This criminal is clearly well-versed both in using music to commit crimes and in making a clean getaway. Not only did they stay off the muddy road to avoid leaving footprints, it looks like they were also careful not to bring any gadgets with so much as a trace of elemental energy. Evidently, they were intent on keeping even the most experienced investigators off their trail. Unfortunately for them, I'm one of the best trackers in the business. They're not about to get away with their little scheme on my watch. So basically, if we want to find the culprit, we just need to follow you on! Mm-hmm. As long as you can keep up. Since the culprit's trying to be cautious and low risk, I'll bet they left through an area with some vegetation for cover, but not so much that it would slow them down. Here, look at this. These tracks are superficial, but they definitely didn't occur naturally. Something heavy was being dragged this way, meaning we're headed in the right direction. Huh. Their pace is increased. Normally, people carrying a heavy load slow down as their journey goes on and they start to tire. Whatever's motivating them to speed up must be psychological. For instance, reaching the home stretch. Let's round him up. Hey! Who are you? Where did you come from? Hmm. The evidence is conclusive. Okay. Confess and we'll go easy on you. My patience is running low, so why don't you do us both a favor, hmm? You kidding me? You think I'm scared of you? Perhaps not, but you should be. Busted! <laughs> Curses. Seems like you're not all talk after all. There's no going back now. Better up my game. <laughs> Quietly now. Mercy! Have mercy! Oh, 
It's a little late for that. I've come this far, I might as well finish the job. I surrender! I surrender, please! I'll do whatever you say. Please have mercy. <laughs> Tell us everything. You have one chance, and I'm warning you. Don't make me ask twice. I won't, I swear. Um, you know, so... Lantern Rite's nearly here, and like a lot of people, I wanted to buy a few nice things. I know I'm with the treasure hoarders and everything, but I don't really have any kind of experience with robbing people and whatnot. So I, uh, I don't have the guts to break into somebody's house. Wow, you're really going to complain to us about that? No, not at all. I'm just telling it how it is. Okay, continue. I racked my brains trying to think of what I could do. And eventually, I remembered something from back when I was a kid. The bandits would blow their horn, and my grandma would grab us kids and run. I remember the tune, so I... I figured I'd try it for myself. I mean, just to see what would happen. At first, anyway, I seriously didn't expect that family to pack up and leave. But they did, and they just left all their stuff right there for the taking. It was too easy, I just... I couldn't resist. It was completely wrong of me, I know that now. I'll return everything that I took. It's all still in perfect condition, and will be like it was never gone. Please, give me a chance, huh? Let me make it right. Give you a chance, huh? Sounds to me like you'd rather strike some kind of a deal than spend Lantern right behind bars. Y yes um, yes you know how to bargain, I'll give you that. It's just a pity that you didn't confess at the first opportunity. You'll have to take a walk with me. Once we've returned the goods, we'll find the owner of the house, and you can apologize to them in person. After that, I'll escort you to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yes, ma'am! You know, as a former victim of this kind of crime yourself, I doubt anyone understands the fear you inflicted quite as well as you do. Does your greed matter more to you than your fear? More to the point, if you can play a tune from memory, don't you think you should be capable of making an honest living? You mean... <laughs> That's enough hints for you. You'll have plenty of time to reflect on all of this yourself. There's not much left to wrap up, so I'll take it from here. Guess this is where I'll say goodbye. Hmm. What is it? Is there something else? I'm still not sure how you first got your hands on this information. So play it safe when you get back. Don't mention to anyone that you ran into me out here. You helped a lot with the investigation and arrest anyway, so it's perfectly fair for you to get all the credit. Just take it. It works better for me, too. See you when I see you. And happy Lantern Rite. Yaelon's such a pro at this. With her taking it from here, it's as good as resolved. Whoosh! Random event, a strange melody, complete! Although, it's kind of a shame that we never got that treasure hoarder guy to play the melody again. Cause Paimon's curious, that's why! It's like when you have a tune stuck in your head, but you don't even know what it is! It's driving Paimon crazy! When we were chatting with Mr. Dvorak, music seemed like such a positive thing. And most music is, right? It can help us relax, feel all warm and fuzzy, recall happy memories, or even just think happy thoughts. Paimon never imagined that music could be used to commit crimes! Oh, really? Huh. Makes sense. <gasps> Paimon's musical understanding improves again! Well, anyway, now that everything's resolved, let's get back to Liyue Harbor. Paimon's still waiting for us with our random event rewards. <laughs> That's great news! Oh, please wait here a moment, if you would be so kind. Lady Ningguang instructed me to advise her upon your return.
My greetings to both of you. Long time no see. No need to be so formal with us, Ningguang. We've known each other for a long time now. You must be super busy with all the preparations for Lantern Rite. Don't mind us. On the contrary, I think it is those that I have known longest to whom I should extend the greatest courtesies. Alas, on a different day, I would invite both of you inside for some tea and a brief respite from your travels. But you're quite right. Trivial matters aside, there's no escaping the fact that we have a grand concert to organize. Once the performance itself is over, we'll then need to invite the representatives of the Iridescence Tour for a discussion on future collaboration opportunities. The financing arrangements alone could well entail many rounds of discussion. Simply put, there will always be work to do. Whoa, you're already thinking that far ahead? <laughs> well, we can discuss more current affairs if you'd prefer. I trust you saw this year's Ming Shao Lantern at the docks when you arrived at the city? Yeah, it looked like a goose. Which adeptus is it modeled on this time? Seagazer. I believe you're familiar with the name. Legend holds that he was free-spirited and easygoing. People described him as a cheerful soul and a loyal friend. On this marvelous lantern rite, we pray that the fallen heroes may be guided home. If the sound of music can flow like the rivers and streams into every corner of the land, perhaps the souls of those who have gone before us will hear the song of a new era. I wonder whether the melodies will be to their liking. Oh, they're gonna love them! I'm unsure of it! At least, if the guy you mentioned is anything to go by, the Adepti and heroes of the past sound like a positive and free-spirited cheerful bunch! They're sure to be open to new music! <laughs> well, let's hope so. I heard that you'll be going on a search with Ganyu to find the descendants of a... fairy lady from a Fontaine legend. I'm sure this quest to uncover the truth behind an ancient story will turn into a most charming tale. Do share it with me, won't you? I couldn't bear to miss out. Looks like it's about time for us to meet up with Ganyu. Let's head to Eugene Terrace. Greetings, Traveler and Paimon. Uh, what time is it? Are you okay, Ganyu? You were nodding off there. Didn't you sleep well last night? Uh, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Let's discuss the matter at hand. Since last time, I've been thinking a lot about the story Paimon told me. In essence, someone rescued a drowning man and performed some music. If that were all there was to it, it could have been many people, human or adeptus. But the tune was allegedly so wonderful that the drowning man forgot about everything else, even his own impending death, and only came to his senses after being brought to shore. Perhaps there was an adeptal power at work in that music that he, as a mortal, could not perceive. Or perhaps he sensed a power surrounding him, but lacked the words to describe it, not knowing where it came from. Either way, if this part of the story is true, then the rescuer has to have been an adeptus. You really think so? But this story is all the way from Fontaine. Isn't this a bit of a long shot? Also, Paimon's really curious about how people from Fontaine think this fairy lady looked. Ooh, like a crystal fly's wings? That would be pretty cool. But Paimon definitely can't imagine any of the Adepti looking like that. Actually, Ganyu, if you had to save a drowning person, how would you go about it? Huh? Me? Um, well, I'd get them to the shore, and then I'd probably hide behind a tree and watch them for a while. Once I was sure that they were going to be okay, I'd slip away without a sound. Got it. 
So basically, Ganyu's the type of person who doesn't like taking credit for her good deeds. No, it's not like that. I'm just not very good at explaining things. And I also find it really awkward accepting other people's gratitude. Well, what if this adeptus in the story had a similar attitude? That would explain why she just left without saying a word. She was probably thinking something like, <clears throat> One was merely passing by and saw fit to address this egregious disruption to one's graceful zithering at once. You may keep your thanks to yourself. <laughs> that was actually a very good impression of Cloud Retainer, Paimon. As far as I'm aware, Cloud Retainer isn't the most musically gifted. Still, we can't completely rule her out just yet. Um, if we set off now, we could head to Mount Outsung and ask her about it. You'll be able to confirm either way if it's her, and I can... Um, I've been in Leah Harbor for so long now that I'm just not as familiar with the Adepti anymore. If there's anything we want to know about them, she's the best person to ask. Sounds great! And we're pretty close with Cloud Retainer by now, so we probably don't even need to bring her food this time, right? I've prepared a gift for her to mark the festival. Just in case. However... Um... Cloud Retainer spends most of her days studying mechanisms in her abode. She's on her own so much of the time that the moment she has someone to chat with, she just... Never mind. I promised I'd help Mr. Dvorak, and now that I've made the contract, I can't be having second thoughts. Traveler? Paimon? Let's set off for Cloud Retainer's abode. Seems like this is a tough decision for Ganyu, but she's made up her mind now. Paimon gets why she'd be so anxious. Hmm. Okay, how about this? If Cloud Retainer tries to start telling stories about her again this year, we should pipe up and change the topic. Wait, did she leave already? Hey, Ganyu, wait up! Whew, <sighs> Paimon's so tired from trying to keep up. Don't either of you need to take any breaks? <sighs> <sighs> I can't believe it. Cloud Retainer is not here. Huh? Did we miss her? She doesn't like to travel, so in the past, it's always been the other Adepti who come to visit her during the festivals. Somehow Paimon doubts that anything could cause serious trouble for her. True. Now that I think about it, Cloud Retainer would be quite capable of taking care of anything on her own. There's no need to worry about her. Since she's not here, I guess the next step is to check all the other Adepti abodes, one by one. Uh-oh. Will it involve a lot more traveling? Hmm... Um... Oh, got it! Paimon has a great idea! Please go on, Paimon. Our goal here is to find the Adeptus that helped Dvorak's ancestor, right? We can't hear any music right now, but... If she's really as nice as the story suggests, she'd definitely come to help anyone who was drowning, right? Yes, I think that's fair to say. So, all we have to do is get the Traveler to pretend to fall into the water, and the Adeptus will come to the rescue! You know perfectly well that Paimon can't swim! Paimon would sink like a rock! <sighs> Just trust Paimon! The water's pretty deep over there! Quick, swim to the very center! Get this! 
what is going on. How do you feel right now? Uh... Shenha! And the Conqueror of Demons! Uh, why don't you say something? <sighs> Please don't make Paimon explain it! <clears throat> okay, fine! Paimon will explain! We're looking for an Adeptus who's good at being a lifeguard and playing music! But if the Adepti aren't gonna stay home, then how are we supposed to find them? It wasn't me. Uh, yeah, so this Adeptus is most likely a woman. And I am not an Adeptus, as you both already know, Traveler and Paimon. <sighs> okay, so this is Paimon's fault. No way Paimon would have suggested this idea if she'd known how awkward this was gonna be. Glad you're okay. As far as I know, the one you seek is no Yaksha. And one last thing. Your actions here caused others a great deal of worry. Do not repeat them again in the future. As ever, the Conqueror of Demons comes and goes, just like the wind. Right. I didn't dare to say a word just now. How's your training going, Shenha? Have you made any plans for Lantern Ride? We could spend it together in Liyua Harbor if you'd like. Oh, I had planned to spend the festival with Master this year. <sighs> However... Oh, speaking of Cloud Retainer, when did you see her last? Earlier this morning. She set off for Mount Hulao at dawn. I noticed she was using an Adeptus art of some kind to protect a mechanism that looked like a boiler. Hmm. Maybe it was a gift for Mountain Shaper. I did not inquire. Ugh. So we just missed her. Please excuse me for a moment. I think I'll leave the gift in her abode. Sure. Thank you. Sounds like Ganyu and Shenha have gotten a lot closer recently. Yes. During the summer and winter, I continue to train with Master. In the other months of the year, I have been learning to adapt to human life in Liyue Harbor. Ganyu arranged accommodations for me in the city, and also recommended several work positions for me. But when I try to blend in by referring to her as Miss Ganyu or Lady Ganyu, like the others, she says I mustn't address her like that. Hmm. Sometimes I'm supposed to copy other people. Sometimes I'm not. It's a little difficult to keep track of everything. Oh, is that what it is? Hmm. Noted. So, you came looking for Master today because you wanted to ask her about the Mystery Adeptus. Is that right? Yep. Oh, speaking of that, have you ever heard any music while out training in the mountains? Music? What is that? Uh, it's... Uh, a kind of a happy or relaxing sound. Or... A... Uh, a nerve-wracking sound. Or even a terrifying one. Okay, I'm done. I also left her a note so that she knows where to find us. We won't miss her again. Yay! That's really helpful, thanks! We were just talking about this thing called music, and based on Paimon's description, <laughs> I do believe I hear it every day. Please follow me. Oh, really? Great, let's go! This is the place. I enjoy training here to the sound of music. Uh, anyway, uh, where is this music? 
the faint sound of birdsong, the quiet murmur of the streams. <sighs> These are relaxing sounds. <sighs> are they not the music of which you speak? Oh! Uh, Paimon wasn't quite done with the description. <laughs> okay, fine, it's all Paimon's fault. What we're looking for are not the sounds of nature, but melodies played on special instruments. Oh. And a melody is? Uh, huh? Hey, why don't you just sing that one melody Shen has heard before? It'll probably help her to understand what we're talking about. Oh, was that from the opera that Yunjin sang? Mm-hmm. That was a melody, and melodies can be called music. It felt like I was transported back to the past. In my mind's eye, I could see the Zhao lanterns lighting up the night sky again. We're all there, raising our glasses and drinking to our heart's content on the Jade Chamber. As I watched Yunjin's performance, I felt a warm sensation in my heart. And as the drink reached my stomach, it went from warm to hot. When you hummed that melody just now, feelings from a whole year ago came right back to me, as strong as they were on that day. Huh. So that's the power of music. Wow, Shen, huh? That was so deep! Music definitely has the power to bring up memories. It's like a time capsule with all the special moments from our life squished inside. What about you, Ganyu? Are there any melodies that have left a deep impression on you? Um... I don't remember if my parents ever sang any lullabies to me. I know some local folk songs. And a few other things come to mind, too. The songs of the sailors down at the docks. The little ditties that the vendors call out in front of their beloved shops. The tunes of folk artists performing on the streets. Yes, that's right. In the past, whenever I heard the sound of those tunes, I always felt that they were worlds apart from me. Nenny and Liu probably view me as a non-human. And they are right, in the sense that I never could connect with humans' artistic expression and their sentiments. So I haven't been able to integrate into their community and be a part of their lives. At least, that's the view I held in the past. Only more recently did I start to realize that... The only barriers are ones that I have erected with my imagination. The way those melodies make me feel isn't all that different from other people after all. They're about mundane details of everyday existence. Life's ups and downs, joys and sorrows. Even though we come from different backgrounds and have different stories to tell, when it comes down to the most common things, that we see and experience around us each day in the city? In that sense, we're all the same. You go, Ganyu! You're really making progress. You have loads of friends in Liyue Harbor when you think about it. Like... Um... Okay, maybe some are more like co-workers and bosses. But, at the very least, Kuching and Shenna are your friends now, right? Yes, I am. Technically speaking, we should refer to each other by the conventional forms of address used among fellow disciples. <sighs> but now that I know what constitutes a friendship, I do believe we are more friends than co-disciples. Thank you, everyone. Once the days are warmer, I would like to host you at my home in the city. Please invite Kuching as well. I've planted many types of flowers, I'm sure some of them will be to your taste. Ah, uh, you are too kind. I couldn't possibly. Nonsense. You are my friend. 
I have cultivated and cared for the flowers just as you taught me. Once you've seen them for yourself, I am sure you can advise me how to do an even better job next time. I will save some for decoration. We can feast on the rest. Then, thank you in advance. Wait, what is that saying again? If you insist? Do people say that? <sighs> I'm not completely sure either. It doesn't matter, okay? You got the point across. No need to split hairs. Um, Paimon's more concerned about your idea of a girl's night out. Eating flowers? Really? Does this have anything to do with you both being the disciples of that illuminated bird? Hm. Who dares refer to one not by one's adeptus title, but merely as that illuminated bird? Master. Our greetings, Cloud Retainer. Double hoomph. Now she has the gall to use it rather than she. Even after being chastised once already? Huh. Barely a moment has passed since we last met, and yet your impertinence has reached new heights. Very well. If you refuse to learn your lesson, one shall scold you no further. One has received your message from Ganyu. On the matter of the Adeptus you seek, one suspects to know their identity. Well, shall one lead the way? I still have to complete my training for today, so I will bid farewell to everyone here. Very well. Await my arrival at one's abode later this night. On this special occasion, you should indulge yourself with some savory dishes. If you want to release a Shao Lantern, come and find us any time. Thank you, everyone. Happy Lantern Rite to you, too. <laughs> Is this... Quaily Plains? Cloud Retainer, why did you bring us here? God, you is of course familiar with the name Guizhong, but have you ever heard of her? Guizhong is another name of Agentis, the god of dust. She was extroverted in nature and adored social gatherings and inventions alike. Long ago, this region was yet a prosperous assembly. Gui Zhang often invited her friends to visit her home, reserving for us seats around the largest stone table. Sea Gazer would always bring out his latest treasure and place it upon the table. Ah, oh, he could be quite the braggart. Though usually a mild-mannered fellow, when it came to those collectibles he was so fond of, he always loved to show them off. Paimon remembers that name! So that's what Seagazer was like. He was an old friend and a former rival. One has many memories of him. Once he had brought out the treasure, it would predictably become the center of attention. Neither Guizhong nor one was content to let him just steal the spotlight. So we would then also present our proudest mechanical creations. As Adepti, we were each gifted in our own ways, and naturally proud of our accomplishments in our respective fields of expertise. As a result, one often quarreled with Seagazer. His treasures were not even of his own making. He just used his exploration skills to dig them out of the ground. How, pray tell, could he compare to me, when every single one of one's accomplishments were crafted by one's own hand? Cloud Retainer, you are getting competitive again. <clears throat> One digresses. Regardless, every time an argument occurred, Gui Zhang would come over to watch us during our mutual lambastics. On some occasions, she would join in, 
And on others, she'd take one of us by the limb and start uttering the most ridiculous nonsense. What kind of nonsense? No kind of nonsense were we spared. Sometimes she would brazenly opine, Ah, why argue between yourselves when neither of you could ever hope to beat me? Other times, she would make unsolicited suggestions, such as, Once you two are done arguing, let's go to the foot of the mountain and grill some meat. She always sought to make everyone happy, and one must say, she had quite the gift for it. No matter what nonsense she said, one never felt bothered or offended. It also helped that she never referred to one as that illuminated bird or lady bird. You... Come on, get over yourself! <laughs> anyway, just as our impassioned arguments would reach the apex of acrimony, Marchosius would bring his delectable dishes to the table. Who would dare snub the stove god and his wondrous creations? At the sight of him, we would all immediately drop the argument and prepare the table for a night of feasting and drinking. <laughs> Back then, one was always bothered by how the cups Rex Lapis brought were always too square for one's taste. Can you see yourselves ever enjoying a drink from a square cup? Precisely. So, as you can see, even one as great as Rex Lapis was not immune to making the occasional blunder. Even one could never find fault with Marchosius' cooking. As we ate, Gui Zhang would continue to find topics for conversation, filling the table with humor and laughter. Each of those old fossils had their character flaws and points of obstinacy. So why was it that whenever we dined together, we always had a marvelous time? We would drink together from a spot high in the mountains, until the moon set and the sun rose, and only then would the banquet finally come to an end. Streetwood Rambler would often remain to admire the flowers with Guizhong, before returning to her own abode. The glaze lilies were far more abundant back then. Entire fields of them would appear to the eye as a veritable sea of flowers. Streetward Rambler? That would be Ping. You probably know her as Madam Ping. Oh, okay. Wait, this is a lovely story and everything, but didn't we come here to find that Adeptus from Mr. Dvorak's story? Or are you saying that it was Guizhong? Didn't she... um... already... um... Alas, long has one avoided this place for precisely that reason. The sights here are a reminder of a time long gone, and evoke much sorrow. One should have guessed that you would disrupt one's poignant moment of mourning with your incessant questioning. No matter. One will share the whole story with you now. In times gone by, one quarreled oft with Gui Zhang concerning mechanical principles. We each had our ideals, and neither would yield. Under the pretext of a social gathering, one invited the impartial Rex Lapis to judge the quality of our creations. But Rex Lapis declared that Gui Zhang's obscuro vulpus mechanism was superior. Though one was too proud to acknowledge it, in one's heart, one knew that Gui Zhang was indeed the superior talent in the mechanical arts. As for the story between Gui Zhang and Streetward Rambler, that begins with a certain bell. In Gui Zhang's opinion, while mechanisms were no substitute for human composers, they were yet capable of producing simple but fine melodies. But Streetward Rambler believed music to be an expression of the soul, an emotional enterprise that could never hope to be replicated by machinery. They argued endlessly, until one asked Rex Lapis to intercede. He confiscated the bell and designated it for ceremonial use. Thereafter, 
One would often find them convening in the mountains, discussing music, mechanics, and all the affairs of the mortal world. But these good times were not to last. War broke out between the gods, and soon engulfed the Guili Plains. Guizhong was overpowered by the enemy, and fell in battle. When Streetwood Rambler and I arrived at the scene at long last, all that remained among the ruins was her lifeless body. After this, at Streetwood Rambler's request, Rex Lapis granted her the cleansing bell for safekeeping. To honor our friend's memory, one made a few finishing touches to her ballistic device. Many lantern rites have passed since then. Many greetings and goodbyes. Upon what do you gaze? The Gwaili Plains? No. It's... everything. We think of human life as like a lantern that's... lit one minute and extinguished the next. But are we Adepti so different? Perhaps as dust settles after a storm, we too must one day return to the world below. One has always been austere and private by nature, and has never relished socializing. One's dealings with Guizhang were born out of discussions on the discipline of mechanics. What? You have loads of friends! And you seem pretty chatty. Just because one is not ignorant of social graces does not mean one is fond of them. One is perfectly capable of partaking in conversation despite being introverted. But in the end, one is nothing like Streetward Rambler. She is dauntless but thoughtful, not to mention eloquent and wise. Moreover, her friendship with Guizhang was far greater than one's own. Back when they were rivals, they would often compete against one another in the realm of musical composition. That cleansing bell was one of Guizhong's proudest works, having the ability to both compose and perform. Wait! That's weird! Didn't Madame Ping say she pestered an old friend for that bell? And she also said something about being a vain beauty when she was young or something. Streetward Rambler, a vain beauty. <laughs> My foot. That bell has a sad history. Clearly, she refrained from sharing with you the truth of its origins, since the right time had not yet come. As for her old friend, who else could it be? As soon as Streetward Rambler heard, that a certain Zhang Li wished to borrow the bell. She realized that the man was none other than Rex Lapis, and that he had made an enormous decision. After all, we all have known each other for several millennia. Some things between us are implicitly understood. Whoa! So they were talking in secret code? Oh, Paimon did not see that one coming. <laughs> Enough of your intrusions. Where was one up to? Ah, yes. One remembers now. The cleansing bell is powered by a mechanical art, and can be used to great effect as an accompanying instrument. After the passing of its creator, it was used on numerous occasions during rites of parting. But Streetward Rambler did not acquire it from Rex Lapis for the purpose of producing further funerary tunes. No. Each time she rang it, it was to play the tune that Guizhong composed on it. The two once clashed over their beliefs about the meaning of music. Who would have thought that with Guizhong's passing and Streetward Rambler's mourning, Two tunes composed in discord would eventually become one harmonious composition. <sighs> Once upon a time, Streetwood Rambler also loved gatherings, liquor, and music. 
But after Gui Zhang passed, she preferred her own company. She could often be found sitting alone at a mountain summit, contemplating and reminiscing with her zither. The music would go from mournful to soothing to impassioned. Many years passed before she finally composed a melody to her satisfaction. In celebration, she played the tune to the clouds. Regrettably, one has only ever heard her play that tune once. Which brings one back to the matter you've been investigating. Perhaps it was during that performance that the ancestor of your Fontaine friend fell into the water and was saved by Streetwood Rambler. But if she was so happy with the melody, why would she only play it once? One was also greatly perplexed by this. After suppressing one's curiosity for a long while, one finally approached her and asked why she would retire the tune after having spent so long on it. In response, she said, Though the strings that played that melody survive, the one who inspired it is gone. Tell me, Cloud Retainer, when the one attuned to my soul is no longer here, who else could hope to understand this tune? I just remember being taken care of by you when I was young. Once the Archon War came to an end, I stayed behind in Liyue Harbor to honor my contract. Although I met Guizhong a few times, I never knew anything of this particular story. Guizhong was quite the visionary, but tragically passed before her time. Her manuscripts still lie unfinished in the realm of clouds. Blank pages give one cause for contemplation on what might have been. Had you not decided to search for that mystery Adeptus, perhaps these stories, too, would have been lost to the sands of time. As of now, you know the truth. That the Adeptus who rescued the drowning man was none other than Streetwood Rambler. Do you intend to discuss this with her? Do you mean... Ping might find the topic too distressing? Precisely. The passing of our old friend is a heavy topic that both of us are usually careful to avoid. If I may be so bold... Cloud Retainer, could it be that this is just your own personal opinion? Oh? How so? I've been in Leo Harbor for quite a long time now, and I've witnessed many farewells along the way. So, I too am well acquainted with the pain of the passing of a loved one. But this doesn't bring the city or its people to a standstill. They have to keep moving forward. Someone as perceptive and wise as Ping will surely have come to understand and embrace this. Though these immortal mountains have lost an Adeptus, the harbor of mortals has gained a wise elder. No loss can ever be undone, but there is always much that can still be gained. Ping has helped countless people, and will guide many others in the years to come, and all to whom she extends a helping hand become her friends, people she can admire flowers and discuss music with. Though it is heartbreaking to lose a kindred spirit, Life goes on, because there are new friends waiting for you further down the road. We even asked Madame Ping what she thought about adding a music festival to this year's Lantern Rite. Oh, when we get back, why don't we just ask her if she'd like to perform? Maybe we can even get her up on stage. <laughs> you youngsters and your imaginations. Why don't you come with us? It's been a long time since you last spoke with Ping, and Leoa Harbor is always decorated so beautifully during the festival period. Is not every Lantern Rite the same in this regard? Were there ever anything new to discuss, one in Ping could meet any day of the year. I disagree. Each new day and each new year is different from those that have come before. 
How long will you simply let them pass you by? Very well. Then one will be off. If the other old fossils have sneaked away into the city to amuse themselves, one shall soon find out. All right. We should be getting back to the harbor as well. We don't want to keep her waiting. <sighs> Once the Gwaili assembly, now the Gwaili plains. Say, if we planted flowers there and cared for them carefully enough, do you think that one day we'd be able to recreate the Sea of Glaze Lilies? Allow one to take back one's praise from a moment prior. You are still far too given to flights of fancy, child. What? Cloud Retainer? You were still listening? One observed that you were making no effort to leave, and returned to chasten and hasten you. This time, one is departing in earnest. Whoa! Madam Ping? And Cloud Retainer? It appears you made haste after all. One arrived but moments before you. Oh, bless my soul. To what do I owe the honor? How nice of you all to come and visit me. Miss Illuminated Bird, haven't you said anything yet? Said what, precisely? And why should one be tasked with saying it? Cause you're the one who's known Madame Ping the longest. <sighs> Street word. Um, <clears throat> Or rather, presumably, you would prefer to be addressed as Ping? <laughs> Cloud Retainer, you are uncommonly polite today. One, uh... uh hmm. Given that Lantern Rite is almost upon us, the weather in the city is most pleasant, and a sweet floral fragrance lingers in the air. Ahem. <clears throat> Ganyu, please continue from here. Huh? Uh... All right. So, this all started because we were trying to help Mr. Dvorak find the Adeptus who saved his ancestor's life. Cloud Retainer informed us that the one who played that melody and rescued the drowning man was none other than yourself. Ah, let me think. Yes, I... I do believe I recall that encounter. Uh. What a long time ago that was. I'm surprised that you still remember it. Even more astonishing, perhaps, is the fact that this story has survived this long at all, when mortal lives are so very brief. <laughs> it appears that she has proven herself right once again. She. We like to call her Gui Jong. From the look in Cloud Retainer's eyes, I sense that she has already told you all about her. <sighs> Albeit reluctantly, one might add. Oh, there is no harm done. After all, Lantern Rite's very purpose is to commemorate the heroes who gave their lives for Liu Wei. Although Gui Zhong did not live to see the splendid sights of today, she was as much a hero as any other. Uh, so how has she proven herself right again exactly? Once upon a time, she said to me that humans were a weak form of life that she wished to protect with her wisdom. But as she interacted more and more with them, her opinions on them began to change. She marveled at the beautiful complexity of their spirits, the sheer splendor of all they could accomplish through their hard work and intelligence. She told us that to underestimate human potential would be to make a grave mistake. With the smallest amount of guidance, 
enormous power can be unleashed in them. And a human, who has reached their full potential, may well be her equal. Someone who could have as much to teach an adeptus as to learn from them. <laughs> she always had a way with words. That her mechanical accomplishments were judged superior to one's own was, one suspects, in large part due to her sheer eloquence. Speaking of mechanics, Cloud Retainer, do you still remember that potted plant mechanism? The one that the two of you gave me as a gift? Of course. Guizhong and Wan both put an immense amount of effort into that gift. It would be no overstatement to call it a testament to each of our individual technical genius. As Gui Zhang once said, it takes every blade of grass and every flower to make a homeland. When I see the site of Liyue Harbor before us today, I am reminded of this. Madam Ping looks very emotional right now. Ah, <sighs> of all of us, it was Gui Zhong who was the fondest of these grand and exciting occasions. Huh. <laughs> if she were still with us, I'm quite sure she would still be trying to best Cloud Retainer's finest works at every opportunity. Liyue Harbor is always filled with the sound of music at this time of the year. If she were here, one is certain that she would seek you out to discuss and debate the virtues of various melodies. Oh yeah, music! We've been dying to ask, what was the melody that you played back then? Oh, also, with you being such a music expert and all, why don't you join the concert as a performer? I can make arrangements right away. Oh. As much as I don't wish to dampen your enthusiasm, it's been a long time since I played this zither. My fingers don't have the dexterity they once did. And whenever I play that tune, it always reminds me of her. I start wondering what she would think of the changes I have made to her melody. There was a period of time whenever I started strumming. It almost felt like she was back again. Sitting right there on the stone stool next to me, chatting away. Skybracer and Seagazer too. Looking just like they did in the old days. No matter how much time goes by, the moment that melody starts playing it, transports me right back to that time in my memory. So the past still weighs heavily on your heart? Oh, I would be lying to myself if I claimed to have completely moved on. But that is not to say that grief doesn't get easier with time. Despite the sadness, I have found many things that bring me joy in life. It is simply the nature of the world in which we live that, even if one wished to mourn for an eternity, it would be a nigh-impossible feat. Just look at this potted plant. Isn't it stunning? It takes an honest and open mind to confront and conquer grief. You have indeed made progress. <laughs> be that as it may, I shall leave the lantern right stage to the youth of today. Well, if you're sure. Granny! <laughs> Whoa, what's everyone doing here? Did something bad happen? Ah, uh -huh. and now we've spooked Yanfei. <laughs> no, no, everyone's just here to give me their regards for the holiday. That's wonderful, I'm glad! Well, in that case, happy lantern ride, everyone! Happy lantern ride! Oh, I... I just remembered that I have some... uh... work to do at Yue High Pavilion that I need to discuss with Yenfei. I haven't been able to find a chance until now. 
I will leave Mr. Dvorak in your capable hands. Cloud Retainer, Ping, we will be off for now. Huh? Does it have to be right now? Which case is this again? Hey, Ganyu! <laughs> it seems Ganyu still has much to learn when it comes to the art of deception. What a pity. She has learned nothing of one's ability to carry a conversation. Since it's been so long, Cloud Retainer, why don't you stay? I'll make a cup of tea, and we can chat a while. Gladly. This was one's intention as well. When you next see the Fontaine musician, please give him my regards. I'd like to wish him the very best with the concert. You got it, Madam Ping! Thank you all. I think you've listened to enough of my nattering for one day. As for that melody, I will play it for you all another time. <laughs> Goodness knows I need to practice it first. Wow! That'd be great! We'll look forward to it! <laughs> when that time comes, wherever her spirit may be among the countless grains of sand and specks of dust between the harbor and the mountains, perhaps... She will look at the Leoa of today and steal a smile when she sees the prosperous land that it has become. All right, let's go tell Mr. Dvorak the news. Ping, what say you to convening more often in the future? That would be quite wonderful. But I must say, after all this time, I've grown quite accustomed to the harbor. When we are to meet, I shall have to trouble you to make the journey to the city. You sound just like Shen he. The child is constantly telling one all sorts of stories from the city, as if one was partial to them. Have you ever considered moving to the city, Cloud Retainer? There are plenty of people here to talk to. I think you would find it quite the antidote to the monotony of solitude. And if you looked around, I suspect you would find some young minds with an interest in the mechanical arts. Some of them even worth training. <laughs> we shall see. this up. Welcome back. Did everything go well? Really, really well. We found the person Mr. Dvorak was looking for. Uh, are you serious? Uh, I see. So the melody my ancestor heard was an adeptus remembering her late friend? That certainly explains why it was such a powerful and poignant tune. Huh. That's a really interesting first reaction. Guess that comes with having a musical mind. I have to say, though, it, it's hard to believe that the fairy from the tale is now an elderly granny. Oh, Paimon knows exactly what you mean. Normally, Adepti don't age at all. But Stray Word Rambler, or Madam Ping as we know her, Probably only became old because it's what she wanted for herself. Madam Ping possesses vast knowledge and great wisdom. Whatever physical form she may decide to take, her mind and wits are as sharp as they come. Yep, Kuching summed it up perfectly. That's exactly what Paimon was trying to say. I think... Mm, yes, I must thank her in person. That can wait until after the concert, though. For now, I need to devote all my emotional energy to the performance. Ah, speaking of, Madam Ping wishes you all the best at the music festival. Paimon has a sneaking suspicion that she'll stay in her usual spot, but listen to the performances from afar. Wait, are you serious? Huh. Oh no, now I'm starting to get nervous. Okay, alright. Nope. Another rehearsal is in order. Please excuse me, everyone. Uh, Mr. Dvorak? Oh, he's already gone. Paimon wasn't even finished telling him everything. 
Before we set off on our search with Ganyu, he asks us about what music means to people. After our recent adventure, Paimon thinks we have a lot more to say about that now. Please, share your insights with me. Uh, well, we found out that music can be used for good, but also for bad. Um, it can make people happy and moved, but it can also be sad and bittersweet. And music is like a kind of memory written in people's hearts. It can put you in touch with feelings from a totally different time and place. <laughs> it sounds like you had an eventful trip. Don't worry, I'm sure Ganyu will fill me in on all the details shortly. Wait, does that mean you're gonna carry on working? Mm-hmm. Just a few things to wrap up. All the groundwork is done. As long as everyone enjoys the festival activities, all our efforts are worthwhile. Happy Lantern Rite to you as well. Whew. That should be everything taken care of, right? Oh, no, wait. Paima feels like she's forgetting something. Ugh. What was it? Oh, it feels like it was a while ago. Ah, uh, shoot! Latent... Wait, no. Anyway, uh... Fancy bamboo shoots! Zhang Li said he wasn't in a hurry, so... If we went now, there's probably still time, right? Anyway, even if we don't make it, it's not our fault. He could have totally picked them by himself. Ugh. Anyway, let's go check with him at Wang Chung Funeral Parlor. Mm hmm. Da 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 Oh. All right. Let's take a break here. Oh wow, look who it is! Are you here to hang out with everyone's favorite funeral director? So you're just casually practicing your rapping skills at the entrance to your funeral parlor? In broad daylight? Uh, okay. <laughs> After everything we've been through, you don't see me for a hot minute, and you're back to being scared of your own shadow. We have all this open space, a clear view of the mountains behind and the sea in front. Not to mention we have several invisible audience members enthusiastically cheering us on. It's the perfect spot to rehearse. Invisible audience members? <laughs> Gotta say, it took me a few days to get used to Director Who's way of talking. <laughs> Shin Yan was pretty spooked too when she first got here. Just like when she sees a frog, but a giant frog with sharp teeth. Come on, knock it off. What's wrong? I've never seen someone look so confused before. Well, don't worry, because Director Who's here to explain it all. <clears throat> there once was a Fontaine musician who went around town on a mission. He came door to door for his iridescence tour, looking for acts to audition. With my words, Shin Yan's courts and Yunjin as our mentor, we'll take the stage by storm with flames roaring and the whole audience calling for more. For sure, the whole dance floor will be yelling encore, encore! Oh, now Paimon's rhyming along. Um, but... When you say flames roaring, are you sure this will be safe? Oh, <laughs> don't you worry about that. I'm pretty experienced on the stage, and I've already informed the Yuhong of all the pyrotechnics we're planning on using. Huh. Guess we'll just have to trust Shin Yan on this one. Oh, Zhang Li. He took one of those fancy meal boxes and set off for the mountains. Said he wanted to pay a visit to some old friends. It's a real pity that he couldn't be around for this. As well as being a true connoisseur of traditional art forms, he's able to appreciate Shin Yan's performances too. Yeah, that's right. 
Matter of fact, he was the one who first invited me to perform here. To tell the truth, though, I never thought I'd really find myself rehearsing here one day. <laughs> well, now you know. The Wangsheng Funeral Parlor is a great location. All of you are always welcome to come and hang out here, especially if you're in the mood to try something new. I can speak to that. Hu Tao is always full of fun surprises. And jump scares. Actually, Xinyan, I have some lyric ideas for your part. Do you want to go through them together? Oh, sure thing. I'm all ears. Oh, Traveler and Paimon, I believe Zhongli was heading to Mount Hulao, so make sure you're hiking up the right hill. When you see Zhongli, please pass on this message to him. It's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight, but I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses. You should join us too. It'll be a riot. If there's one thing I've learned from being a funeral director, it's how to throw a party. Okay, everyone. I think that's a long enough break. Let's take it from the top, shall we? Ugh, Ms. Yoon is such a strict mentor. These breaks aren't even long enough to have a sip of tea. <laughs> well, you were desperate to get involved, and this is what it takes. If I gave you half the chance, you'd be sipping tea till nightfall. Hey, how about I treat us all to some late-night snacks once we're done? Hotel, what you craving? Hmm, how about some stir-fried filet with a side of crab roe tofu? <laughs> Where are we going to find crab roe tofu so late at night? We could always just go pester masterful chef Zhang Ling. Mm, now I'm hungry. All right, let's knock this out and then go grab some food. Paimon sees them! It's Illuminated Deer and Illuminated Bird number two! Hmm. A familiar face. Have you come from Liyue Harbor? How is the city nowadays? Everything's great! But you know, if you're so curious, you can always go and check it out for yourself! In fact, Moon Carver has been taking many walks on Mount Tianhang in recent times. I believe the sights of the city are quite familiar to him. Zhongli! Here you are! We've brought the bamboo shoots you wanted! Impeccable timing. Traditionally, bamboo shoot soup ought to be slow cooked for many hours on low heat. Using Adeptus Arts to hasten the process is something of a shortcut. Wait, that mechanism... is that...? Indeed. Cloud Retainer kindly lent me her supreme cuisine machine. Can we not just call it a cooking machine? Ugh, actually, never mind. She seems to take a lot of pride in her mechanical gizmos, so it's probably best if Paimon doesn't go changing the name willy-nilly. I trust that you found the answers you were seeking during your recent journey? Excellent. The past should be remembered, but not overly dwelt upon. Our journey should be seen as a means to take on more from the world around us. When the bamboo shoot soup is ready, I must insist that you try some for yourself. Oh, Zhongli! Hu Tao told us to tell you something. She said, it's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight, but I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses! When she says performance, she must be in the Lantern Right Music Festival. As for the banquet, uh... She didn't tell us anything more about that, but she invited us to come as well. As you can see, I have a prior engagement with two Adepti friends of mine tonight. Please, give Director Who my best wishes for the performance. As for the banquet, hmm, since the Director insists, Far be it from a mere consultant like myself to refuse. Yay! Then we'll see you there? Absolutely. Rex Lapis, the bamboo shoot soup is ready. 
Thank you. I will examine it right away. Hmm. The appearance is exquisite, and the aroma rich and intense. The craftsmanship of this machine is commendable indeed. Since you came all this way, you should not leave empty-handed. Please, take some soup. It tastes most exquisite while still warm. I intend to reminisce with my old friends for a while longer. You ought to get back to Liu Harbor. There is a performance you do not want to miss. Had one known that Cloud Retainer was in possession of such eminently useful devices, one would have sought to borrow one from her long ago. And yet, since you share my lack of enthusiasm for mechanisms and fine dining, it would have become a mere decorative ornament in your abode. Not so. Had one had such a device to make up for one's lack of culinary prowess, Chenha would not have had to rely on flowers and herbs alone for sustenance, while under one's care. Hmm. In that case, shall we rendezvous with Cloud Retainer one day soon, and request to borrow one more Supreme Cuisine machine? A fine idea. A fine idea indeed. I'm honored to be here on the Iridescence Tour stage. All right, without further ado, I'm Shinyan. This is Hutao, and this is a little something called... <laughs> the Blaze Lily! Uh. <laughs> I'm up here blazing trails through the midnight sky. You'll get burned! Hey! Woo! Yeah! Does anyone have any plans tomorrow? With another year behind us, I think we deserve a celebration of our own. Mm. My treat. Interested? The Tian Xuan footing the bill? <laughs> I can't miss out on that. <laughs> May the year ahead be a blessed one. I believe it shall be. Master, the Shao Lanterns, I... Ha! Elementary! One shall fashion for you a Shao Lantern the likes of which the world has never seen. And you must take it to Liyue Harbor to display its magnificence for all.
Okay, now I need to get a move on and write my next song. <laughs> Listen to you. You only just fulfilled one lifetime dream. Are you really thinking about your next goal already? Don't try to tell me you ain't the same way. I bet you've already thought up a name for your next opera, haven't you? <laughs> you know me too well, Xinyan. The Adeptus Seeking Voyage. How does that sound? Oh, man! Yeah, I can already picture it! I've also got just the finishing line for it. I'll close with, And the celestial melody echoed through the clouds forevermore. Magnificent! Absolutely magnificent! Yes, when I heard the music coming from up in the clouds, I was so stunned I could barely think or move. I felt like it had a special kind of hold over me. Hmm, or maybe it was the adepto power within the music. And the ensemble at the end was truly sublime. I felt like I would have started to cry if I hadn't been one of the performers on the stage. Magnificent! Absolutely magnificent! Well, Lady Ningwang, the Tian Xuan of the Li Yue Qixing, has invited me to visit her again at Yujing Terrace to discuss a long-term collaboration plan. I do hope everything goes well and that we have more opportunities to collaborate in the future. The next time we have another performance, you'll have to come. I will save the best seat for you. Magnificent! Absolutely magnificent! <laughs> I have already given her my thanks in person. This is what she said. It is only natural to lend a hand when we see someone in distress. The wonderful music you brought to Li Yue is worth far more than gratitude. Truly, I, I felt so honored. But I've also made a decision for myself. I will strive to create even more wonderful, original music for this era. Our era. Magnificent! Absolutely magnificent! We couldn't have accomplished all this without you. Please accept my most heartfelt thanks, again. The Lantern Rite celebrations are getting better by the year. Such wonderful music! Dr. Baiju, I've brought the herbs. Who are they for? The singers. Performing at a music festival is very demanding. Using these herbs in good time will protect their voices from damage. Oh, that's why you were preparing them all night. <laughs> I dared not neglect the Yu Hung's request. Her messenger was quite insistent that it should take top priority. Let me double check again. This one is for... I'm so happy! And all the grandmas and grandpas in Qingsa Village had a great time too! You mean, what am I doing here? Well, just now, I did a performance for everyone! Although I can't play an instrument anywhere near as well as Master, I can still sing. Even Granny Roisin said I did a great job. She also gave me some candies. <laughs> I'm so happy. And all the grandmas and grandpas in Qingsa Village had a great time too. Master's told me a lot of stories about the Adepti. There was Sky Bracer with the giant deer horns, and Sea Gazer who loved to collect treasure. Sometimes Master talks and talks for a long time until her voice starts to sound sad. But then she always breaks into a smile again and tells me all of the things each of them loved best about Li Yue. I love everything about Li Yue. Some of the Adepti are gone now, but it's okay because I'm going to help take care of everyone in their stead. I'm 
so happy. And all the grandmas and grandpas in Chingsa Village had a great time, too. I'm happy that Mr. Dvorak found the fairy lady from his story. And I'm also happy that it turned out it was Master all along. Also, I helped out this time, too, didn't I? So that means I was... paying homage to my Master? Oh, oh! Also, Mr. Dvorak got one of his friends to bring me a toy from Fontaine! I like it a lot. At first, I didn't know whether I was supposed to accept it or not. But then Master said it was okay, so I did. I'm so happy. And all the grandmas and grandpas in Chingsa Village had a great time, too. See you! Make sure you take good care of Paimon. Oh, and please come play with me if you ever have the time. Hmm. Granny, you play so beautifully. Do you think you could teach me? Oh, child, you simply never stop, do you? This festival is a rare chance to rest and relax. But here you are pestering me to teach you this, that, and the other. <laughs> Don't worry, Granny. I'm a fast learner. And anyway, the sooner I start learning, the sooner we'll be able to perform a duet together. A musical duo is only as good as its weakest link. So you gotta teach me all your secrets, okay? All right, all right, well... You can start by making me some more tea, and leaving it to cool on the side. Sure, Granny. Chandler, hurry! It's almost time for us to join Hotel for dinner! Ooh, and we'll be meeting at Shinue Kiosk. It's the place with a really long wait list. As expected of the parlor director, always so generous! Come on, let's go! Oh, so that's how it is. Thanks for the suggestions, Mr. Zhongli. I have them all noted down. I've long heard that your knowledge encompasses all things old and new, Mr. Zhongli. But I never knew that you were well-versed in the art of cooking, too. It is truly an honor to make your acquaintance. No need for formalities. I too feel humbled to be in the company of such talented young people. There are many things I could learn from you. Oh, you flatter us. Um, if it's possible, may I trouble you to provide a few words of guidance for my practices in exorcism? Exorcism? I can't say I'm an expert in the field, but if you don't mind, we could start by discussing... Oh, there's so many people here. All we knew was that hotel invited Zhang Li over. Paimon never thought we'd be meeting so many old friends. <laughs> Happy Lantern Ride, everyone! Likewise. Please take a seat. Happy Lantern Ride! Are you having fun? Me too. I've seen Shinyan perform before, but this is the first time I've watched something like this. I heard that the audience loved it too, and she's been receiving quite a lot of performance invitations lately. She's more busy than ever, and Yunjin's gonna help her. Yep, and they asked us to pass on their season's greetings to everyone. They hope we'll have a wonderful gathering. The performance was spectacular indeed. However, it gave Xiang Ling a huge burst of inspiration, which in turn gave us a bit of a headache. Us? Did Xiang Ling ask you to try out her dishes too? <laughs> that, my friend, is beside the point. Watching you eat was enough for me. <laughs> Come to think of it, I probably shouldn't have burdened Chong Yun with eating my share too. Hold on, Xiang Ling came up with a new recipe? <gasps> 
one here knows how to encourage people. Thanks, Paimon. Oh, and I have to thank Mr. Zhongli, too. He gave me lots of useful pointers that really drove it home for me. Oh, so that's what you were talking about before we arrived. Yes. Since we'll be dining together, the topic of our conversation naturally revolved around cooking. Chongling's ideas are truly unconventional. Her choices in both ingredients and spices are comparable to a melody dancing on the tongue. My suggestions were nothing more than the icing on the cake. Oh, the two of you always deliver. <laughs> now I'm getting embarrassed. Anyway, I'll get everyone to have a taste after I've adjusted the recipe based on Mr. Zhang Li's advice. Hmm. That sounds like it might become a little safer to eat. How about I sample the dishes next time? Speaking of eating, Paimon feels like we're missing someone. Oh, Huta was the one who invited us, but she's not here. And oh, where's Guoba? Oh, the Guoba volunteered to help Dad at the restaurant. You know, lots of people come over to eat during Lantern Rite. Without Guoba helping out, I probably wouldn't have had the time to accept Hu Tao's invitation. As for Hu Tao... The director went to collect a guest. She asked me to stay here and host you for the time being. Seems like it's almost time. Huh? Hu Tao went to fetch someone in person? Oh, that must mean they are super important. Could it be... Kuching? Ningguang? Or <gasps> Captain Beto? She didn't clarify. And as her subordinate, I couldn't just pry into the details, could I? Ta-da! We're here! Oh, we're not late to the party, right? Right? Good thing the Conqueror of Demons and I are both as swift as the wind, and whoosh, we made it just in time! Oh. I see. So the important guest is the Conqueror of Demons. I've been looking forward to meeting you. The Director didn't mention anything when she invited us. What a pleasant surprise. Gathered here with us tonight are not only young and accomplished individuals, but also the protector of Leo's peace, Adeptus Alatus. To convene here with all of you is indeed a great honor. Uh... It's almost lantern right. Yet you took all the trouble coming here. <sighs> the director has a way of making it difficult to decline. Rex Lapis, may I ask what troubles you? The director asked me to buy sesame oil in preparation for the celebrations. Huh. Then why would you come all the way to Wangshu Inn? I had a pleasant chat with Chef Yen Xiao and received some spices from him. And, see? Here's some matsutake and a portion of ham. What about the sesame oil? Hmm, it's a shame. I couldn't find the kind the director was looking for. I'm sure you're exaggerating, Zhang. <clears throat> Sir. Uh, there he goes again. Enough with the pleasantries. Go let our guests take a seat. Everyone here today is well known in their own field, and has probably heard about one another to some extent. Some of us are even old acquaintances, so there's no need to be this formal. I heard that the Conqueror of Demons and the Traveler are pretty close, no? Great! You two sit together! You should take a seat too, Director. Oh? Finally remembered me? When we arrived just now, the host at Xinyue Kiosk told me our dishes are almost ready. Perfect timing. 
Let's not wait any longer and ask them to bring up the food. Paimon would have never guessed the person who Tao went to fetch was Xiao. Oh, that's also the first I've heard of the Traveler and Paimon being friends with the Conqueror of Demons. You know Xiao Chu? Knowing is a bit of an overstatement. I've always looked up to him. You might not know this, Paimon, but we exorcists have worked in close collaboration with the Conqueror of Demons for many generations, dispelling evil together, both in the open and from the shadows. Hard to imagine that thanks to Hu Tao, I've finally gotten the chance to meet him. Conqueror of Demons, I'm honored to make your acquaintance. Likewise. It is a great honor indeed to have a chance to meet the legendary Conqueror of Demons. Chang Yun has brought that name up quite a few times in the past. I remember you mentioning wanting him to understand the importance of exorcists. Ahem. Uh, we know each other too. He helped try my dishes during the Masterful Chef's cook-off. <laughs> I didn't think we'd have the chance to meet again. Happy Lantern Rite! No anecdote, however, compares to meeting you in person. I'm Singcho, Xiangling and Changyun's friend. The pleasure is all mine. Whoa, everyone's getting all formal and polite all of a sudden. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what she should say anymore. Uh, Adeptus Xiao, mighty conqueror of demons! Please accept Paimon's greetings too! Belated Happy Lantern Rite! Paimon tried very hard to look for a fancy word, okay? Don't be too harsh on Paimon! There's no need to be so polite. You're right. This was meant to be a nice little get-together between friends, after all. Too much formality kills the atmosphere. I didn't plan this gathering only for everyone to walk on eggshells. Hiya. What's your true intention, then? A little get-together between friends, sipping the finest tea and watching lanterns float into the sky, bidding farewell to the past and embracing the present with joy. And that is something our consultant would say. I think it deserves a standing ovation. Indeed. Exceptional acting skills, Director. As for me, I'm just here to have fun and treat everyone to something good. We all worked really hard this year. Whether traveling or guiding, cooking, helping with the family business, exercising evil spirits, or conquering demons. And of course, our consultant, who's been helping out at the parlor every now and then. Everyone has done some pretty amazing things. As the one who brought everyone together, it goes without saying that I'm the one most deserving of praise. Huh? Sounds kind of self-important, but... Paimon thinks it's pretty amazing that she managed to talk Xiao into coming. He rarely ever enters Liyue Harbor, after all. It wasn't as complicated as you think. Okay, gotcha. Thanks, boss lady. Uh, it's not boss lady, just boss. <sighs> and there she goes. What a lively girl. Conqueror of demons, adept as Xiao. Guardian of Wangshu In, hero of Dihua Marsh. I know you're there. Quiet. Do not disturb the peace. Sorry, but you wouldn't show up if I didn't yell your name, would you? I know you. You're the 77th director of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Is there something you need? <laughs> that does sound like one of Hu Tao's antics. Did the Conqueror of Demons agree to come so that Hu Tao would stop pestering him? 
There might be other reasons. <laughs> Smart guess. Huh? There's more to it? It gets pretty boring from here on. I talked about the funeral parlor's past relationships with the Guardian Yakshas. You know, just to be sociable. In the time of the Archon War, disputes were frequent, and disaster overtook the land. Humans couldn't escape from the torment of the plague, nor could they escape death. The Adepti vanquished the demons, the Millilith fought valiantly, and Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor was responsible for purifying the diseased and sending off the spirits of the dead. That is how the border between life and death was maintained during the war. And it effectively prevented further incidents from happening. That's right. One point for the consultant. But despite our deep-rooted connection, it still took me quite a while to actually convince him. You know him pretty well, huh? This matter is out of my control, so I need to be cautious. True, but I've kept that in mind, too. That's why everyone here today is in one way or another acquainted with elemental power. Besides, it'll only be for a short while as we dine together. There won't be any lasting consequences. But I didn't expect there to be so many people. There's no need to worry, Conqueror of Demons. We're not feeling anything unusual so far. Our young exorcist over here is protected by his pure yang energy, so he's probably the most resilient. Th that's not the same. And did you just toss your carrots into my bowl? Hey, don't look away! Huh? What? I'm siding with Chong Yoon. I saw that too. Your lucky Guoba isn't here today. He hates seeing people being picky with their food. If he'd seen that, he'd definitely make you eat all your carrots. Huh? Guoba would do that? Is he that uncompromising? Hmm. But now that I think of it, Shangling told me that Guoba used to be the stove god. <laughs> it sounds like you've heard the rumors. Hmm. I'm doing fine. Not long ago, before Lantern Rite, I met an old friend. Thanks to his help, things have been a lot more stable than before. Right! Wait, what? <sighs> Seeds of story brought by the wind. And cultivated by time. Uh, did Paima just unconsciously complete the thing? That voice. Could it be? Hmm? If I'm not mistaken, there's someone knocking at the door. Uh, don't just sit there, Zhongli. Go welcome our guest in. No such need. I'm coming in. <laughs> you finally let me in. Hello, hello. No matter if we've met before or not, this moment marks a brand new encounter. Old friends and new, Happy Lantern Rite! Oh, it's the Tone Deaf Bard. Huh? Oh, <laughs> he seems to carry a valiant breeze wherever he goes. It looks like we're gonna be friends. Fate has brought us together, so come on, take a seat and be my guest. Help yourself. Oh, I'll ask them for another set of cutlery. Mm-hmm. This young lady here is as bright as a fresh bouquet of flowers in the morning's rising sun. She no doubt is the one with the most authority here. Whoa, these dishes look amazing! Is it really okay for me to join in? <laughs> All right, I'm digging in! Huh, it's you! Oh, isn't this Jen Yu? Hmm? Jen Yu? 
uh, yep. Now that I've taken a closer look, you're a fan of Gen Yu's works, aren't you? I met Sing Cho at a light novel convention. Oh, how I wish we'd met sooner. I never expected that there'd be another person in this world who could interpret Gen Yu's new novel as thoroughly as I could. Venti, you're being too humble. Considering your poetic talent, your fundamentals are way more impressive. <clears throat> could this new guest be Master Sing Cho's friend? Yeah! <laughs> Xiao, you remember me too, right? We had a chat not long ago. Yes, yes. Monsters become more active than usual as we get closer to Lantern Rite. I was patrolling Dihua Marsh a few days ago, when I happened to run into this... this... Hmm? You've already forgotten? I'm a bard, remember? And bards go around singing wherever they like. Oh, right. And this bard was performing in Dihua Marsh. It was a... moving melody. And it made me feel relaxed and at ease. I... couldn't help but stay and listen. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. I understand now, too. I'm Zhong Li, currently working at the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. It's a pleasure to meet you, new friend. Mm-hmm. And I'm his boss. Oh, and if there's anything unsatisfactory, let me know any time. That's very considerate of you. Oh? Hmm. No wonder. Only a boss as savvy and reliable as you would be able to hire such an impressive consultant. <laughs> oh, you're too nice, Venti. Not to brag, but our consultant truly really is impressive. His knowledge extends across the stars in the land, and there's nothing throughout history that he doesn't know. From the sophisticated way he speaks, it's hard not to suspect that he could very well be an adeptus in disguise. <laughs> so, you're an adeptus. Do you think it might be possible? I... Sorry. I'm only good at conquering demons. I'm afraid I don't have much knowledge in that matter. Uh, really? But Paimon thinks you're super knowledgeable. Huh? Oh, oh! Right! Uh, Shao's a warrior! He doesn't come to the city very often, so it's, uh, pretty normal for him to not know... Anything. Yeah. Eh? Really? I've actually heard a few things about Mr. Zhongli before. The guests in the tavern talked about this refined and courteous man who, instead of having wine at Mondstadt's finest tavern, ordered a cup of hot tea with the most complex name. Now that you mention it... I seem to recall that there indeed is a musician like yourself in Mondstadt. I've heard that he's elegant and amiable, his works witty and vibrant. It's no overstatement to regard him as the best bard in Mondstadt. <laughs> now you're making me embarrassed. I would say that Mondstadt's poetry is a little run-of-the-mill sometimes. There's one I heard a while back that went... <clears throat> The old house is renewed, welcoming the spring breeze, awakening old memories. The meaning's there, but the word choices are unimaginative, and there's a distinct lack of literary flair. I think so, too. The composition needs a little jazzing up. If I were to give it a go, I'd make it... An old melon on a vine, a new flower that grows fine. Oh, good one! It feels unique and has a nice ring to it. You have great taste, Venti. I was afraid about you. Let's shake hands. Of course, of course. Hmm. Uh. Hey, Xingqiu! Hmm? Mind lending me 
a few books when we get back? Pick out some well-written ones! I don't know if it's my own lack of literary knowledge, but I couldn't tell the difference between those two. I don't think it's your fault. Chung Yun's right. It's not our fault. Oh, you have a point. But speaking of, why is the tone deaf bard here? Are you here to take part in Lantern Rite 2? I heard that Liyue will be hosting a Lantern Rite music festival this year. As a musician myself, how could I possibly resist the temptation to come take a look? <laughs> or a listen. Getting to know other musical styles is essential to sparking inspiration, don't you think? As for the Fontaine friend who hosted the festival, I saw him near Stone Gate the other day. The Iridescence tour has finally been held successfully for once, so I had to congratulate him. Don't think anything of it. By the way, I was watching as you entered Shinyue Kiosk, but no one seemed to notice me. Should I say that it's because I'm an expert in hiding, or that a certain someone deliberately ignored the sound of the wind? <laughs> Whenever Lantern Rite comes around, Liyue Harbor becomes bustling with activity. People are all busy watching the lanterns and strolling around the shops, and they might just go travel somewhere on a whim. It is rather difficult to predict another's whereabouts. The festival is in full swing and proceeding smoothly, and we're all gathered here with friends, new and old. This is no doubt a wonderful occasion worth celebrating. To come together with all of you at the beginning of the year, one can't help but be filled with joy. In a moment like this, I propose we raise a glass together. In my case, tea in lieu of wine. Uh. Very well said, Mr. Zhongli. That was exactly what I wanted to say. Uh, now I'm getting a little self-conscious. I didn't cause you too much trouble barging in like that, did I? We usually drink wine during occasions like this over in Mondstadt, but since Mr. Zhang Li insists on drinking tea, I'll give a toast with tea too. Everyone, thanks for the treat. You're welcome. As the host of this gathering, I hope everyone enjoys the food and drinks. May this year be better than the last. Considering that everyone may have other matters to attend to later, sticking to tea seems like a good idea. Uh... Oh, all of a sudden, they started proposing toasts! Should... should we? What's with the urgency? <sighs> sure. Have you two finished eating? It's always nice to have a breath of fresh air after a meal. Helps with digestion. Um... Uh... Paimon will come too! Uh, yeah? Okay then. Don't forget to come back! It seems like our new friend is an expert in wine. I deserve no such praise. I only drink for fun. It's nothing compared to your expertise. I'm glad we're only having tea today. What if I got drunk and said something nonsensical? I'd surely become an object of ridicule to someone I've just met. No such thing. I wouldn't dare disrespect the director's guest. You're not allowed to leave Paimon here alone! To be honest, Paimon's worried about saying the wrong thing. Did you talk about anything interesting before we started the meal? Anything fun I missed out on? Oh, we were talking about cooking. Mr. Zhongli told us that he went on a trip to Chaoyang Village the other day and got a hold of some uncommon ingredients. Tea seed oil and sesame oil. He suggested I try using those in my new dishes. Oh, no wonder he left his post for so long that day. 
Those ingredients would be difficult for anyone else to find. I guess I'll need his help next time as well. About you and Venti. Uh... <laughs> Could he be... a partner in your family business? That's right. You know how my family is. A lot of business secrets can't just be divulged at the dinner table. Ah, just as I thought. Let's depart. You go ahead. Are you all right? I... It's hard to describe. It's not that. There were those among the Adepti who loved gatherings and idle chit-chat. Sometimes they would call up a few others for a drink. Even I got dragged along to their gatherings many times. The Adepti all have their specialties, making most of them proud and arrogant. Everything they say is straight from the heart. It never gets too complicated. But this time... That's not what I meant. Or perhaps I should say Jean... Uh, Rex Lapis is really good at adapting to human life. You could say that he actually enjoys doing so. And that's something I might never be able to do. Hmm... That does sound like something you would say. No matter. I know my circumstances. Whenever I think of the ordinary conversations I've had with you, it feels... strangely novel. Yes. The parlor director went out of her way with the invitation, so it was difficult to turn her down. I had made mental preparations before agreeing to come. She told me that all the guests today would be acquainted with elemental power, and I knew that you would be here. But I didn't expect the other guests to be... General Capesis always said that we should live in the present and enjoy every pleasant surprise. Perhaps that's what I should do with what I'm feeling now. But I think he meant designing clothes for those around him. The clothes were intricately designed, but inconvenient to wear. Brother Bosatius never tried to hide his distaste in front of him. Rex Lapis did like his designs and even collected quite a few. The outfit he wears now was also designed by General Capesis himself. I never saw him wear this during the war. I didn't expect him to start wearing it later. Oh, here you are! Um, I'm not intruding, right? You're not. What is it? Uh, Hu Tao saw that everyone's done eating and asked the staff to bring out the desserts. Paimon got so anxious that you weren't back yet that she scarfed down her dessert without the usual slurping and munching. And to be honest, I was kind of worried too. You looked a little restless just now, and I thought you weren't used to the food here and was planning to head back to Wangshu Inn for something Yan Chao made. You're worrying too much. Why would I? Anyway, let's head back. Please wait! There's another reason why I came looking for you. Here, take these. I brought them for you. Almond tofu? Yup. Since the Masterful Chefs competition, you can say that Yan Xiao and I are not only competitors, but good friends as well. I visit him at Wang Xuan sometimes to discuss our cooking. I heard him say that the esteemed guest on the roof loves nothing more than a good plate of almond tofu, so I learned a thing or two about the dish from him. I'll be honest, before Hu Tao invited everyone, she secretly came looking for me, told me about the guest she planned to invite, and asked me for some suggestions on what she should order. 
So I made a few servings of almond tofu for you guys in advance. Take them as a token of gratitude for your support. When I told Guoba that I was making these for you, he started eagerly running around the kitchen and helping a lot, too. Thank you for the trouble. There was no need to... I'll take them. Thank you. And Guoba, too. You're welcome. Oh, the almond tofu I made probably tastes and feels a little different from the type Yen Shao cooks. Please let me know if there's any improvements I should make. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Alrighty, we should head back now. We can't keep Paimon waiting. Sorry to keep everyone waiting. No worries, we're all just chatting here. There's no serious business to take care of. Whether we're chatting outside or inside, it's all the same. Hmm. Paimon's too busy eating to talk to you. But even though we're all well acquainted by now, I think this festive gathering deserves something ceremonious. Oh? Is this some local custom? Nope. This is something I made up so that good luck will be on our side, that's all. Spontaneity is the best choice to make here. Um, let's use this incense burner on the table. It's been lit for so long now that the incense is running out. I'll leave refilling and lighting the incense to the most distinguished guest among us all. Lighting the incense will signify continuous growth and prosperity in all our endeavors in the new year. I see. Perfect symbolism, as expected of Hu Tao. And speaking of the most distinguished guest here today, I'm sure we all agree that it's Mr. Zhang Li. I'm not very familiar with the details of his past deeds, but chatting with him has been a real eye-opener, even for a bard who has traveled all across the world. If knowledge were a form of power, one could even say that you're a wielder of unlimited strength. But when it comes to having a way with words, the notable bard is certainly one cut above the rest. I just happen to have a good memory. It is such an unexceptional skill, yet you made it sound like an unparalleled talent. I am truly impressed. Since we all get to nominate someone... Mm-hmm. I think it's only fair that we let the parlor director light the incense. Huh? That won't do. Don't flatter me just because I'm your boss. We are looking for the most distinguished guest here. As the host, I shouldn't be involved in this discussion at all. Now that we've enjoyed this table full of delicacies, how about we let our one and only chef here do the honors? Um, is this really the way this works? I didn't cook any of these dishes. It's not a big deal. Just look at her! Xiangling, the disciple of an adeptus, the stove god's best companion, the winner of the Masterful Chef's competition. The only heir of the famous One Mean Restaurant. A good old friend of mine. There's no better choice. <laughs> uh, why does Paimon feel like we're back at square one again? You're making me embarrassed. If we're looking for a distinguished guest, surely the second son of the Fayum Commerce Guild counts. 
It's one of the largest commerce guilds in Liyue Harbor. Huh? Don't get me involved in this. Oh, not a bad choice. With the Commerce Guild's young master lighting the incense, we're all sure to make a huge sum of mora in the new year. That's not how it works. Making a fortune is indeed a fine wish, but it's of lesser importance than good health and happiness. Which means we should choose Chong Yun, the skilled exorcist who keeps everyone's home safe from evil spirits. Huh? Now you're nominating me? I can't be the one when we have the Conqueror of Demons right here. Adeptus Xiao has the most seniority among everyone here today. We should... I refuse. I am most certainly not the most distinguished guest here. You should all be able to make the right judgment based on your observations. One person here is well acquainted with everyone else. Oh, that's right! Even though you're always mocking Paimon, you're still pretty popular with other people. No, wait! Paimon said she wouldn't talk to you again! Huh? Who else is there? Huh? Huh? Does that mean... Paimon's the most distinguished guest? Oh, well, that was unexpected! <laughs> I agree. Paimon's just the one we need. Without a friend constantly by your side, a long journey would become dreadfully lonesome. But once you have someone there to brighten up the atmosphere, everything along the way will become lively and vibrant too. Ah. The Traveler has traversed many nations and left behind a great deal of fascinating stories. But without Paimon, they would have become quite monotonous. Paimon plays an indispensable role in making your journey a happy and smooth one. You guys... Paimon's not used to being praised like that. Uh, those were genuine compliments, right? Thank you. You made Paimon wait for a long time, but Paimon's not mad anymore. Don't take everything to heart, Paimon. Friends tease each other all the time. Hmm, that is indeed true. And that means Paimon is as important to the Traveler as Guoba is to me. Looks like we've come to an agreement. Any objections before we proceed? I trust the Traveler's judgment. Then Paimon it is. And now, the world's most excellent Traveler's greatest companion, guide, and friend, Paimon, will be refilling and lighting the incense for us. Here you go. Take the match, and uh, don't burn yourself. But if things go really wrong, here's a two-for-one coupon. Getting late. I won't take up any more of your time. You're all free to go as you please. Yep, the tea was amazing too. You don't have to go all polite on me. Just remember to come when I invite you next time. Hmm, let's see. It's dark out, so I'm going to accompany Xiang Ling, Sing Cho, and Chang Yun back home. As for the rest of the guests, I'll leave them to our consultant. No need. I'm headed towards the harbor to meet a friend on the ship. There's no need to trouble one such as Mr. Zhang Li. I think you know the place I'm talking about. Come meet me anytime. It was great getting to know you all. 
Let's meet again when the spring breeze begins to blow. Bye! Oh, we should write poetry together sometime. We'll catch you all later then. Don't forget to return to the parlor later. There's something I need you to do. Understood. See you later. <sighs> well then. Rex Lapis. Just Zhongli will do. I live as a mortal in Liu Harbor now. I am just one among many who begin work at sunrise and retire to rest at sundown. If we were to consider status and seniority as Zhongli, I should be respectfully referring to you as Adeptus Shao. Ugh. Heaven forbid. <laughs> I meant what I said. I heard that during the Lantern Rite Music Festival, you conferred with Streetward Rambler and Cloud Retainer. I take it as you've gained a lot more knowledge about the past? The same truth will sound different coming from different people. As more bear witness to a story, feelings and interpretations expand in variety too. I once had a pleasant chat about the past and present with a Sumeru scholar named Soraya, and learned a few things about her research topic. From the evidence she found and the conclusion she made, her area of research is already very close to the truth. But there are multiple sides to humans and gods alike. In the legends recorded by humans, some gods were depicted as arrogant and condescending while others were kind and capable. But whether to me, Streetward Rambler, Cloud Retainer, or younger Adepti such as Shao and Ganyu, those Adepti and gods that may seem extraordinary to humans are something more akin to close companions. This was as true back then as it is right now. Just how Shao may seem unapproachable to most, but the Traveler has proved otherwise. So there's no need to dwell too much on certain things. Rex La... <clears throat> I mean, Zhang Li, what you're saying is... It looks like you understood what I meant. Ah. The director asked me to accompany you on your return. But I don't think you'll need my protection. I'll be taking a walk around and admiring the night scenery. After that... It'll be time for me to go back and meet up with the director. Goodbye for now. Bye, Zhongli! Everyone's gone now. Paimon always feels a little empty inside when a lively celebration ends. But at least you always stay by Paimon's side. No, no, no. Paimon got it mixed up. Paimon, the best and most distinguished travel guide, will always stay by your side, Traveler. Hmm. Good that you were aware of that. Shell, is there anything else you want to do? We could take you on a tour of Leela Harbor. No need. I've stayed here for much longer than I had expected. The city lights are a fine sight, but it's time for me to leave. The events of today occurred so abruptly... I appreciate your kindness. Okay. I'll see you next time then. <laughs> Yen Shao just came up here with some almond tofu, but I haven't finished everything Shang Ling gave me yet. You should try some too. I'm not as experienced in tasting mortal food as you, and I couldn't tell the difference. There must be many different stories to tell of the hustle and bustle of the mortal world, too. You can tell me. I will listen. This is such a cool ship! Facing the sea breeze and gazing out at the soaring seagulls, 
<sighs> Makes me want to sing out loud! Kazuha, how about I stay here and be the ship's resident bard? What are my prospects? With your level of artistic finesse, I'm sure nothing will go wrong. But I'm afraid the sailors aboard are not the most versed in the arts. They probably wouldn't understand the deeper meaning your poetry holds. <laughs> you can't say that for sure. Poetry is spur-of-the-moment creations. Anyone viewing the same sights and experiencing the same atmosphere would surely understand. <sighs> There's a port in Mondstadt too, but I rarely get the chance to board any of the ships. Speaking of ships, everything's perfect about this one, except... Hmm? Um, Kazuha, could you tell your captain that my height says nothing of my age? I'm way past drinking age. How often does one get to enjoy a seafood feast on a ship? Uh, it'll be a real shame if there isn't anything stronger to enhance the food. Pretty please? There's not much I can do about that. It's not because Captain Beto's not on the ship right now, but because there's no room for negotiation on this matter. Even I have to sit in the no-drinking zone every time. Uh, but I don't get drunk after just a few sips. Trust me, I can hold my liquor really well. Restaurant. The vegetables are fresh. And there are enough wheats and grains stocked up. I'll pass on the seafood. Oh, it's you. We meet again. Surprised to see me here? It's the director's orders. Xiongling worked all day and night at the restaurant during the festival and didn't get to have any time to enjoy the festivities. The director sent me here to help out in the kitchen so that Xiongling will have some time to herself. But with someone as hard-working as you around, there seems to be nothing much for me to do. It feels good seeing my old friend in the kitchen, fetching ingredients and lighting fires. Perhaps I should borrow Cloud Retainer's Supreme Cuisine Machine to speed things up. You'd still prefer to make them by hand, but of course. Cho, you have to be honest. Hmm? Honest about what? How did you and Venti really meet? W why are you suddenly asking that? Huh? Aren't they book buddies? Yeah, we met a few times at a book convention. That's all. Oh, really? With that extraordinary demeanor and literary talent, he's definitely not just any bard. If he's someone that could hold his ground in a conversation with a consultant, he needs to at least be as talented as me. Um, perhaps you're overthinking this matter. Uh... Hu Tao, Xincho wouldn't lie to us. Uh, okay. I'll tell you the truth. Huh? Singcho. I'm actually a fan of Venti's poetry. You all know that I love reading, and sometimes come across poetry from Mondstadt. Among those works, I admire the ones penned by Venti the most. Just as Hu Tao said, his artistry is the reflection of his personality, remarkable grace and exceptional literary talent. I guess Venti didn't tell you the whole truth back at the restaurant, because he didn't want to embarrass me in front of everyone. He's such a considerate person. Uh, yes, right. I can confirm that. When Sing Cho was busy with other things, he asked me to buy him poetry books in secret. I see. That didn't sound like too much of a big deal. You could have told us right away. Well, I'm telling you now, aren't I? Oh, so that's your story. Ugh, forget it. Let's drop this topic. 
It's not often that the four of us are all together. What should we do next? Hide and seek, hopscotch, or some shopping? Since there's four of us, why don't we borrow a mahjong set? Hey, don't tell me you called me over for just a game of chess. You have to be more specific, Captain Beto. Is it that you find playing chess an uninteresting activity, or that you're unhappy about my lack of novel ideas? If you don't specify what you mean, how could I know what I should do to please you? <laughs> of course. I make a single remark and you reply with a full-blown lecture. Maybe we should deal with all official affairs publicly in the future. It might just make things easier. I'd be perfectly happy with that. I'm just worried that Captain Beto's business might be negatively affected. Don't give me that. That woman from Yenshang Tea House sometimes comes aboard to ask for information. She requested the fleet to import some goods, but how could I not know who she's actually working for? Oh. <laughs> You sure know a lot, Captain Beto. How about I ask her to come over? Or maybe we go straight to her tea house? With one more person around, we'll be able to have some variety in our chess games. I hope that that would be less of a bore to you. <laughs> so, we're still gonna play chess after all. Coaching and Charlotte! Paimon never thought she'd see you two together. Nice to see you again, Traveler and Paimon. Oh, we're not interrupting anything, are we? <laughs> not at all. I wasn't in the middle of an interview or anything. I was just asking Miss Kuching about purchasing a kite. A kite? Are you buying some regional specialties to bring back to Fontaine? Well, yes. And... <laughs> it seems you haven't heard yet. The theme of this year's Lantern Rite is kites. Oh, so that's why Paimon has seen so many floating in the sky. Liyue Harbor is always changing, so it is only fitting that Lantern Rite should change in turn. The Qixing believes it would benefit Liyue to build on our own cultural foundation by embracing the technologies of other nations. After all, it is said that the stones of another mountain may serve to better polish one's own jade. Yeah, remember my business meeting with Tian Chuan Ningguang the last time I was in Liyue Harbor? That's what it was about! But all I really did was use my network to introduce Lady Ningguang to some interesting people. I'm not sure that quite counts as fostering cooperation. In the end, we decided to combine Liyue's traditional art of kite making with Fontaine's mechanical vertical lifting device. Mechanical lifting device? Sounds pretty impressive. Uh, but don't kites just use the wind to fly? Why would you need to add something mechanical? Well, you've actually just answered your own question, Paimon. How high and far a kite can fly depends as much on the weather conditions as on the skill of the person holding the string. But as soon as there's no wind, you can only flail about helplessly like a sweet flower medaka out of water. Experience doesn't matter at that point. Exactly. Liyue is now a nation ruled by humans, after all. It's about time we had the power to make a kite fly, don't you think? Plus, the easier we can make it to enjoy, the more people will want to participate. Right? I also thought it was a novel idea. Plus, it shouldn't cost much to do. With Miss Charlotte's help, everything has gone smoothly. Our new mechanical kites are already available to purchase from a stall in the harbor. We're having trouble keeping up with demand. We also gave quite a bit of thought to the price. We didn't want it to be too much more expensive than a traditional kite. Ooh! Turns out you two and Ningguang like playing with toys just as much as Paimon! Uh, toys? They're not exactly toys. You see, Miss Kuching, that does seem to be everyone's first reaction. Hmm. Although kites are one of our most time-honored cultural relics, 
Outside of their use in certain ceremonies, I suppose they're considered playthings more than anything now. But to me, there's so much more than that. Think for a second about how remarkable it is that a flimsy paper kite attached to a string has the capacity to touch the sky. It is this slight piece of paper that also carries the weight of Liyue's cultural traditions. There's an old poem that goes, O kite born of paper, flying true and sound, a lone traveler wanders, just waiting to be found. In the past, poets from Liyue used kites to symbolize a feeling of longing, or evoke the peacefulness of idyllic rural scenery. If the people of today can derive enjoyment from this activity, they will not only be more likely to better appreciate the tradition, but also to pass it down to the people of tomorrow. That's the coaching we know, always thinking five steps ahead of anyone else. Well said, Miss Kuching. I've learned quite a bit myself. <laughs> as long as you're willing to listen, I'm happy to share. I also know quite a lot about the various folk traditions related to kites. For example, whenever a kite blew away, people would say it was the Adepti that summoned the wind to take it away as an offering. That way, you can turn an unfortunate event into an auspicious one. What about something... more fun? Do you know anything like that? More fun... Hmm, let me think... Oh, I suppose we should first talk about how kites are made. It's another one of our precious forms of traditional craftsmanship. My grandfather told me that, back when he was a boy, children learned the art of kite making step by step from their elders. First, you use the thin strips of bamboo to construct the frame, then, you draw a design of your choice on a piece of paper, paste it onto the frame, and tie on the string. Then, you look towards the sky and release the kite to soar among the clouds. Some people write down certain names or desires on their kites, cut the string, and let them fly free. Others may place particular thoughts or meaning into the design itself. Are certain designs associated with certain meanings? <laughs> I'm gonna jot all of this down. Hmm. Well, for example, kites in the shape of a butterfly typically symbolize freedom, happiness, or the desire to break free. Fascinating. What else can you tell me? The scissored-tailed swallow is the most classic design. It symbolizes good fortune and joyful tidings. Different colors also have small variations in meaning. Are these commonly understood meanings and symbols in Liyue? Kind of like the language of flowers in Fontaine. Hmm, I believe so. Most have probably heard something about it from their elders at some point. If you're interested, Miss Charlotte, I have several books on the topic that I could lend you. They could be a useful reference. That would be a huge help! Great! Looks like I've got the outline for quite the article on my hands. Perfect! We're gonna take a look around! Then, I'll show Miss Charlotte to my home for a little while. Ah, I almost forgot. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is hosting a kite-flying contest on the Night of Lantern Rite. If you're interested, you're more than welcome to bring a kite and participate. The rules are simple. Whoever flies their kite the highest and furthest within the time limit will receive a special honor along with a secret prize. I've already prepared more than enough empty film for the event. I can see the spectacle already! Uh, maybe tone it down a bit, Traveler! What if we don't win? It's better to keep a low profile until the competition starts. Then, we'll give them a show they never saw coming. Oh, that secret prize is ours. Then I'll look forward to seeing your performance. You bet! Wait, Traveler? Take a peek to your right. Do you see those two people lurking over there? Is it just Paimon? Or were they staring at us the whole time we were talking to Kuching and Charlotte just now? Hmm, 
They seem fishy. Huh. Well, yes, but... Something's up. Paimon just has a bad feeling. Do you think they could be treasure hoarders? They always seem to be stirring up trouble during Lantern Rite. Oh, Paimon's sick of waiting around for something bad to happen. We should strike first, you know. Foil their plans before they even begin. You go right, Paimon will go left. Oh. It is with such an air of urgency that you appear before us. Your comportment suggests you believe us to have committed some heinous crime. Perhaps you could enlighten us as to your intentions. Whoa! Where did this buddy daddy come from? You should be the one doing the enlightening, buddy! Don't think we didn't notice you eavesdropping. One look and we could tell you were up to no good. Tell us everything, starting with your name! Uh... One bears no secrets before two such as yourselves. You stand in the presence of the mighty and illuminated Adeptus, Mooncarver. For the purpose of this foray into the mortal realm, however, you may address one as Hojong. You kidding? That deer's got his head stuck so far up in the clouds, there's no way he'd humble himself down here with the rest of us. Uh, <clears throat> you may want to hold your tongue, Paimon. <laughs> Don't think that Paimon is going to believe you just because you know her name. Let Paimon guess, you're supposed to be Mountain Shaper, right? Indeed. Mooncarver and myself have descended upon the mortal realm for a visit. The two of you may call me Jiahu. Huh. Looks like you did your research. But in our experience, the harder you try to lead us on, the more likely it is that we've got a big fish on our hands. We'll go straight to the Mulilith and have you arrested for impersonating a deaf guy! Preposterous! Utterly preposterous! Right! Tell us something that only an Adeptus would know. And it better not be some common knowledge that any person on the street could tell you. <sighs> During the last Lantern Rite, we gathered at Mount Hulao with Rex Lapis and made use of Cloud Retainer's Supreme Cuisine Machine to prepare bamboo shoot soup. Perhaps you have some recollection? The flavor of that soup was more than enough to whet one's appetite. As such, Cloud Retainer assented to my use of the device beyond that singular occasion, providing other recipes to boot. Since then, one has dabbled in the pleasures of the culinary arts whenever time allows. Dabbled? Upon one's last sojourn to your mountain, did you not immediately attempt to hide the device behind a chunk of amber as soon as one's presence was known? Uh... Did one not speak up on your behalf but a moment ago? This is how you choose to repay that kindness? One is simply trying to emphasize the veracity of our claim. That does not mean you should reveal personal matters so readily. They might think one bears no difference from Cloud Retainer. <sighs> Forget it. One does not have the breath to waste on such petty trifles. Ah... Uh... That might have been more detail than we needed. Seems like you two are the real deal, and Paimon sorry for suspecting you. But, uh, for beings as forgiving as yourselves, this is just water under the bridge, right? You indeed have an agile mind. Cloud Retainer was not mistaken in her high estimation of you. Paimon's still curious about something. It's just understand why Mountain Shaper is here, but why did you decide to come to the city, Mooncarver? It's not really your thing, is it? Hmm. <sighs> it, it is but, but an inevitable, inevitable eventuality. eventuality. Long have the mountains remained strangely idle since Cloud Retainer's move to Liu at Harbor. With Lantern right near at hand, one would expect Cloud Retainer to provide us with an account of the festivities in advance. Yet to this day, she has failed to appear. 
Cloud Retainer is hardly the forgetful sort. One must never rest idle in the face of that which demands action. And since our acquaintances dwell in Liyue Harbor, we had to travel here in human form to avail ourselves of their aid, Cloud Retainers in this case. But a moment ago, one heard you speak of a mechanical kite of sorts. It appears the essence of the situation has hitherto revealed itself. Now it is time for one to retire back to one's abode. Huh. So you're not looking for Cloud Retainer anymore? Perhaps there are aspects of Cloud Retainer's temperament that remain opaque to young Paimon. Given one's understanding, one can only imagine the anger that now consumes her. Cloud Retainer is of a proud and arrogant disposition. She holds the belief that her skill in mechanics surpasses that of all others. One can be quite certain it is hardly with an open mind that she regards the arrival of this new technology. One surmises that she has shut herself away, refused all company, and buried herself in the study of her own creations. To call on her would only invite her rebuke. However, if you do happen to cross paths with her over the next few days, do pass along one's regards. Sure! Leave it to us! Have a safe trip back, enjoy the scenery, and happy lantern ride! Thank you for your kind words. We shall now depart. <sighs> we got all worked up for nothing, huh? All that trouble and it turned out to be people we knew all along! Well, it's still pretty early. Let's head over and check out the kite stalls. Paimon wants to see what kinds of kites we can buy to use in the competition. The bigger and prettier, the better. Oh, welcome. Are the two of you looking to buy a kite? Would you like me to go over the different designs? Ooh, a sister killed swallow and a butterfly and oh! Ah, oh, this jade chamber design is our newest. It's been selling like crazy over the past two days. Does it also have a unique meaning? Of course. The Jade Chamber symbolizes wealth and abundance. The kite bearing its design is said to bring riches in the future to those who fly it. Oh, now that's Paimon's kind of kite! I apologize for the interruption, but are all your wares in order, Miss Genuine? Oh, yes, yes, they're just over there. The paper, bamboo, and dyes. All the necessary kite-making materials. Wonderful! I'll pack them up and get a guard to deliver the goods to Yilong Wharf for you. Yilong Wharf? Oh, wonder what that place is like during Lantern Ride. Paimon would love to go take a look. Well, if the two of you are interested in going to Yilong Wharf, then could I trouble you to find Gaming and deliver these goods together? Is Gaming the guard you just mentioned? Well, yes. The communications office handles shipments and transports around Liyue. He works for the Secure Transport Agency, one of our sub-organizations. Uh, the problem is, many of my colleagues have taken leave during Lantern Rite to spend time with their families. So, our available workforce has seen a dramatic decrease recently. If you were willing to help out, then I could get a head start on my next appointment. You do seem really pressed for time. Of course, of course. Hard work deserves ample rewards. Now, at this time of day, coming should be somewhere in the vicinity. But just follow the main road until you see the head of a Wushou dance costume. Should be on your right. Be sure to come back if you'd like to buy a kite. I'll even give you a discount. By the way, do you know my aunt? Everyone calls her Granny Shan. I've heard her mention Gaming before. Apparently he's a nice outgoing fellow and all around good guy. Yeah, Skyward! Wait, I thought we had an agreement. A loser buys dim sum tomorrow? <laughs> Look at you! Scowl like that for much longer and your face might stay that way. Hey now, don't be upset. How about this? You extend the invitation, and I'll pay. Uh, no way, Gaming. You're always the one picking up the tab. I'm not trying to be a sore loser. I just didn't expect you to come from behind to win like that. 
<laughs> that was nothing. All in a day's work, friend. Perfect. Gaming is here. Sorry to interrupt, Gaming. We just spoke to a guy from the communications office who needs you to deliver some goods to Elon Wharf. Oh, that must have been Longjo. Looks like I've got work. Gotta go. Sure, go do your thing. Uh, let's have a rematch when you get back. I won't let you win so easily next time. <laughs> Alrighty, you can hand the goods over to me. Must have been heavy hauling them all this way. Let me take them off your hands. Ah, it wasn't that bad. It's just some kite making materials. Plus, we didn't have to walk very far. Kite making materials. I see, I see. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't too much trouble, Paimon. Still, I owe you one. Ah, and you must be the traveler. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for your help. Huh? You know us? <laughs> There probably aren't many in Liyue who don't. I've heard quite a bit about you two. You're quite well known around these parts. Oh, and please excuse Longjo if he forgot to thank you. Uh, take my thanks in his place. He's a good guy. He's just been super busy lately, running around from place to place. Don't be too hard on him, yeah? So, you here for Lantern, right? Yep, it's always so lively this time of year. We were actually hoping we could tag along to Elon Wharf and have a look around! Perfect! We'll go together then! I'm good with directions, so just follow me. Trust me, I know my way around. We can exchange stories, tell jokes, or just chat along the way. Oh, and there are a couple of good places to eat along our route. We can stop and grab a bite when it's time. The ingredients are fresh, the portions are generous, and the prices won't break the bank. You can order anything, and I promise, you won't be disappointed. Order anything? Hey, did you really have to call Paimon out like that in front of our new friend? <laughs> Don't worry, I understand. I joke around like that with my friends, too. It just shows how close you are. Do you need to pack anything up before we hit the road? I can wait. Nope, our things are always packed and ready. We're pretty much travel experts at this point. Oh, that's right. Then let's get going. If we run into any trouble, you can count on me to protect you. I am a guard, after all. Yeah. Oh, the docks are just a bit further. One step at a time. Hang in there. Wait! Get behind me. I'll handle this. Cry louder! Let the world collide! Got him! Skyward! Should replace my hammer. <laughs> <laughs> It's not uncommon for deliveries to get intercepted. That's why this job needs guards like us. Hyman was impressed by your moves back there. You seem like a real pro at your job. Oh, <laughs> that's not a skill I learned on the job. It's just a hobby. Have you ever heard of wushou dancing? Really? Wushou dancing is famous in Chenyu Vale. Performers might be invited to promote the opening of a business or to spread good fortune during a holiday season. But, I must admit, it has nothing on the popularity of the Liyue Opera. I'm also well aware that people in Liyue Harbor aren't exactly jumping at the chance to watch wushou dancing. So, it's not something I do full-time. Huh? You have two jobs? How do you have the energy to do all that? <laughs> it's not that tiring. You just have to take a rest. Ah, Paimon gets it, so you must sleep a lot then. Not really. Just yesterday, I stayed up all night playing cards. Oh. Uh... Let's go. The docks are just up ahead. Skyward! Got her! Finally, 
we can rest. Ooh, Paimon's shoulders are so stiff! And her stomach so empty. Sorry, sorry. Did I push the pace a bit too much? I mean, you were the ones who said you were travel experts. Leo is just too hilly. Floating up and down so much. Where's Paimon out? Oh, Paimon was finally satisfied and now her poor stomach's empty again. Aw, would you like some winter melon cake? I have some on me that I bought from a store. Yes, Paimon will take all you got. Uh, you might want to pace yourself there. Or you'll be too full to eat a proper meal later. <laughs> Paimon never gets too full. Just like... Oh, just like you, apparently, never get tired, no matter how far you walk or how many jobs you work. Ah, I see. Then here you go, Paimon. And for you, Traveler. Enjoy! And here's some for you too, Uncle Bosu. Don't think I forgot about you, my friend. I'll just set it to the side here for you. Oh, that hit the spot. Paimon thought she was going to starve to death for a minute there. <laughs> that close of a call, huh? Huh. <sighs> I've been eating winter melon cake ever since I was a kid. You can buy them from all sorts of places, whether it's a small vendor on the side of the road or a big restaurant in the city. But each place produces cakes with a slightly different flavor. If you like these ones, I can give you the address of the shop I bought them from. I'll just have to check when we get back. <laughs> oh, oh, all my jabbering must be making it difficult for you to enjoy the scenery in peace, huh? Don't be afraid to tell me to zip it for a little while, okay? Really, I won't be offended. Okay, Paimon is kind of enjoying listening to your chitter-chatter. Aww, a fed Paimon is a happy Paimon, huh? <laughs> hey, Paimon can be in a good mood anytime she wants! Need some fresh bamboo for this. Don't forget your things, and uh, watch your step as you get off the raft, or you're in for a swim. Thanks for the ride, Uncle Bosu. You take care of yourself now. I'll see you some other time. Okay, follow me. This way is fastest. We'll have to take the elevator up to the secure transport agency. Hey! I slow down. What is it? No one's gonna try any funny business when the street is this packed, right? Oh, well... Uh, how should I put it? Come on, spit it out! Do you see that group of people over there? Those are my relatives. Wow, you sure have a big family. Once they start buying things, they won't stop perusing till it gets dark. Oh, this is bad. <sighs> They're your family, not your arch enemies. What's there to be afraid of? Unless... Oh, did you do something horrible to them? No, it's not that. I'm just... not that good at dealing with my family. It would be best if we could steer clear of them. I'll explain more when we have the chance, but right now, we've got a job to do. Mm, the left side looks pretty packed. Let's go straight. Slow and steady wins the race. Let's wait here for a second. Maybe my aunt will leave. She's gone! Let's go!
left. Run! To the right, and... Uh... Wow, you guys are good. I'm impressed. That was nothing. It was a piece of cake. Oh, winter melon cake to be exact. <laughs> you really liked it, huh? Ooh, you know what? I'll buy you a whole bunch and pile them so high you can swim in them. As long as you don't wind up drowning, Paimon! <laughs> hey, Uncle Drigway. These are my friends, the Traveler and Paimon. They came to deliver some goods with me. So, I guess I'll go ahead and take these over to Uncle Yongzan then? Yes. Thanks for your hard work. I should thank you both for your trouble as well. Please take a seat and rest for a bit. I'll prepare some tea. No need. We'll be off soon anyway. Hey, we're already here, aren't we? No harm in taking a load off for a bit. Plus, I know the Secure Transport Agency has some great Songwa tea stash around here somewhere. I promise you, one sip and you'll be hooked. Anyway, you just sit down and relax, Uncle Jirgui. Who would I be if I just sat here and let you go through all this trouble? Leave this to me. I have to be up and about to drop these goods off anyway. What's a little extra time on my feet? Oh, you aren't too picky, right, Traveler? I know Paimon prefers things on the sweeter side, so I won't steep the tea too long. And I'll add some dim sum pastries on the side. Aww, you noticed what Paimon likes? How long have you two known Gaming? Oh, not long at all. We just kind of tagged along on his trip to Elong Wharf. He's just a super welcoming guy. We became friends. You know, just like that. <laughs> That's just how he is. He's the attentive sort. Really knows how to look after his own. A while ago, one of our guards had to take off work. Said his joints were hurting due to the rain. Gaming personally went all the way to Boo Boo Pharmacy to get some medicine for him from Dr. Baiju, then traveled through the night to deliver it back to him. That young man has such a good head on his shoulders. How can anyone not love him? I mean, there is his dad, but, well, ask anyone else. And... Uncle Yongzan says he doesn't have the personnel to spare for this delivery right now. So what do you think, Uncle Jirigui? Should I go ahead and deliver it instead? Ah, it feels like we've troubled you enough already. It's kite-making materials, though. It could be for a kid. I'm sure the sender wants it delivered before Lantern right. Oh, uh, by the way, here, have some tea. All right, then. Deliver it if you want to. Ooh, are you free in two days? How about we grab some dim sum from Shinya Kiosk? My treat, and don't even think about trying to pay. Whoa, that's way too generous of you. Uh, don't mention it. Just think of this as a thank you for all your help. Besides, the thing between me and my family, it's a long story. It might take some time to tell. Sounds good! Paima never says no to free food. Alright, then I'm off. See you in two days. Oh, and Paimon? Make sure not to eat too much before then. Don't say I didn't warn you. Is he underestimating Paimon? <laughs> She's just gonna have to show him how much she can really eat. Anyway, is Gobin's family situation really that complicated? He has such a happy-go-lucky personality. Plus, he's an enthusiastic and diligent worker. It's hard to imagine a guy like that being troubled by much. Hmm, how should I put it? Since he already plans to tell you himself, you don't need an old man like me to add my two cents. You seem to be around the same age, so you might have a lot in common. Perhaps you could help him talk things through. Consider it a favor to me. If you have the time, maybe you can make a little flag for us to wave about. It can say, we provide aid in spades. Couldn't hurt to advertise our services, right? Well, I can certainly arrange that. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Wait. Seriously? Paima was just joking, but if you're going to get us something, she'd much rather have winter melon cake instead. 
Uh, seems like gaming really has rubbed off on you. Would you like some more tea? I think there's some left. No thanks! We came all this way and still haven't gotten a chance to look around the wharf! We should see the kinds of kites they got! Maybe they'll have ones you can't find in Liyue Harbor! All right then. Please do let me know if you'd like more tea. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. Gomming is a good kid. I just wish he could reconcile with his family. You're around the same age, so he might listen to you. Please talk things through with him. The way you speak, one might have presumed you are displeased to be in one's presence. Take note, Paimon. You could learn a thing or two about how to respect your elders. Ugh, starting on the elder stuff already, huh? Shouldn't you be back in your cave tinkering away at some kite-related thingamabob or something? What brings you out here? And what's with that huge box next to you? Ah! Paimon gets it. You're here to do some shopping, aren't you? And what of it? The Qixing's decision to integrate Fontanian technology into said kite-flying competition is of no consequence to oneself. Did you expect one to willfully compete against the whimsical trends of worldly sentiment, or perhaps even fall to petty sulking over such? Um, it's not that we think those things exactly. That's just what Mountain Shaper and Mooncarver told us, or Tia something and oh Paimon can't be bothered to remember what their aliases were called anyway they went to Liyue Harbor to look for you they even asked us to pass along their regards if we ran into you oh huh Tian Yun? Huh. Oh, it appears time has quite flown since one's arrival in Liyue Harbor how could one have forgotten about those two old fossils? <sighs> one shall have to bring them back some divine herbs to atone for this slight. Nay, given that one has ventured all this way to Yilong Wharf, tea would be more advisable. A great thought has illuminated one's mind once again. One is reminded that certain purchases have yet to be made. Perhaps you two could wait here whilst one performs this task. It'll be but a moment. Huh? Wait, here? You really just gonna ditch us here to watch your stuff? Oh, that woman really just does whatever she wants. Hey, not you too, Traveler! Oh, all this time on ditching is super not appreciated. Oh, uh, just come back soon, okay? I don't want anyone to try and steal the stuff! Welcome! Please have a look around. We only sell teas of the finest quality, sourced directly from Chaoying Village. Might I recommend the Songlo variety? It's one of our specialties. Now, that sounds promising. One will bring some back for those old fossils, and all will be well. Two boxes will do. Wonderful. By the way, we're actually running a special Lantern Rite promotion. Buy three boxes, get 10% off. Four boxes will net you 20% off. Hmm. 20% off four boxes. This merchant strikes a fair bargain. One might as well give some to Morax and Ping, too. Then four shall suffice. Hmm, I see. Are you intending to give these as gifts? If so, perhaps I can interest you in these exquisite gift sets. Buy ten, get half off. Look at the magnificent design. And the red ribbon gives quite the festive flair, don't you think? Such a gift would be sure to impress any lucky friend or family member. Hmm, ten boxes. Seems rather excessive. But if one factors in the conqueror of demons and one's disciples... Hmm... Ten! A nice round number, don't you think? Of course you do. I'll even shave a little extra off the price for you. 
That is agreeable. One will, um, I will have these boxed up then. Of course, of course, right away. I see you have quite the eye for fine items, mademoiselle. Perhaps some of my wares might also be of interest to you. I'm a toy merchant from Fontaine. You'll get nothing but the finest and most intricate clockwork toys Mora can buy here. Each one sure to be a source of endless amusement. Hmm. Perhaps you could enlighten me then. When should said amusement be derived? Well, uh, that is, of course, best understood by playing with them yourself. If you could wait just a moment, I can bring one out and give you a demonstration. <laughs> there is no need for that. Uh, mademoiselle. Give me your newest and finest model, and be sure to package it securely. Ah, of course. Here you go. The instruction manual is... I can do without. Thank you. Oh, many watchful eyes surround this place. If one were to be spotted purchasing a mechanical toy such as this, a child's plaything no less, it would only invite scandal. There is no harm in bringing it back to study in secret. Oh, Xianyang! Did your shopping go smoothly? <sighs> Naturally. One may not delight in social interactions, but that does not mean one lacks sent faculties. And you too? Are you not here to purchase things? We just haven't had time yet. It doesn't look like there are any kite stalls around Elong Wharf, but it does look like there are lots of goods from Fontaine. You are also planning to participate in the kite flying competition then? <clears throat> One means to say, you along with all the other youths. One has been entreated to share one's kite-making expertise, and indeed there was little one could do about such persistent supplication. One moment energetic and earnest, and dejected the next. One had no choice but to acquiesce to these requests, and thus, one will be organizing a kite-making workshop to provide personal instruction in this art form. Oh, who will be participating then? Shu Yu, Shenhe, Ganyu, and Yayo. Wow, that's quite a few people. Also, this is all pretty well, Xianyun, but it's not like you have to make your own kite to participate in the competition. You can just buy one ready made and call it a day. Ha! Huh. You speak of those equipped with the mechanical lifting device, do you not? Ah, oh, tis nothing but a crude piece of mortal machinery. The mechanism that one has developed was the fruit of millennia, of meticulous study. Let us not speak of the source of the mechanism's power, but rather its structure. It is composed of materials as light as bamboo and as strong as iron. This composition grants it the lightness of weight to ascend into the sky and the durability to follow the wind for many a mile. It is built with a series of intersecting rods that... <sighs> Never mind. It is unlikely the two of you will understand, even should one expend the effort to explain. One is better off saving one's breath. It sure seems like you want to talk about it, though. So... Will you be attending the workshop or not? Huh? Wait, you've been trying to invite us this entire time? All right then. No need to prepare the materials in any case. One has it all sorted. Arrive at Mount Outsong in two days. I shall be expecting you around midday. Are you leaving? Don't you want a guard to help you with that big box of yours? 
surely you jest. One goes as one pleases. For what reason would one need to rely on another? Uh, it can float? What kind of invention is that? One calls it the floating toting device. She seems pretty proud of that one. Look at her walk down the street. She seems so confident. But everyone around her is looking at her all funny. Paimon wonders... Uh, never mind. But anyway, that box of hers seems to be full of those mechanical lifty thingamabobs. Uh, not that Paimon was peeking or anything. She just... Uh... Got a bit unsteady for a second and accidentally brushed the embroidery on top. And wouldn't you know it, all the stuff inside almost came bursting out. Paimon even went out of her way to keep it all together. All Paimon say is that Xian Yun sure does try hard to save face. What did she call it again? A crude piece of mortal machinery? Paimon bet she just can't wait to take it apart and see how it's made. Totally. We should probably act like we didn't see anything, though. You know, in consideration of her feelings and all. After all, that is the propriety with which one should comport oneself. When it comes to an elder, right? Paimon has never had dim sum at Shinyue kiosk before, but it should be quite the feast for sure. Ooh, and that's Paimon's stomach right on cue telling her it's time to go find Gaoming. Let's go! Oh, you're here early. I just ordered. The food should be out in a second. Uh, sit down, sit down. Let's all take a seat. Here, hand me your cuffs. You. Wait, uh, uh, you weren't supposed to drink that, Paimon. That was for you to rinse your utensils. Uh, that's a thing? Wow, so much delicious food! Do you really eat all this just for breakfast? <laughs> That's just how we do it where I'm from. Most of the time, though, I don't eat lunch after dim sum. Oh, that's good to hear. Paimon doesn't need to worry about holding back, then. Eat, eat. If it's not enough, we can always order more. Oh, and there's tongsoi coming as well. I don't usually have that in the morning, but, well, since everyone's here, I just had to order it. What about you, traveler? Is the food to your liking? Uh, want some more seafood kanji? Let me refill your bowl. Paimon's gonna take you up on that. Fill it up nice and full and make sure she gets a few extra shrimp. Thanks! <sighs> so full. That meal was so satisfying, it even gave Paimon some extra brain juice. Oh, listen, listen! Paimon's figured it out. Let's think about this for a second, Gaming. You invited us to this awesome restaurant and ordered a whole table full of expensive dim sum just for the three of us. Well, you must be hiding the fact that you're some young master from a rich family! That would explain why you try to keep your friends and family away from each other! <laughs> Are you confusing me with Xingqiu? You sure know a lot of people. Hmm. Well, when you're on the road as much as I am, you hear all sorts of rumors. Sometimes they're true, sometimes they're not. What it comes down to is being able to tell the difference. More often than not, that means knocking on some doors to find out for yourself. Oh, you truly are a man of many talents, young Master Gaming. Okay, okay, enough with the teasing. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble, Paimon, but... 
You're wrong about my family situation. What? Oh, Paimon thought she was onto something there. My dad is just an ordinary tea merchant. Small scale stuff, you know? It wouldn't even make sense to mention his business in the same breath as the Feiyun Commerce Guild. My dad... He always wanted me to inherit the family business. To be a merchant like him. But that's just not who I am. It's not who I ever wanted to be. Have you ever talked to him about it? You know, about your interests and aspirations and stuff. Of course I have. I, I told him I wanted to be a wushou dancer. That I wanted all of Tavat to see what I could do. According to my dad, though, that wasn't a real job. Just a child's pipe dream. Oh, that's terrible! I'm sure he thought I would come around eventually, but... Wushou dancing has always been the only thing I wanted to do. One day, he tried to get me to visit some other tea merchants to start building the right relationships, but... I refused to go. We got into a huge fight. We, we were this close to throwing hands. In the end, I was so angry that I, I ran away from home. I haven't been back since. Uh, don't get on my case just yet, okay? It's not like I think I'm completely without fault. No, I know that it wasn't the right way to go about things. But my dad's stubborn. No matter how hard I tried to convince him, it just went in one ear and out the other. There was no changing his mind. I knew talking would only get me so far, but if I made it big in Liyue Harbor, the results could speak for themselves. Coming. But I'm sure you both already know how that's going. Wushou dancing's just not that big in Liyue Harbor. In the past, I would go door to door from store to store, asking if they would be interested in hiring a performer. Most times, I wound up eating nothing but humble pie. <laughs> and you can't just rely on dreams to put food on the table, right? So, I found a job as a guard to make some money. And now I have enough to get by and then some. Still, change takes time. Gotta take it slow, you know? Paimon understands. Okay, enough of all that serious talk. Our tea's getting cold. Ooh, let's do something fun this afternoon. What do you say, huh? I'll organize. Actually, we kinda already have plans this afternoon. We told Tian Yun that we would go to her kite-making workshop. Oh? Are you interested in kite-making, Gaming? Oh, no. It's just that I happen to know Auntie Tian Yun. That title certainly humanizes her a bit. Oh, I know that she's an adeptus. I met her during a delivery once. But hasn't she been in the city lately? She's even tried, with some limited success, to change her terms of self-address or something like that. She came to see me a few days ago to ask about luminescent dyes. Oh, wait a second. She doesn't plan on putting those on a kite, does she? Is that not something you can do? It's one thing to use it on cloth, but applying it to paper is another matter entirely. Why couldn't she tell me what she wanted them for? Yeah, she does seem to have trouble with that sometimes. It would be such a shame if everyone worked so hard on their kites only for them to get ruined in the end. Okay, I'll go with you. If Auntie Xian Yun wants to use those dyes in a kite, the formula will need to be changed. Great! The more the merrier! have some mint oil. Perhaps we should try that. A guest at Wanmin restaurant recommended it to me. I've tried it. Its stimulative effects are much stronger than what can be achieved from chewing on mint leaves alone. 
<laughs> hmm. Apologies in advance. It worked. She's awake. Uh, are you okay, Ganyu? Do you need some water? Or, or maybe something to eat? I... I'm fine. I just feel... chilly all over. <laughs> huh. Was it that effective? Chilly, huh? Mm. The master always says, a cool head leads to a calm heart. So, does this mean that heat's what we need to help you, Ganyu? Uh, Pilot doesn't think that's what the expression means exactly. Huh. <sighs> I... I feel a bit better now. Was I asleep? Must have been around the time I usually take my midday nap. Did you not sleep last night? That does seem to happen to you often. Hmm, perhaps you should come work at Wanmin Restaurant with me. We get off at 10 on the dot every night without fail. I... I could never... I'm sorry, I seem to have missed your name. You are... <laughs> me? My name is Gaming. I work as a guard for the Secure Transport Agency. Gaming... The name sounds familiar. I believe I've heard your name mentioned around the Ministry of Civil Affairs. People tell me you're an extremely enthusiastic worker, and you are very generous with your help. Uh, well, you know me. <laughs> or, uh, I guess you don't. <laughs> My name is Ganyu. This is Shenha, and this is Yao Yao. It's an honor to finally meet you all. Oh, you must be here for Auntie Xianyun's kite-making workshop, right? Yes. I have neither made nor flown a kite before. As long as Master is willing to teach, I am willing to learn. Me too! I want to participate in the kite-flying competition with my best friend! Plus, it's more meaningful if you make the kite yourself, right? Your best friend didn't come with you? Well, Chi-Chi's been super busy helping Dr. Baiju lately. I'll meet up with her later and give her a huge surprise! Oh, I also brought bandages and ointment with me today. It's easy to cut yourself when working with bamboo, so I thought I should come prepared. Wow, you're really thoughtful. As for myself, I'm afraid I lack some of my companion's enthusiasm. I was originally planning to buy a ready-made kite and just enjoy the festive city atmosphere with everyone. But Cloud Retainer is always going out of her way to look after her juniors, wanting us to have the best there is. She always puts us before herself. Huh. It was so thoughtful of her to arrange this workshop, so I simply couldn't let such consideration go to waste. My motivation for being here might be a little different, yes. But I'm ready to put in just as much effort as everyone else. Well, we're all here. But where the heck is Xin Yun? Shouldn't she be here by now? Who is it that speaks of oneself in such an ill-tempered tone? Oh, come on! You clearly heard Paimon! Master stopped to buy grilled tiger fish to share with everyone. Come get it while it's still warm. Oh, Paimon, sorry, Miss Illuminated Bird! Paimon always knew you were the smartest, coolest, and prettiest adeptus. Someone as wonderful as you is sure to have brought enough for Paimon as well, right? It appears that we've ended up with quite a few participants indeed. 
go ahead and divide yourselves into small groups. The materials are over here. The regular dyes and luminescent ones have been clearly marked. Use them as you see fit. As for how to make the kite, one assumes you all made sure to listen to the instructions one provided while we were eating, yes? Are there any questions? Paimon may have focused a little too hard on the eating and less on the listening. Paimon knew she could count on you, Traveler! One will wait under this tree and avail oneself of the cool air while one digests. Do not hesitate to seek one's company if you have any trouble, questions, or simply want to chat. We're not in any hurry to get started. Why don't we go see what the others are up to? Hey, Kaming! Want to team up? Huh? I have to participate? I thought I'd be done for the day after adjusting the dye formula. You're that unenthused by kite making, huh? That doesn't seem like you. No, it's not that. It's just. Uh, it would take too long to explain. I guess I'll just make one then. Hmm. What shape should we go with? How about a butterfly? What do you think, Shuyu? Is there a particular design you want? I want a swanny! Uh, that might be a little hard to pull off. True, but I still want to try. They're super cute! <laughs> okay, it's decided then. Um, Shenhe, it would be great if you could refrain from putting things on my horns from now on. They're really quite sensitive. I see. My apologies. I shall remember that in the future. Thank you. No harm done. Good. Could I touch them just once more, though? No oil or anything this time. I've just always wondered what Miss Ganyu's horns feel like. Huh? Please, I told you. Just call me Ganyu. <sighs> well, all right. Just be gentle. Hmm. Firm to the touch with no discernible temperature. Oh, not unlike certain medicinal plants I've eaten before. Oh, still, Ganyu appears to be shaking like a cat whose whiskers have just been touched. I should stop. Uh... Oh, I see. Then I'll apply the oil to your forehead next time. Oh, no need. I'll just... refrain from taking afternoon naps outdoors. <coughs> anyway, we should probably get started on our kite. It won't be long before Cloud Retainer comes to check on our progress. Perhaps... Perhaps we should just choose the most traditional style. Okay. Well, they seem to be getting along swimmingly. Let's not disturb them. The scissor-tailed swallow sure takes a lot of curved bamboo rods to build. Ugh! It broke. <laughs> Auntie Cloud Retainer, look! Am I doing it right? Hmm, very good. Your frame is nice and sturdy. This design, is it a finch? <laughs> yep. <laughs> One is looking forward to seeing your finished product. What color are you going to make it, Yao Yao? Um, I haven't decided yet. If I make it blue, it'll be more like my friend. But if I make it gold, it'll be more like me. If you are asking for one's own opinion, one would advise choosing gold. When giving a gift, the key consideration is the recipient's feelings, is it not? One imagines your friend would much prefer a kite that reminds them of you. Oh, hey! 
Hey, I never told you the kite was for Chi-Chi. How did you know? With age comes wisdom, child. One simply has a way of knowing things. Oh, cool! <laughs> Thanks, Auntie Cloud Retainer. I'm gonna start painting it gold right now! Good. One will watch. You two seem strangely unoccupied. One was under the impression that one was supposed to be doing the relaxing. Is your kite finished? Oh, we actually haven't started yet, but we're going to start uh, right now! <laughs> Once I get better at making kites, I'm going to make one shaped like Uruguay. You gave him to me, and he's just the best. <laughs> one is pleased that you like the gift. Coming! Can I do the coloring? <laughs> sure. I'll go ahead and make the frame for you. The scissor-tailed swallow sure takes a lot of curved bamboo rods to build. Ugh! It broke. First, we have to decide on the shape. Hey, what are you laughing at? That's not a completely crazy idea. If nothing else, a paimon-shaped kite could at least make sure you never get lost on your travels and always find the tastiest food and funnest things to do wherever you go. Maybe we're not exercising enough artistic license. Ooh, we should exaggerate this a bit. How about this? The word paimon means the guardian angel of travelers. should we give her, since the kite is going to be flying super high in the sky? Oh, Paimon totally didn't do anything wrong. And even if she did, she doesn't deserve to get shot up into the sky for it. Something like this, then. Now that we've decided, let's make it happen! Gather around, everyone. Oh! Shenyun's calling us! Hmm. Let one take a look. a lot like Master. If the tail wasn't split in two like that, it might even be a spitting image. Uh, if you look closely, there are a few spots where the colors go outside the lines. Did you doze off while painting it, Ganyu? I did the painting. I stared at the paper for quite some time, but I simply could not recall the coloring of any bird. <laughs> Except Master. Or should I say that I'm too familiar with her crane form? Even when she stands before us in human form, all I can see is blue and white. Oh! Well, now that you mention it, Paimon can see it too! Exactly. So I simply closed my eyes and painted from memory. No way! You can paint with your eyes closed? Wow, the Disciples of Adepti really are something. 
You are most filial, Shen He. One is flattered by the likeness. The swanee that Gao Ming and Xu Yu made looks very majestic. I'm sure it'll look even more impressive as it soars through the sky. The eyes and ears glow in the dark, so you're sure to see it at night. Your golden finch is cute too, Yao Yao. <laughs> it's all thanks to Auntie Cloud Retainer's guidance. What about your kite, Traveler? Very Paimon-like indeed. Oh, why do you say that, Shen, huh? That one time the Traveler suspected that a piece of meat was missing from their bowl. That was the exact expression on your face. Eh. Is that something that happened? Is that... the Jade Chamber? Oh? Dares attempt such a flagrant display of impropriety by releasing a kite into one's territory without one's permission. Oh, and to do so by making use of this crude piece of mortal machinery. Oh, one simply must know who it is that possesses such impertinence. Continue attaching the strings, everyone. One will be but a moment. Cloud Retainer? Traveler, Paimon, could I trouble you to go after Cloud Retainer? Master's going to be okay, right? I'm more worried about the person who released the kite. There's wind up ahead! Looks like we can glide over! This Fontanian device of mechanical motion is quite curious indeed. Now is hardly an opportune time for your musings. Someone among us was not sufficiently attentive, and now the kite has vanished. Calm yourself. Do you have any recollection of its last location? One believes it drifted in the direction of Mount Outsong. Perhaps it is mere happenstance, but one feels a certain sense of dread at the thought. Your concern is misplaced, surely. Cloud Retainer is either in the city looking after her disciples, or secluded in her abode attending to her research. She will not notice that kite. On the subject of said kite, however, one simply must remark on the genius of its windless lift technology. One cannot help but surmise that its ingenuity rivals that of Cloud Retainer's creations. Still thy tongue. If Cloud Retainer were to hear you profess such a thing, we can both say farewell to any further use of the Supreme Cuisine Machine. One presumes that this kite belongs to you. Huh? Regard the situation with which we are now confronted. This is all your fault. One's fault? One seems to recall that releasing the kite was no solitary endeavor. Say something, Mountain Shaper. Surely you can think of something to appease her? Further explanation shall only fan the flames of her wrath. It would be better to stay silent and retire at the earliest opportunity. We can hardly avoid her forever. That may suffice during Lantern Rite, but what about the Moon Chase Festival? Sooner or later, she will discover our true identity. <sighs> Hello? Go retrieve the kite! Absolutely not! You retrieve it! That is not our kite! 
Oh, so an adeptus such as oneself is mistaken then? Ah, you're an adeptus? Please forgive us for any impropriety. I truly possess no inkling of who could have released a kite into your esteemed domain. Pray, who could be responsible for such wanton behavior? Verily, verily, we were but delighting in the surrounding scenery. This locale is home to such exquisite... Uh, ah, mint! Well, and if that's all, then we'll just be on our way. Huh. We finally caught up. You sure do fly fast in your illuminated bird form, Tianyin. Moon Carver? Mountain Sheeper? What are you doing here? You! Okay, now Paimon's getting a weird vibe. Did she say something wrong? It is of no consequence. Long has one seen through their disguises. One was simply curious as to how long they would keep up the act. Then you are not angry? Hm. How could one feel anger at the sight of two old friends enjoying themselves? One is also well aware of how enticing these city novelties can be. <sighs> we were simply consumed by a fit of festive spirit. Seldom do we get the opportunity to partake in the delights of the times. However, we are far from being as adept as you in matters that require a deftness of hand. No worthy kite could be born of our own making. Thus, we could only take the convenient route, so to speak. Your prowess in mechanics is unparalleled, Cloud Retainer. You wield the wind and waves themselves. Your singular talent stands unmatched across the land. Of this, we are well aware. <sighs> One has guests to attend to. We will have to convene again some other time. Traveler, Paimon, do try to keep up. We're leaving already? Oh, all this flying from place to place is wearing Paimon out. It seems that one's concern was misplaced after all. Then, should we continue flying the kite? A splendid suggestion, but it would be advisable to change locations. Perhaps your mountain would suffice? It is more than spacious enough. A fine idea. A fine idea indeed. They're back. <gasps> Paimon's pooped. Uh, hi. Why are there only two of you left? After you left, Yao Yao and Shu Yu tired themselves out playing with their kites. Gao Ming offered to escort them home. Before he left, he said something that I don't quite understand. Oh? What did he say? He said, A kite is always tied down no matter how far it flies or how high it soars. Its tether prevents it from ever truly flying free. He looked quite dejected as he said this. Now that you mention it, Gaming did seem to have a rather strange attitude towards kites. A reflection of himself. Oh... <sighs> If I were a kite, I would cherish that tether as a symbol of kinship and the bonds that tie us and... Shenha? <sighs> it may be an exceedingly slim and distant connection, but lose it, and you lose that which links you to home. If Gaming truly sees a kite as a reflection of himself... <sighs> then I fear I understand his words even less. Well, people often have different points of view depending on their mindset and experiences, right? It's actually quite normal. Just like some people can eat spicy food, but others won't go anywhere near it? 
Exactly. That's why tolerance and understanding are as important as they are. Uh, tolerance and understanding? What brought about this conversation? Did one miss something? We were just chatting. You don't have to butt in on every little thing, you know. Where were you anyway? Hmm. One was merely doing a bit of cooking. Night fast approaches. If you are otherwise unoccupied, one would entreat you to stay and eat before you depart. Oh, it's been so long since I've had the chance to enjoy your cooking, Cloud Retainer. Uh... Worry not. One has prepared a variety of meat and vegetable dishes. One is more than familiar with everyone's culinary proclivities. Shenhe, Ganyu, come with me. Whoa, what's with all the secrecy? You're not trying to play favorites, are you? If you're ready to serve the food, we can help too. Brushing against my legs. This is a bit embarrassing. Is the headpiece secure? I should have asked Cloud Retainer to check before I stepped outside. How do we look? Huh? She asked them just like that? You look pretty too, Ganyu! Oh, how should Paimon put it? Uh, you both look so elegant and refined! Those outfits really suit you both! Given that one employed the services of the best tailor in all of Liyue, one would expect nothing less. What colors have you been partial to lately, Shenhe and Ganyu? Lately? Why is Cloud Retainer suddenly asking about what colors we like? I like black. One is gratified to see one's disciple has inherited one's own tastes. The color black doesn't get dirty easily. A virtue I've come to value recently. And you, Ganyu? I favor blue and black. And the material is sufficiently comfortable, yes? Yes, very. I simply cannot thank you enough, Cloud Retainer. For this gift. And the kite, too. Thank you, Master. One is content, as long as you are pleased with the gift. One hopes these garments will see much use. Seems like your supreme cuisine machine is just getting better! Golden crab's particularly good. The shell's deliciously crunchy, and the meat inside is so succulent and sweet! <laughs> Paimon can't stop eating! It's a good thing Ga Ming isn't here, or Paimon would have to duel him for the food. You know, with chopsticks! He traveled all this way on account of the kite-making workshop, and he spent the whole afternoon looking after Shu Yu. One was hoping to treat him to a meal. <sighs> oh, well. One will just have to extend one's thanks in person. It's rare for someone to make such a good impression on you, Cloud Retainer. Huh. One has high standards. He appears to be a young man of much merit, and one is not the type who would see such potential squandered. It appears that he wishes to break free from the kite string that tethers him. Kite string? Huh. What strange metaphors you speak in, Shenhe. Ever since you returned from one mean restaurant, your turns of phrase render one at quite the loss. Where do we even begin? Oh, do you know about the conflict between Ga Ming and his dad, Xin Yun? One has only heard that the two are not on good terms. He ran away from home and hasn't been back since. Oh? Ran away, you say? Oh. 
One believes we would all benefit from a more thorough retelling. Start from the beginning. Oh, okay. Paimon just hopes he won't mind. What? This shall not do. Lantern right fast approaches. We must make haste. As one was contacting various tailors around Liyue, one could not help but be reminded of Minogius. He possessed a singular talent for clothing design. He had an exquisite eye, not just for fabric selection and color pairing, but also for what accessories could best accentuate a garment's overall styling. At a gathering of Adepti, Bonanus once complained in secret to some of the ladies in attendance that the skirt Minogius made for her was too long and impractical, lamenting that it would only hinder her in battle. However, when one asked Minogius' opinion, he remarked that the train of the skirt would serve to enhance her adeptal countenance by exemplifying a certain elegance. Minogius was that type of person. When it came to topics relating to garments and accessories, not even Rex Lapis could best his stubbornness. And later... <clears throat> uh, one seems to have strayed off topic. One means to say that Lantern Rite should be a day of reunion. It is a time to address problems before they turn into regrets. Fate is fickle. The cruel reality of this world is that suffering and misfortune can befall any of us without design or reason. If there is a chance for young people to remain insulated from this reality, one should do one's utmost to make it so. That's nice and all, but... Do you have any ideas, Cloud Retainer? Hmm... Perhaps Adeptal Arts could be of use. Oh, no, no. Mechanics, perhaps. One fails to see its use in a situation such as this. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm... Combining our efforts is a fine idea indeed. Aha! One has an idea! How about this? Does that make sense to everyone? Yep! Oh, Paimon really hopes this works. Hmm. One's designs never fail. Now then, I counsel rest for all, and to make the necessary preparations. One shall see you in two days. put it like that, it makes it sound like I'm always the one losing. Ah, perfect, you're all here. Uh, there's an important commission I need your help with. Alright, I've got the time. Where are the goods? Uh, it's not just goods this time. I need you to escort a tea merchant and their wares from Chaoying Village to Liyue Harbor. A very important client has requested to meet with him. Sure. Uh, what's this merchant's address? We're here. If the client's that important, then this must be a very crucial, very pressing commission, right? Um, of course, the sooner you complete it, the better. I would advise you to depart as soon as possible. <laughs> All right, um, don't work too hard now, Longjo. We'll set off then. Yeah. 
bit quiet today, Gaming. Oh, do you want Paimon to tell a story? Uh, we're almost there. I'll take a rain check on that. Heading to Liyue Harbor. We're here to escort you. <sighs> Dad? <sighs> oh, so you're Gaming's father. It's nice to meet you. Just leave this delivery to him. Trust Paimon, he's got this in the bag. Gaming is super good at what he does. Everyone at the Secure Transport Agency says as much. Even the Ministry of Civil Affairs has nothing but good things to say about him. Seems like you've made some sort of name for yourself at least. <sighs> the... the goods are all in order? Yes, they're all here. Then let's get going. <clears throat> uh, a very important client has asked for you by name. You kind of have to come with us. Paimon doesn't know how we would explain ourselves if you just didn't show up. Plus, you'd be missing out on a huge money-making opportunity. I see. I suppose I will have to trouble you all to escort me, then. Let's go. I'm fine. Uh... Gaming! Don't you usually have some delicious snacks on you? Come on, bring them out so we can share them! I'm fine. Thank you. Uh... But the winter melon cake he gave us last time was so delicious. Have you ever tried it before, Mr. Ip? <sighs> Paimon... This place looks nice and open. Why don't you all rest here for a second? Huh? What about you? You're not going to join us? I'm not tired. I'll keep watch. Oh, but... Just let him go. Ourselves, then. Did you know, Uncle Ip, that the flavor of these cakes changes depending on... Halt! Who goes there? It appears that one's movements were overly conspicuous. Enough of your musings. Focus. Focus on the matter at hand. Present your exquisite ornaments at once. Indeed. Bring them forth readily and without protest. Ah! What do we do? It seems as if these two are acting alone. It won't be difficult to subdue them, but they might have something else waiting in store for Dad. The best way to keep him safe is... Leave this to me. I'll handle them. Traveler, Paimon, take my dad and the goods away from here. No, Gaming. It's too dangerous! This is what I do! A thorny foe indeed! Let us depart and seek a target softer in blows and disposition. Uh-uh! Don't think I'm gonna let you off so easily! Away! Let us away! Coming! Don't worry, he's a great fighter! Paimon's even seen him take down a dozen or so treasure hoarders all by himself! But coming, I... <sighs> if he had just stayed by my side and learned a family trade, he wouldn't have to put himself in such dangerous situations. We just have to trust him! Let's go on ahead! 
We'd best get away from here, in case there are other bandits in the area waiting in ambush. All is going to plan. Okay, we should be good to stop here. Young Lee? Oh no, what is he doing here? Good sir, please listen to me. Reel in your line and leave this place as quickly as you can. There are bandits in the area. Bandits? Acting in broad daylight? <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, I see. It appears many people are catching a chill as of late. If your throat is bothering you, Paimon, perhaps some tea and rest are in order. If there are indeed bandits in the area, then we should inform the Millilith at once. Oh? Well, if that's the case. Such matters are best left to those with the necessary expertise, wouldn't you agree? <sighs> I suppose you're right. If ordinary people like us got involved, we would only cause more trouble. Since we find ourselves otherwise unoccupied in this beautiful area, why don't we find a quiet place to relax while we wait for good news? Hmm... That would be lovely. So, uh, Uncle Ip does have a reason to be worried. After all, Ga Ming, the guard we mentioned, is his son. Ga Ming... The name sounds somewhat familiar. Ah, yes. That is the name of the Usho dancer who has been performing around Liyue Harbor recently, is it not? Oh, have you seen him perform? Indeed. I cannot help but admire his skill. He truly encapsulates the spirit of the Suani. Usho dancing has become more well known in Liyue Harbor recently. However, although performers are seeing budding success, they have no doubt had to face many hurdles along the way. One's not so easily understood by spectators such as ourselves. If you ask me, what truly deserves admiration is perseverance in the face of adversity. That is a rare attribute indeed. I have heard many of my acquaintances praise Gumming for his kind, selfless, and courageous disposition. To have a child so accomplished and upright, you must be a very proud parent indeed, Uncle Lip. Seems like Jean Li has decided to skip the formalities. Uh, well, he... He's a hard worker, yes. You should be sure to tell him you think that when he gets back. I... <sighs> Your son is young yet. It's normal for someone his age to be a bit... hot-headed. It's understandable to find talking about such things in person difficult. If there's a particular sentiment you wish to convey, perhaps we could pass it along for you. No, no. It wouldn't be right to ask that of you. <sighs> this thing between us has festered for many years now. In truth, there are some things that simply aren't easy for us to talk through. I've been in the tea business for most of my life, and I always hoped my child would do the same. Otherwise, how would he support himself? Over the past few years, I heard how well he was doing for himself as a guard. How his work was taking him to farther and farther off places. I also heard that he never gave up on wu-show dancing. It made me happy. But I was also worried. 
When you're young, you can handle all that physically taxing work and manual labor. What young person isn't capable of making a living that way? My concern is what happens when you get old. Every time I get to thinking like that, I cannot help but be reinforced in the belief that I was right. That I was right not to give in. I often regret introducing him to wushou dancing as a kid. If I had known how things would turn out, I would have never taken him to see those performances in the first place. It is only natural for a parent to strive to send their child down the right path. No one would begrudge you that sentiment, Uncle Ip. You need not worry. You seem quite young, Mr. Zhang Li. Yet you speak with such wisdom. Perhaps I have misjudged your age. <laughs> your words are too kind. Truth be told, one of my old friends has several grown daughters. Rather than fretting about their future, however, she prefers to let them find their own way. Then she is more easygoing than I could ever be. I fear I lack such an open mind. Uh, oh, I meant to say earlier, there is no need to be so polite. Uh, feel free to call me by my name, Ipdak. Sure. So, do you also think I fret too much, Mr. Zhongli? <sighs> That's not exactly what I was hoping to convey. Only a fool would ask a parent not to worry about their child. But think of it this way. Raising a child is not unlike flying a kite. Hold the string too tight, and it can no longer soar. As my friend once said, if your children are aiming for the stars, clipping their wings will only cause them to come crashing down. You need to let out the line for a kite to soar. <sighs> It seems I was too stuck in my ways. You need not reproach your heart for caring. You simply need to loosen your hold a little. Indeed, with such a big heart, why not allocate the time you usually spend worrying about Gaming to the pursuit of other things? Like going for a stroll, drinking tea, or taking in the scenery. You never know what surprises could be in store. Things can change in the blink of an eye. <laughs> the blink of an eye, you say. Do things change so quickly? Children grow up in quite the same way, do they not? Day after day, year after year, sometimes in the blink of an eye, but always when you least expect it. As a father, I'm sure you know that best. <laughs> yes, you can say that again. One second, Gaming was a kid. The next thing I knew, he was ready to fly the nest. Xiang Li certainly has a way with words. Oh, Gaming is back! Hey, Gaming, we're over here! Dad, Traveler, Paimon. Good, you're all here. Oh, and Mr. Zhong Li from the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor? You're here too? <laughs> A fated meeting indeed. We were just enjoying some pleasant conversation. Uh, <clears throat> Is everything resolved? Well, you could say that. What does that mean? Traveler, Paimon, come with me. I need to talk to you. Hmm. Huh? Oh, okay. I'll come right out and say it. Those two bandits, you sent them, didn't you? Can't look me in the eye, huh? Guess I'm right then. Okay, but how did you know? At first, their mannerisms seemed a bit stilted. 
but once I got close, it was obvious that they possessed great skills. I was right on their tail, and it should have taken only a few steps to catch up to them, yet somehow, I was never able to close that distance. People with that level of skill would have gone about things differently from the start, like sneaking up on us while we were distracted. Unless, of course, their real motive was to lure me away from the group all along. Wow, you're pretty quick on the uptake. <sighs> I just have a lot of experience. I've dealt with many a ruthless bandit in my time, but I've never seen ones like them. In the end, I told them they would make good guards if they ever wanted to get back on the straight and narrow, and that they could hang out with me and Lee Yu a harbor anytime. Uh, you ever consider you might be a little too good at making friends? I'm guessing you guys were trying to help resolve things between my dad and me? <sighs> I appreciate it, I, I really do. But this conflict between us has been going on for a long time. Even if those two were real bandits, and I was able to subdue them and show them what I was capable of, it, it wouldn't change anything. You've seen the way he talks to me. It's not like that at all! Your dad really cares about you. You should see the way he talks about you when you're not around. Zhang Li was talking things through with him, and he nearly agreed to let it go. <sighs> you don't believe us? He won't let it go. He can say as much as he wants to other people, but he won't talk to me. I'm certain of it. <sighs> you told us you wanted to prove yourself to your dad. Why don't you tell him about all the hard work you've done these past few years? Will that even do anything? I'm not sure talking is enough. You won't know unless you try. Just like how you won't know if something is delicious unless you taste it. Listen to us. It's time to put these people skills to good use. You can make friends with anyone, so why not your dad? <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> you are very knowledgeable, Mr. Zhongli. I'm impressed. Despite my being in the tea industry for several decades, it seems, I still have much to learn about the art of tea tasting. You flatter me. It was nothing but a few humble musings. How much tea have you drank since we've been gone? <laughs> Ip Doc and I have found many a common interest. Our friendship, much like a cup of tea, seems to grow stronger the longer it has to steep. Well said, Mr. Zhongli. Gaming, Mr. Zhongli is very knowledgeable. You should take the opportunity to learn from people like him when you're in the city. Huh? Oh, uh, of course. Ahem. <clears throat> Zhongli? I have very much enjoyed our conversation, Ipdak, but I... Unfortunately, have some unfinished funeral parlor business to attend to. Oh, I, I hope I didn't keep you. My apologies for taking up so much of your time, Mr. Zhongli. No need to stay on my account. When you're less busy, let's find a time to meet. I'll treat you to dim sum. It would be an honor. You two have a nice chat, all right? Thanks for helping us talk things through with Uncle Ip. Good thing you were able to pick up on what we were putting down. I have been around the both of you for some time now. You could say I have a certain level of expertise in that regard. As for my role in the conversation, think nothing of it. I hardly did anything noteworthy. <laughs> you never change, do you? Uh, why did you have us walk all this way? Paimon thought we just had to go far enough to be out of earshot. A friend approaches. Hello. So, you're here too? I've been here the whole time.
A ghostly kite. Could that elusive director Hu be coming to Wangshu Inn once again? What is she doing here? I suppose it matters not. Given her relationship with Rex, well, Zhongli, I might as well go pay my respects. Huh. It's you! I thought you were Director Hu. Ah, your arrival is most fortuitous. Do you want to try out this new gadget? The addition of the power source makes the takeoff more stable. It's just that... He seems quite immersed in the study of this device. I fear it's almost too stable. It completely negates the pleasure of seeing one's kite sway with the wind. It's a bit of a shame. In truth, I'm here because Director Hu dispatched me to purchase some items in preparation for Lantern Rite. I see. Much like she does every year. Much like she'll do next year, I would imagine. Hmm. Ugh. Am I wrong? Or has she once again sent you out to buy... What is it? Sesame oil or something? While we're on the subject, I do wonder why she is so obsessed with using sesame oil in the preparation of mixed vegetable dishes for Lantern Rite. A recommendation from Shang Ling, perhaps. What do you think, Xiao? I've only met Director Hu a few times. I'm hardly the best person to ask. Ah, and is that not a sign that you should visit Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor more often? It wouldn't hurt to grace the parlor with your presence now and again, when you are otherwise unoccupied. This one here is a traditional kite, one without any equipped mechanical device. Director Hu tasked me with studying the differences between the two to determine which one is of greater merit. Many hands make light work. Perhaps you could test out the other kite for me? Alright. I have made my comparisons. If speed is what you're after, the mechanical kite is the better choice. Wonderful. I shall pass that information along to Director Hu. I'll leave these two kites with you. Perhaps you can find a few friends with which to partake in the activity. You might find it to be an enjoyable use of your time. Oh, uh, wait. Who enjoys kite flying? Well, I would imagine someone of your talent and wisdom is more than capable of finding out. So, you were testing out the kites for Hu Tao and even roped Xiao into doing it for you? Paimon didn't ask earlier because the situation was uh, awkward. I would hardly say I roped Xiao into anything. I simply sought the help of a friend. Besides, we did the testing together. Uh, seems like our pool of competitors is growing. Do you like kite flying, Xiao? I suppose I neither like nor dislike it. Although, watching a kite gradually ascend into the sky does bring me a certain peace of mind. Perhaps they're a bit like shell lanterns in that way. Hmm. Kite flying is also a pleasant form of relaxation. Have you ever thought about making a kite shell? Cloud Retainer taught us how. We can teach you if you want. There's no need. Minogius was the only Yaksha among us who had an interest in matters of ornamentation and design. When Lantern Rite is over, come find me near Pervasi's temple if you have the time. Mm. It's getting late. I should go inform Director Hu of our findings. How has she been, by the way? Be sure to say hi to her for us! The last time I spoke to her, she mentioned that she would be visiting Chaoying Village in a few days. If you have the time, perhaps you could also make the trip. If you happen to run into her, you can pass along your regards in person. We'll keep that in mind. Take care, Xiang Li. See you later! See you next time. Uh... <sighs> 
Garmin. Dad. Uh, uh, you can go first. I don't have anything to say. Then I'll go. I still don't want to leave Liyue Harbor. Oh. I can't say I support that decision, but... <sighs> hey, let me finish before you get all worked up. <sighs> sit, Shenhe, sit. You must be tired from your journey. Shall I pour you a cup of tea, or would you prefer something else to drink? No need, I'm not tired. They're gone, Master. Perfect. The time is nigh for us to make an appearance. Do you remember the plan one recounted to you? Yes, Master. We aim to give them a demonstration of familial love. So I'll have whatever you are having. All right. What are Auntie Xianyun and Shanha doing here? Just how many people are involved in this scheme? I suppose all I can do is just take a seat and see what happens. Perfect. I just so happened to have bought some Sunglo tea recently. It's quite the delectable variety. Or it would be if one has not been forced to drink it every day in the hopes of whittling down one's considerable stash. One has more than had one's fill already. Oh, forget it. Such thoughts detract from the present need to keep up the conversation. Has work been busy during the holiday season? Do you need my help with anything? Drunk guests can sometimes cause trouble. But I deal with them as you taught me. By pinning their heads against the table. Uh? Are Auntie Xianyun and Shanha serious right now? Oh dear. While one was busy orchestrating this act, one seems to have forgotten about Shunha's various eccentricities. Mm. What, what, uh, what I meant to ask was, have you made any new friends? We live so far from each other, it would be a great comfort to me to know you were surrounded by good companions. Huh. You already know of my past circumstances. Recently, I've been conversing with Guoba in the kitchen at night. Guoba can't talk, but his companionship is a comfort. <sighs> the poor child. Her one friend can't even talk. I guess... Maybe Gaming is not doing so bad after all. Perhaps I've been too hard on him. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Do you have any plans for today, Shenhe? How about we do something fun? That sounds about right. Take her to do something fun, and perhaps she'll loosen up a bit. Like we used to do when we would carry stones up and down the mountain from dawn until dusk, picking herbs to eat for dinner along the way? If that is what you ask of me, then that is what I shall do. Dad, uh, here, have some tea. Or, or no, wait, let's not have any just yet. <coughs> yeah. oh, I simply can't listen to that any longer. Coming. I'd like to finish what I was trying to say before. I don't support your decision to stay in Liyue Harbor, because living there is too hard on you. If you come home, there will be people to help you. I'm not saying we have to live under the same roof. I know our personalities are too similar to avoid butting heads. But you'll have your entire family around you. Your aunts, uncles, they'll all do whatever they can to help. You could get a less taxing job, and we could... We could grab dim sum together from time to time. Huh. I didn't know dim sum was such an important affair, Master. Shh. Just think about it, okay? You don't have to decide now. 
Dad really has changed a lot. He would never have said these things to me before. But I... Thank you, Dad. It's been long enough, don't you think? Oh, I'm unsure hopes they've made up by now. Oh, they're drinking tea in silence. That's not a good sign. Did Xianyun's plan not work after all? Uh, hey you two! Paimon's sorry we were gone for so long. We got to chatting with some friends and didn't realize how much time had passed. Perfect timing, actually. We seem to be just about done here. Yep, uh, let's go. I'll get the Vax. Gaming has grown a lot taller, hasn't he? <laughs> Master, did I say something wrong earlier? I tried to go along with your questions, but when I saw how you and that man reacted, I started to wonder. <sighs> Not at all. Certain unforeseen variables may have presented themselves along the way, but the outcome proved favorable. The plan was a success. Then I helped? Naturally. Your purity of spirit is one of your greatest strengths, Shenhe. You need not change who you are. You must be Mr. Ip! Thank you for coming all this way. My name is Charlotte, and I'm a reporter from Fontaine. You can find me writing for the Steambird. I invited you here not just to purchase your fine tea, but also with the hope that you might be willing to sit down for a short interview. What do you say? An interview? To advertise my teas? I suppose you could think of it that way. We Fontaineans are big tea drinkers, too. The Fontaine Market. Then, I'll need some time to adequately prepare. Perhaps we could sit down and discuss the questions you intend to ask in advance. Of course, of course! Please follow me! Is this person also involved in your plan? And here, I thought I had lots of connections. <sighs> I suppose I've been humbled. You sure know all kinds of cool and important people. Over here! Yoo-hoo! Over here! Uh-huh. What? Auntie Shenyun? She probably wants to talk about the next phase of the plan. Let's go while your dad is still distracted. I take it that all is going well? Don't worry, Shenyun. Everything is going according to plan. I knew it. I knew that was all an act earlier. Auntie Shenyun is really something. She was so determined to help me, she didn't even care about making herself and Shanka appear foolish in front of my family. She truly knows how to look out for others. I still have a lot to learn. As for the next step... Oh, no! What's wrong, Gaming? Don't tell me you're the ones footing the bill for all that tea. I can't let you do that. Fret not. Reimbursements will be made. Exactly! Think of it more as an investment, as Ningguang would say. We pulled together the Mora so that Charlotte could place the order. She's going to bring it back to the Steambird as a gift, as well as a sample of the regional specialty. Fontanians will probably fall in love with your dad's tea as soon as they lay their eyes on Charlotte's article. And once all the money from the new orders begin to roll in, getting our Mora back will be a piece of cake. Oh, okay. Business-related matters always seem to go over my head, but I refuse to let you all lose Mora on my behalf. I'll pay you back right now. We can talk about such matters at a later date. There are more important matters for you to consider at the moment. Are there not? Yes. 
I've been thinking about it the whole way here. I have an idea. But I'd hate to cause even more trouble for all of you. Hmm. That is for us to decide. Yeah! We're all friends here! Plus, we wouldn't be here if we didn't want to help, right? Just tell us about this idea of yours. Okay. Whew. So, it's like this. Since Xiao already tested out those kites for us, why don't we also go buy one of those mechanical thingamabobs or whatever they're called? We can attach it to our kite! Yeah! Skyward! Welcome back! I see you returned from your trip. I really do have to thank you for all your help from before. Thanks to you, my daughter was able to build a kite with her grandmother that very same day. She even wrote a long letter telling me how much she loved it. Oh, you should really be thanking Gaming, not us! Uh, I'll be sure to. And are you here to buy a kite? Please, take your pick. Device thingies from Fontaine. Do you sell them separately? Ah, yes. Here you go. Please, take it, free of charge. The directions are in the box. It's not hard to install at all. Um, it doesn't feel right for us to just take it. Well, nor would it feel right for me to take your Mora. <laughs> Good luck in the kite flying competition. I'll be rooting for you. All right, then. Thank you. It's done. Let's get down to business. Looks like we finished everything we needed to do. Let's find a good place and put this thing into the sky.
taken that many pictures already? Ugh, I need to load more film. That's okay? Thank you, little girl. Do you want us to walk you back? No need, no need. Master is waiting for me right over there. I suppose I'll go first this time. Okay. Your performance. I've seen many wushou dances in my time, but I've got to admit, what you pulled off there was breathtaking. Wow. I... I never thought I'd live to hear you say that. You're serious about doing this professionally? Absolutely. I, I know it'll be difficult, but... Then it doesn't matter. What I mean to say is, of course it'll be difficult. But if that's your decision, if that's your dream, then it doesn't matter how difficult it is. As long as you put in the work, then any obstacle can be overcome in time. Really, when I was young, I also... Actually, how about we save that story of my past for another time? All I really want to say is, I've changed my mind. And much like this kite, you also deserve to soar to new heights. Dad... Son... Son? I haven't heard that in a while. I bet you're wondering what's gotten into me, saying all this. Well, um... <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Anyway, I know I've never found the chance to say this before, but... <clears throat> to me, Gaming, you've always been a great kid. <laughs> all right, that's everything I've got. Did you have something you wanted to say, or...? <laughs> Seeing the two of them talk things through like this really gives Paimon a sense of accomplishment. <laughs> now go. Over there, 
Your friends are still waiting for you. Huh? But you came all this way. I'll be staying in Liyue Harbor for a bit longer. When you have time, we can grab dim sum together. Your treat, right? Dad, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> okay, then I'm off. See you soon. about. Hmm. I'd like to find and thank Auntie Xianyun, as well as everyone else who's helped me out. If everyone has time, maybe we could all get together and go fly a kite. Traveler. Being in the city isn't the only way for me to appreciate the lights and beauty of Lantern Rite. Look. Liyue Harbor lies just beyond this mountain. As long as I stand at this vantage point, I may freely behold the sights of all the kites slowly ascending into the sky. For me, that is enough. I invited you here because there is something I would like to do. I want to release a Shell Lantern, and I'd like you to be there for it. Yes. I apologize for its crude appearance. I have little skill in that regard. You are very kind, as usual. All right. It's time. Traveler. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, one may have won the kite flying competition, Yu Hung, but this prize should truly be reserved for another. You need not be so humble, Honored Adeptus. Among all the kites, yours was quite literally a cut above the rest. Please accept this prize. You deserve it. Besides, I'm quite certain we owe a fair share of the success of this year's Lantern Rite to you. If you insist, then one can hardly continue to refuse. However, there is another matter with which one would ask your assistance. Of course. Hmm. One would be much obliged if you could distribute this case of Sunglow tea among the Millilith on duty. The security of the festivities rests entirely on their shoulders, after all. One presumes they could always benefit from something to invigorate their spirits. <sighs> Cloud Retainer is so thoughtful and attentive to others' needs. I would expect nothing less of an esteemed adeptus such as herself. Understood. I'll get on that right away. <sighs> A fortuitous result indeed. One's tea surplus has hitherto resolved itself. I don't get it. Is something wrong, Shanha? Tell me. Perhaps I can help. 
The color black doesn't get dirty easily, so I thought this outfit would be acceptable to wear to work. But Xiang Ling told me it was inappropriate. But inappropriate? How? She probably just meant the outfit isn't suitable for that particular environment and occasion. But for a festival gathering with friends, a nighttime stroll, or an important banquet, your outfit is more than appropriate, Shenha. So you're saying it's only something I should wear in front of important people? <sighs> I suppose that's another way to think of it. some other time, too. The fun doesn't have to end today. Really? How about we do it during the day next time? That way, we can see the design better. When it flies super high up, it will look exactly like a real finch. Okay. Uh, can I take this kite to bed with me? <laughs> but of course. So, you're still a big fan of winter melon cake, then? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I guess you heard everything Paimon was saying, huh? <laughs> of course. She was talking about you. As your father, how could I not listen? Remember back when you were a kid, and you would sit on my shoulders to watch the Wuxiu dance? Oh. On our way back home, you would beg me to buy you some winter melon cake. We would only buy two at a time, but before long, we tried the winter melon cake from every vendor that street had to offer. There was also that one time you used your pocket money to treat me. Do you still remember? Yeah, I remember. That was the best winter melon cake I ever had. Let's go back sometime. The shop's still there, and I remember the way. My treat, just like before. Are you sure? Absolutely. Given your present countenance, one presumes you are missing some old friends again. One cannot help but be reminded of them. Pray speak. Unburden yourself of these sentiments. One simply wishes Monogius were alive to witness such peace alongside us. He was so skilled in matters of craftsmanship. Kite-making would scarcely prove to be a test of his capabilities. Were he yet amongst the living, he could have opened a kite stall. One is certain it would have been an establishment rich not only in profit, but also esteem. And if, as in the past, he were unable to involve himself in matters of the mortal realm, we could sell the kites in his stead. When we finished, we could bring him back wine and partake in drink and good company. Mooncarver. Those are now but fond moments in our memories. Indeed. The dead are gone, so as the representatives of the living. Let us take in the sights for a bit longer, if just for his sake. <laughs> Do you want to make a kite together? Together? Thank you. 
night was simply amazing. I'm not sure I'll be able to sleep tonight. Oh, that? Yeah, interesting story. It was invented by a guy from Fontaine. His name is Eildison. He's always tinkering away at some mechanism or another. He's even asked the Steambird to write about his inventions on more than one occasion. I believe I have a direct quote from him about this particular one. It, ah, yes, here it is. The device is powered entirely by mechanical components without the need for any additional energy source. Basically, it's a manually operated cranking device. How high it can fly entirely depends on how much force you can exert. Combining this invention with a kite. What a great idea, right? Oh, my conversation with Mr. Ip went really well. I've already sent the first draft of my article back to the Steambird. It's a piece that contains all the pertinent information while also telling a story. I'm quite proud of it. Oh, that reminds me. I should thank everyone who made this possible for me. Especially that spirited lady with those peculiar turns of phrase. Miss Shenyun was her name, right? It was all thanks to your connections and creativity. I would have never thought I'd be able to bring such a special gift back to Fontaine with me. This was my first time experiencing a foreign holiday in person. It was so exciting! The festive atmosphere, the contagious holiday spirit, the profound, storied cultural traditions steeped in symbolism. Oh, I almost forgot. Kuching even gave me a kite with a poem on it that she wrote herself. It goes, dreams are like paper kites. With them do our hopes take flight. Sailing high above the clouds, they yearn for something more profound. Yet try we may and try we might, a deeper truth waits in plain sight. Though we hang our hopes and skies abound, many joys lie on the ground. I want to include this poem in my special feature on Lantern Right. I'm sure a lot of people will love it. Yep, and happy Lantern Right to you. Oh, Kaiman almost forgot! Didn't Zhang Li say Hu Tao was also planning on spending some time in Chaoying Village? We didn't have anything else to do today, right? Why don't we go have a look around? Maybe we'll run into her. The mountain air is so refreshing! It makes Paimon feel like she can float around all day and never get tired! Cream! Gummies! Fuel fruit! Huh? Did you hear that? Sunshine! Blue skies! Good vibes! Right? So Paimon wasn't just hearing things. Hmm, that voice sounds really familiar. Well, we've got the time. Why don't we go check it out? My dear partners. See, I told you that something good was going to happen during our travels today. I have to say, sometimes the Steambird's astrology column is spot on. It's just your lucky day. Are you guys also here to catch the festivities? Oh, and that reminds me. Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite to you too! If you're here for Lantern Ride, then what are you doing on top of this deserted mountain? And that voice we heard, that was you, right, Navia? <laughs> oh, impressive. You could tell it was me from that far away. You've got good ears. That or your voice is just really loud. Well, of course it is. After all, I'm a boss. Indeed. I suppose it's an asset. Sure is! Having a loud voice is a handy tool when it comes to communication. Wait, 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 that wasn't even Paimon's point. Paimon just wants to know why you two were shouting from the top of this deserted mountain. There was something about almonds, maybe? And buell fruit? Ooh, is it some sort of secret code? 
No, it's not a code. The words are meaningless. Perhaps, but the act of shouting was very meaningful indeed. That's just what mountain climbers do, right? After all the hard work it takes to make it to the top, as you stand on the summit looking out at the vast scenery, it's not easy to resist the urge to release those emotions. <laughs> exactly. You get me, partner. I was afraid that it would cause a disturbance, so I asked the locals around here and they said it was fine. Apparently most hikers like to shout when they get to the top, so the locals are used to it by now. So, you see, it's not just me. I guess everyone shouts from the top of a mountain at some point in their life. Uh, speak for yourself. When you're stressed, don't you ever just get the urge to do something for no reason? Hmm, <clears throat> not really. If I ever get stressed, I just go hunting. Oh, that's a pretty good way to relieve stress. Hmm. <clears throat> what I choose to hunt depends on my mood. Huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, why don't you two give it a try? Shout anything you want. It's a real stress reliever. Hmm. As long as Paimon has clothes on her back and food in her belly, Paimon doesn't think there's any stress that needs relieving. Oh, I bet you guys are just too embarrassed to let loose. No need to be shy. Even Farina was shouting from the top of this mountain earlier. Huh? Did Paimon hear that right? Farina's also here? In Chaoying Village? Believe in your ears. It is indeed as you heard. Actually, the reason we climbed this mountain in the first place was also because we heard the sound of shouting. Yes, we could just about make out someone yelling things like, Help me! And what should I do? So we hurried up here to check it out. And what do you know? Miss Farina was standing right there, all red in the face. She practically sprinted back down the mountain the minute she saw us. Ah, that reminds me. I believe what she actually said was, So help me, I will figure out what I should do about this script. Uh, so, you could actually hear what she was saying? Why didn't you say so earlier? I thought someone was really in trouble. I figured we would come check out the situation either way. Why not let her keep some privacy? Oh, seems like you caught Farina in the middle of some stress relief as well. She probably would have never thought... No, she definitely would have never thought she would run into anyone she knew all the way out here. I think so. Uh, we ran into Nervalette on the way here as well, but he was already on his way back, so they probably weren't together. Nervalette was here too? What was he doing here? It couldn't have been for vacation. I think it just might have been, actually. But apparently he only stayed for half a day before heading back. He's a very busy man. Hmm. Nervalette is not the type to take much time off. Taking even a half day for himself is already a huge step in the right direction. Didn't Charlotte publish an article on the Liyue tea industry recently? Maybe he was inspired to come buy some tea after reading that article. You know, just like you were. My situation is completely different. I'm here because I was asked to accompany you. The tea purchase is simply an added bonus of this location. You Fontanians in your tea drinking. Oh, it's not for me. I lost a bet with Ridesley. And now I have to buy him something. It was just a spur-of-the-moment sort of bet. Ridesley gets really invested in that sort of thing, but he couldn't care less about what he wins in the end. You could give him mint plants that you plucked from the side of the road, and he wouldn't even mind. Uh, if only he was that easy going when it came to talking business. <laughs> in any case, I'm pretty sure the tea you bought is this region's specialty. What is it called again? Ah, Nervalet even mentioned it earlier. Yes, yes, that's the one. You didn't really buy ten boxes, did you? <laughs> Please, do I look like someone who would fall for that sort of marketing trap? Ah, that reminds me. You guys said you only came up here because you heard my voice, right? I hope it didn't put you out. 
You must have added other plans for the day. Oh, that's right. Who tell? A few days ago, we heard that a friend was going to be in Chaoying Village. So we decided to come and see if we could run into her. Oh, dear. We've been chatting for quite some time. I'm sorry for keeping you. <laughs> that's good. We should probably head out and look for Hu Tao. No need to stay on our account. We just got up here, so we're gonna stay around for a little longer. Hmm. Go and meet your friend. We can meet up in Chaoying Village later. Sounds good. We're gonna head down the mountain then. See you later! What do I have to do to get you to yell from the top of this mountain? Name your price. You really want to hear it that bad, huh? I'm just curious is all. I have a feeling you'll say something amazing. <sighs> I will... pass. I prefer to let actions speak louder than words. Chaoying Village is known for its tea. But you know what else they have with tea? That's right, dim sum! Didn't Gumming say something about dim sum being eaten in the morning? Oh, Paimon wonders if we can still get some at this time of day. Oh, well that's fine too. Paimon doesn't care what kind of tea it is as long as it comes with some tasty snacks. Now let's see what kind of yummy things we can find around here. Uh... Paimon's not seeing things, is she? Is that Farino standing between Zhongli and Hu Tao? Wonder what they're talking about. Hmm, Zhongli knows a lot of stuff. Maybe he's telling Farina about Chaoying Village. Oh, or maybe Hu Tao is trying to rope Farina into being one of her clients. Hey, this isn't the Fortress of Meripede. But Paimon could be convinced for the right price. Let's say, loser buys the winner three huge bowls of seafood kanji. Since Zhang Li is there, Paimon bets things are pretty tame. It's decided then, Paimon votes for tour guide Zhang Li. All right, no time to waste. Let's go see who's right. Great, now Paimon shouting too. Oh, well aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Seems like our luck just keeps on growing. <laughs> that we were able to meet you both without prior arrangement must mean that this is quite the serendipitous meeting indeed. Uh -huh. Oh, so both of you are acquainted with the Traveler and Paimon then. Um, looks like someone's learned a thing or two from Zhang Li. Uh -huh. I must admit, I am a bit surprised to see you here, Traveler. But seeing as you're a hero who's been all over to that, it makes sense that you would be well-traveled and well-connected. Since we have found ourselves in each other's company within this fertile land, Allow me to take this opportunity to wish you a happy Lantern Rite. It appears you have been to Fontaine, then. Given your proclivity to spread good deeds wherever you go, it's no surprise that you would make the acquaintance of a celebrity as illustrious and celebrated as Miss Farina. Uh, <laughs> that's quite high praise. What I mean to say is, you flatter me, Mr. Zhongli. Although I've built up a certain following within Fontaine, it is no reflection of strength or wisdom. I stand before you right now as nothing more than an ordinary traveler in search of beautiful scenery and creative inspiration. There is definitely more to Mr. Zhongli than meets the eye. I could tell as much from our conversation earlier. Given his breadth of knowledge on both academic and worldly matters, there's no way he hasn't heard about what happened in Fontaine. Is he just feigning ignorance for my benefit? 
No, 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 no. Ay, yeah. You're no common tourist. I simply won't have you talk about yourself that way. Huh? But does that mean Hu Tao also knows? You may not have heard, friends, but. Uh, Miss Hu Tao. Miss Farina is now one of my esteemed clients. Uh, uh, uh. Yep. Okay, okay, you win. Hmm, guess Paimon will have to break into the hidden stash at the bottom of her shoe. Uh huh? What's this about winning something? Don't tell me. You two were placing bets on us. as to what you were talking about. Oh, I see. That means you, my friend, must have guessed that I was trying to promote my business to Miss Farina. That I do, my friend. What was Paimon's guess, then? Paimon thought Zhang Li was showing the newbie around. Ah, by newbie, you mean me, right? If that's the case, then Paimon's guess was also correct. Oh, that's right. Mr. Zhongli was telling me about some great sightseeing spots in the area. Ha! You see? Paimon was right, too! Since both of our guesses were right, there can't be a winner or a loser. Hey, don't be upset, Traveler. How about this? You buy Paimon a bull, and Paimon will also buy you a bull. Uh, as for the third bull... Since I was the subject of the bet, perhaps it should go to me? You know, as a congratulations for the huge deal I just struck. <laughs> I was just joking. Anyway, I should be the one treating you. The funeral parlor is about to bring in quite the sum after all. Oh, Paimon almost forgot to ask about the most important question. Did I... Something happened recently, Farina? Huh? What do you mean? Uh... Well, you know, with you enlisting the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor and all... Oh, well... Yes. Really? Oh, no... Paimon is so sorry for your loss. Although Paimon may have not known the person, please accept Paimon's deepest... Whoa, 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 it's not like that, Paimon. Huh? But Paimon just thought, since you hired the services of a funeral parlor and all... Hey, it's not that big of a stretch. Really, Paimon? It's not like you don't know me. Do I look like I know anyone who would ask me to coordinate their funeral? Tao is simply helping prepare some props for my film. Not too long ago, I read a collection of horror stories from Liyue. The content was spectacular! In fact, I still feel the need to sleep with the light on even now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. Now that Fontaine's biggest star has returned to the stage, I figured it's about time the industry enjoyed a breath of fresh air. Hey, <laughs> that's pretty good. I'll have to remember that for my ad posters. Oh, Paimon sees. That makes a lot of sense. So, did you come to Liyue just to enlist the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor? Well, not exactly. My original plan was to just relax and enjoy the sights. But then I ran into Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhang Li, and well, you know the rest. I suppose it was meant to be. It was a fated meeting indeed. Zhang Li sure loves his lofty turns of phrase. But if you ask me, it's all thanks to that man who stopped to ask for directions. Oh? Who was it? It's someone you know. Wanna take a guess? What? 
How did you guess that on your first try? Very impressive, my friend. Your guessing game is spot on today. Nervalette would be the type to get lost. I'm sure he didn't get lost. <laughs> Even I was able to find my way to this place without any trouble. He was already getting ready to leave by the time I arrived. He just wanted to ask someone about the quickest way to get back to Fontaine. Yep, that's exactly what he asked. This area is full of mountains and rivers. It's normal to not know the fastest route. So, were you the one that pointed him in the right direction, Hutel? Of course. I'm also a guide of sorts, you know. So naturally, I also have a great sense of direction. But, speaking of your friend... What about him? He doesn't get out much, does he? Ah, no wonder. He was stiff as a board and way too polite. I would have never guessed he was here on vacation if you hadn't told me. All in all, he was only here for half a day. I'm pretty sure he is the only one who would consider that to be a vacation. Oh? This gentleman you speak of must keep a demanding schedule. I'm sure he does. You didn't see him, but he was dressed like he was about to attend some important meeting. It wasn't anything like what someone would wear on vacation. Is that so? Wait, you didn't see him, Jolie? Unfortunately, no. At the time, it appeared as if Director Hu and Miss Farina were having quite the productive conversation. I know matters of business can take much discussion, so I decided to fetch some tea for them. What a shame. That gentleman seemed like a sophisticated sort of guy. I actually think you two would have hit it off. Is that so? Hmm? <laughs> to borrow Miss Farina's turn of phrase, perhaps it just wasn't meant to be. Well, with the traveler around, I'm sure you'll have a chance to get to know each other at some point. That's right! She's got more friends than she knows what to do with! Well, that's certainly true. Oh, that reminds me. If you get the chance, you should try and talk to Nervalette into loosening up a bit. Just tell him the Palais Mermonia isn't going to fall apart if he disappears for a few days. <laughs> He shouldn't keep himself cooped up all the time. Even clams open their shells to let in fresh water every once in a while, right? If he's really that much of a stickler for protocol, he can fill out a leave of absence request. He'd uh, have to approve it himself since he handles that sort of thing now, but you know what I mean. Seems like this gentleman is also in charge of something pretty important. Hey, uh, sounds like a pretty uptight sort of guy, all right. In my experience, a leader needs to be able to roll with the punches. That also includes knowing when and what to prioritize. It seems like your friend still has a lot of growing to do. If I remember correctly, he's already several thousands of years old. Uh, you're quite right, Miss Hutao. Oh? Traveler, Miss Farina, those two individuals over there appear to recognize you. Oh, it's Navia and Clorand! Hey, over here! We saw you all chatting over here, and we're wondering if we could join in. <clears throat> um, please, excuse the interruption. Oh. <laughs> So polite! No apologies necessary. Any friend of the Traveler and Miss Farina is a friend of mine. 
Ah, <laughs> straight to the point. I like it. Hmm, it's getting late. If we want to catch a boat back before dark, we should probably get going. Indeed. Then, Miss Farina... Oh, uh, uh, yes? When are you planning to head back? Do you need us to escort you? Oh, um, I... I don't think that will be necessary. I mean, you're not my subordinate anymore. You don't need to look after me. Um, I didn't mean it that way. It's normal for... friends to travel home together if they run into each other on the road. There are a lot of mountainous roads in this area. I imagine they'll be even harder to navigate after dark. Exactly! Just like in those ghost stories. Eight paths converge in a wood. Beside them an old house is stood. If you dare to go inside, not a soul will greet your eye. But, if you take a closer look, there may be something you mistook. A candle flickers to and fro, yet there is no wind to make it so. What is its secret? What could it mean? In this wood, where mystery screams. <laughs> My dear Demoiselle, the, the ladies, no, uh, I mean friends, please. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Gotta say, Farina, you are really quite the character. By the way, did I hear you mention that Clorand used to work under you? Then you must have also been a leader at some point. Uh, well, that's, uh, all in the past now. Besides, being a leader is hard. It wasn't the right job for me. I prefer how things are now. I can come and go as I please, and get to enjoy the sweet taste of freedom. I see. Well, you've certainly picked an apt place to relax. Chaoying Village is an exemplary choice. Only the best. <laughs> and I've learned a lot, too. Thank you so much, Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhongli. It's fine! You've thanked us more than enough already. The next time you're in this neck of the woods, I'll treat you to some dim sum in the city. Dim sum? Is that some kind of liyue term for snacks or desserts? They are a part of it. It's basically a table full of as much tea, sweets, and good company as you can manage. Oh! So it's basically a tea party! <laughs> Sounds great! Make sure to order the winter melon cake and the lotus flower crisp! They're so sweet and delicious, Paimon knows you'll love them! Ooh, okay! <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it then! Wait, but didn't you guys say you were here on vacation? How come you're all going home empty-handed? Of course I am! I bought tons of fun things to bring home with me. A kite, a parasol, a little tin frog that jumps. Oh, and a stuffed toy of a mythical beast. Clorand is the one who didn't buy anything for herself. So all you're bringing back with you is that tea? And some tea-flavored hard candies. They're for Sijween. Clorand isn't much of a shopaholic. Well, one of us has to practice restraint. Hey, I'm hardly reckless with my Mora. I'll have you know, all the purchases I made today were well within my budget. Me? Oh, well, I bought some tea, of course. I just had to try all the varieties recommended in the Steambird. Other than that, just some bits and bobs, you know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. They should all be things I can use, I think. Uh, now Paimon's even more confused. If you bought that much stuff, where did it all go? <laughs> <laughs>
all into one of Linny's magic packets? Oh, <laughs> actually... Monsieur Neuvillette took them with him. Oh, so that's what happened. Wait, what? Why did he take them? Oh, he's not hoarding treasure, is he? Oh, <laughs> that's quite the imagination you've got there, Paimon. Monsieur Nervillette just saw the amount of bags we had and offered to take them back for us. I felt a bit bad at first, but, uh, I really did have a lot of stuff. <laughs> he even offered to deliver my gifts to the Fortress of Meripede for me once he's done with the day's work. Nervillette is a man of his word. If he says he can do something, then he means it. See, even Clorand was happy to take him up on his offer. If even his trusty subordinate agreed, then who was I to refuse? Wow, he seems like a real gentleman. Maybe he's not as uptight as I thought. If only the funeral parlor had an employee as thoughtful, proactive, and responsible as him. Right, Zhang Li? Indeed. Karen said Nervalet offered to deliver her gifts to Risley. So if we go to the entrance of the Fortress of Meripede, maybe we'll run into Nervalet. But we don't know exactly when he'll show up. Oh, that reminds me. A new year of work is about to begin. If there's anything you want to talk about, Zhongli, you know you can come to me. I'm all ears. Does the director have any concerns? It just seemed like you were a bit preoccupied today, and much less talkative than usual. He barely said anything other than, Is that so? And, Indeed. If you ask me, I'd say you're having a midlife crisis. You're getting to be around that age, after all. Is that so? Ugh. <laughs> I jest. Given its distance from the city, Chaoying Village enjoys a much slower pace of life. Surrounded by such peace and tranquility, I also seem to have developed a proclivity for inactivity. I apologize for making you worry. Ah, um, I see. What do you think, Traveler? Is this atmosphere putting you in a lazy mood, too? Wow, you are getting really good at these kinds of lines. Indeed. Well, everyone, make sure that you've got all your belongings with you before we leave. If there's any souvenirs anyone still wants to buy, the time is now. Reliable as ever, Miss President. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Clorand is right, though. You really are reliable. It's not what she's saying. It's the way she's saying it. I will say, I never thought you'd be so easygoing outside of work, Clorand. The tone of voice you use when you're working doesn't exactly make you seem like the type who enjoys interacting with people. Well, I try to keep my professional and private life separate. That includes my behavior. You take care now, Traveler. Paimon. Ah, trying to act cool now, are we? <laughs> well, I guess it's not an act for you, is it? You are indeed quite strong. <laughs> it's been great talking to you all. I'm really glad I decided to come to Chaoying Village. Maybe we could go on another trip together sometime? Oh, it's you. It has been some time since our last meeting. Few people frequent this location. Since I was able to conclude my work early for the day, I thought I might take a walk and avail myself of this area's peace and quiet. You call this early? Do you always work this late, Nervalette? Strictly speaking, that depends on the agenda for the day. I am hardly bereft of time, however. So working late is of little consequence to me. 
really? If you have so much time on your hands, then why did you only go to Chow Ying Village for half a day? Hmm? First, I should clarify that I was referring to my lifespan, rather than the time at my disposal on any given day. Second, I was unaware you possessed knowledge of my trip to Chow Ying Village. I see. Thank you for informing me. Yes, they have been safely delivered. <laughs> I have to hand it to Chlorand. Just a simple gift delivery, and she has the great and mighty Udex at her beck and call. I was just passing through. It was merely an act of convenience. All right. Then I hereby confirm receipt of the goods on behalf of the staff of the Fortress of Meripede. A verbal receipt of confirmation? Is such a formality really necessary for a small matter such as this? Guess not. This quantity of tea, though, seems a little excessive for a gift, don't you think? Before you know it, they'll start accusing me of taking bribes. Ah, about that. Much of that is my own excess, I'm afraid. Oh? Why? What happened? It was buy ten boxes, get half off. Ah, that explains it then. Well, go ahead and leave them to me. I'll get through this stash as fast as I can. You have my thanks. Oh, there's something else I'd like to give to you. This is... a stone slate, engraved with a symbolic design. Well, that is an apt description. It is, in actuality, a legal codex. A legal codex, huh? Hmm. Before the advent of modern writing utensils, information was recorded on stone slabs such as this. The law was no different. Oh... okay. Since ancient times, the scales of justice have symbolized the fairness and impartiality of judiciousness. As a tribute to that sentiment, this slate was designed after a traditional legal codex, and engraved with a symbol instead of text. During my travels recently, I chanced upon a roadside stall offering tourists the opportunity to try their hand at the ceramic arts, so I decided to have a go. We joked with Claran some time ago about gifting you a legal codex. So, here you go. Ah, so that's what this is about. I did not expect you to remember it as well. In any case, I hope this can be considered as a reasonable attempt to join in on the banter. It is a very good attempt. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Even your sense of humor centers around the law. That's an impressive level of commitment. Well, a gift of this significance deserves to be put on display, and I know just the place. Front and center in the Fortress's showroom. Ah, oh, surely there's no need for such a grand gesture. Just kidding. I don't have anything like a showroom. But we do have a storage room. We can put it next to all the mechanical parts Sijuin has collected. That sounds good to me. So that's what you were doing in Chow Ying Village! Indeed. Of course, while I was there, I also took the opportunity to taste the local spring water. The aftertaste is much purer than what I have delivered to me in Fontaine. It stands to reason that the long-distance transport has a tendency to imbue the water with extraneous emotion. If you want to experience the true flavor, you simply have to go to the source. Perhaps I should organize some time off to do the same elsewhere. Then we are of the same mind. It appears my desire is justified. If you say so, but you know you don't have to justify a vacation, right? You can just take one. After all, you're hardly bereft of time. You can do whatever you want. You're quite right. I suppose I suffer not from a lack of opportunity, but rather a lack of inspiration. However, after reading a few articles about Li Wei's holiday traditions, 
the idea popped into my head and made itself quite at home. Seeing as I was free of responsibilities for the morning, I decided to depart at once. Refreshing. My spontaneous outing seemed to inspire quite a few other spontaneous decisions as well. Take, for example, my foray into ceramics. At first, soil from the ground is granular and unforgiving, but at the right amount of water, and it becomes soft, moldable, and able to take shape. In the past, I never thought about how quotidian vessels were crafted, but now I have participated in their very making. This is also something I made today. That's a ladle? I meant that it was supposed to be some long-necked sea creature. That was indeed one of my inspirations. Really? You like it? To tell you the truth, given your unexpected arrival, I find myself quite unequipped to give you the welcome you deserve. Around such an important holiday such as this, human custom would dictate that gifts should be in order. But I'm afraid this is all I can offer, if you'll have it, that is. That is precisely why it would do me such a great honor if you accepted. You are most welcome. Happy Lantern Rite. Hmm. Approve a leave of absence request for myself. That sounds like it could easily lead to a vicious cycle of self-indulgence, something which couldn't be in further violation of protocol. But I suppose I understand her point. My proclivity to refrain from personal outings does, in part, originate from a sense of responsibility toward my duties. But it is also due to a lack of desire to engage in the human world. But now I see that the human world is indeed full of many interesting places to discover. Lantern Rite marks the start of the new year in Liyue. In the spirit of the season, then, I wish you a year of success as vast and endless as the open ocean. <laughs>